Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto Primordial Dragon Slayer before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. And check out the description as well. Let's start the video. In a country known as Land of Fire laid a village not just any village, but a village full of ninjas or shinobis. This village was known as the village hidden in the lease or Kanoha for short. This village was considered the most powerful in the elemental nations for their unbreakable bonds and their strict teachings and teamwork. But our story doesn't start there, no our story begins with a family. Within this family was four members the parents and the children one boy and the other girl, but this wasn't what the story is about, oh no it was the members. The father was none other than the leader of the village also known as the Hokage, and his name was Minato Namikaze, he was the current Hokage or the fourth Hokage, and had earned the nickname the Yellow Flash for his speed.The mother was a beautiful woman by anyone's right, she was Kashina Namikaze, and was once known as a fearful Kinoichi, because of her very short temper. She was so feared that they had given her a nickname the Red Devil of the Leaf, because of the way her hair got, when angry.The other two were two young seven-year-old children, one was a young girl with red hair like her mother, but with hazel eyes. The boy was a carbon copy of his father, except that he had three whisker-like marks on both sides of his face. Right now we find the boy in his room looking outside his window at his parents training his sister before he would try to learn, but his parents would just brush him off. Why you may ask well seven years ago when his sister and him were born a man attacked the place where their mother was giving birth outside the village. The masked man attacked and was able to rip the nine tails out of their mother and set out to destroy the village, but Minato was able to take the nine tails to a secluded area and with the help of Kashina, was able to not only beat the man, but was able to seal his charka for a set amount of time. After driving the man away, they restrained the nine tails and sealed half of it into their daughter Naruko and the other half back into Kashina to allow her to survive. The girl was then presented to the village by her parents, and they told the village that their daughter would be the protector of their village, making the villagers worship her like a hero. Though the boy was then outcast and shunned for his sister, everyone didn't even know that the Hokage had a son. The boy grew up as a mere shadow of his sister he was always forgotten in everything family vacations, parties, dinners and even on his birthday. His parent merely thought of him as a pest, and by now the boy was getting sick of it and he decided to try once more before giving up. The boy then ran to the family library and started to look for something that would surely impress them and get them to finally acknowledge him. I'm tree climbing and water walking ah, I'm sure Naruko doesn't know this yet, I'll learn this all today and show them that they'll be so proud of me, they'll surely start teaching me with Naruko. Naruto said out loud and soon took the scrolls and headed to a training ground near there to start training when he got there he saw a small lake and many trees with a clearing soon he got to a shadowy tree and started to read. After about 30 minutes of reading the scrolls Naruto got up and headed to a tree to start on tree climbing first. As Naruto started to go up he slips and smashes his face into the tree. Ow that hurt man I guess that mean I didn't use enough chakra well no use crying over it. Naruto said while getting up and trying again and again until finally after nearly 3 hours of trying he was able to do it right. Alright. I did it Naruto said to himself and celebrated by running up and down the trees as well as upside down. Well I better move on to water walking to show them all I learned today. Naruto said after he finally calmed down a bit and had a small rest. Soon Naruto started trying to learn water walking and found it to be on the same principles as the tree climbing exercise. But because he mastered the tree climbing technique he was able to get this down in only one hour. Man am I tired, but I did it man won't they be proud when they see my moves. Naruto said with a small smile while drinking some water. After resting he decided to run home to show them what he learned. Naruto never noticed a beautiful white-haired woman looking at him with a motherly smile and face that radiated love. Oh Naruto I'm so happy that even in a world like this that you're able to smile like nothing wrong, but you won't have to worry for much longer honey, because soon you'll soon become my new son, and I promise to never let you be sad again. The woman said before turning into shadows and disappearing. But Naruto. Naruto ran home and went straight to the backyard to search for his parents and sister. He found them sitting down and resting while eating ramen, so he approached them calmly, so as to not surprise them. Mom, Dad can I show you two something? Naruto asked while looking at them with hope in his eyes. Minato and Kashina merely rolled their eyes and nodded for him to go ahead what he showed them both shocked and angered them. Naruko though was surprised her that her brother knew things she still didn't know, as her parents hadn't taught her those things because she wasn't ready yet. So what do you guys think pretty cool huh? Naruto told them while dropping down from the tree he was standing upside down on. Before Naruto could go on to show them his water walking exercise his father came up to him and smacked him across the face. What the hell were you thinking Naruto? Who thought you this anyways? Minato screamed at him making Naruto have tears in his eyes and then stuttered out an answer. 
I, I took a scroll from T the library T to learn it. Naruto said now crying. Who gave you permission to enter the library anyways eh Naruto? You're in a lot of trouble young man now go to your room and stay there you are not getting any dinner tonight understood. Kishina said while giving Naruto a slap across his face, Naruto merely got up and screamed. I hate you all I wish I was never born. Naruto screamed making both of them get shocked and hurt faces for what Naruto just said. Naruto ran away toward his room, Naruko wanted to talk to her brother, but couldn't find the words to say, so she merely stayed quiet. Later that night. Naruko was currently lying on her bed looking at the ceiling and thinking of a way to make it up to her brother. She had been thinking about that for the past three hours now and still hadn't come up with anything. And what if I get mom to make him a special dinner, no that won't work oh I know I'll teach him some of the things mom and dad thought me a eh, that'll cheer him right up, I better go and tell him right now. Naruko thought while getting out of bed and headed to her twin brother's room, which was to her surprise at the far end of the house. Once she got there Naruko knocked on the door only to be met with silence. I have never been in brother's room before I wonder what kind of stuff he has in there why isn't he answering, could he be asleep hmm, no, I think he's just mad and is giving us the silent treatment. Naruko thought and knocked again, but when she didn't receive an answer this time she just went and opened the door. Inside the room was empty and that shocked her because in her room she had way too much things from posters to stuffed animals. Her brother had nothing but a bed and a small dresser and a lamp. She couldn't believe her eyes and started to look around hoping to find something to tell her where her brother went. That's when she found a note pinned to the wall on top of the headboard of the bed. She reached out and started to read it and as soon as she finished she screamed. Kashina and Minato's room. Kashina and Minato were currently getting ready for bed Kashina was sitting in bed reading a book while Minato was taking a shower. Hey Minato do you think we were a bit harsh on Naruto today? Kashina asked while putting away her book and looking at her husband who had just come out of the bathroom. I don't know Kashina maybe, it's just that it was a shock to learn that Naruto went and did something like tap into his chakra without telling us I mean he could have gotten hurt. Minato said while getting into bed and staring at the ceiling. I know but maybe we should teach him to I mean he does need this after all to protect himself. Kashina said while looking at her husband. The yeah, okay we'll start tomorrow and maybe he'll forgive us too. Minato said with hope in his voice. Oh I bet he will if you teach him your Rasengan. Kashina said making him smile. You're right well W Minato couldn't finish his sentence because at that moment they heard Naruko scream and they instantly bolted to her room. When they got there they found it empty and decided to head to Naruto in case something happened to him too. When they arrived they entered to find Naruko on the floor crying and repeating the words I'm sorry over and over again. Ashina ran toward Naruko and held her close to her and whispered sweet nothings to help calm her down. Minato in the meantime decided to look around for the cause of Naruko's situation. He found a note on the floor and decided to read it out loud. I if you're reading this, then I'm already gone, I have decided to leave, and I will never return you have shown me that I'm not wanted here, and as such I'm leaving to places unknown, and let you three be the family you always wanted to be without the burden of a pest like me around, I have severed all ties I have with this family, so if we ever do meet again never speak to me like your son you two lost that right a long time ago enjoy your life with your only child. Signed. The Forgotten. As soon as he finished reading Minato bolted out of the room and house and headed to his office to start a search party in the hopes of finding Naruto. But by the time Minato and anyone else started to search Naruto would be long gone. Two hours earlier. Naruto sat in his room thinking about everything that happened and wondered what he did wrong. After about 30 minutes of thinking and getting nothing, Naruto decided he had enough and started to pack. After he finished he went to the family library and ransacked the place taking everything to train himself and prove to them he could get strong without them. He then sat down and wrote a letter to them and left the compound, and as he made his way down an empty street, H saw a woman in the middle of it almost waiting for him. Hello, Naruto. The woman told him making him a little scared since this woman knew his name. Why yes how may I help you lady? Naruto asked while looking at her nervously. Do not be scared my child I have come to take you away from this place and give you everything you ever wanted a family. The lady told him making Naruto widen his eyes at her. Really you can do that? Naruto asked. Yes dear I can so what do you say, will you let me be your new mother and give you the love you deserve? The woman asked Naruto immediately jumped up and hugged her surprising her. Yes please take me away as far away as possible. Naruto said while crying in her shoulder making her soften her eyes and hug him back. Don't worry I will now come on we better go I wish to tell you something but not here. The woman said and then snapped her figures and both were now in front of a very beautiful house. Where are we am mom? Naruto said though with a bit of hesitation though the woman merely smiled. My home Naruto. Now though I wish for you to meet my good friend, he will be you um uncle of sword okay. The woman said making Naruto nod his head. Okay then let go meet him has been waiting quite patiently for us. 
the lady said and soon both started to walk down a path until they got to a cave and went in. That's when Naruto saw that the entire cave was made out of solid gold. The more they went deeper the more Naruto could hear snoring. Well we're here wait here Naruto while I go talk to him. The woman said gaining a nod from him. Naruto then heard the snoring stop and soon he started to get bored and how couldn't he I mean he sat there for almost three hours. Naruto please come in now. Naruto heard and then he stood up and head inside what he saw inside amazed him for in there he saw a huge dragon sitting up and looking at him. Hello there my boy please introduce yourself. The dragon said while looking at Naruto. Um my name is Naruto sir. Naruto said making sure to not use his family name anymore. Well Naruto my name is Ragnarok young one. The now introduced Ragnarok said. Yes and Naruto I forgot to tell you my name well I have many names but you can call me Lily Naruto. The now known Lily said. Um well see can you tell me why you brought me here? Naruto said while looking at both Lily and Ragnarok in the eyes. Well we wish to take you away from that life Naruto and give you a better, so I brought you here, and Ragnarok and me have decided to make you our student as well, so what do you say Naruto do you wish to learn from us? Lily said while looking at him. What will I learn if I say yes mom? Naruto asked wondering what they could possibly teach him. Well young one I could teach you the true dragon slayer arts, a type of magic that was made for the sole purpose to kill dragons. Ragnarok said while looking at him in the eyes. And I can teach you the true god slayer arts Naruto, because the place I'm gonna take you is a world of magic, a place where dragon and god used to rule till the world found out about the slayer arts. Lily said. Wait you mean to say that magic is real? Naruto questioned her. Yes and the place I'm talking about is called Earthland where instead of ninjas they have mages, and instead of cage they have guild masters, and instead of ninja villages, they have mage guilds. Ragnarok said to him making Naruto smile at that. But we will not take you there yet Naruto dear first we will train you here in this pocket dimension, until you have completely mastered everything we teach you by the end of your training, you will be powerful enough to kill any dragon and god that comes your way Naruto. Ragnarok said with complete faith in him. So Naruto are ready to be trained like never before, because once we start there's no going back. Lily said making sure Naruto understood what was gonna happen. Yes I'm ready mother I want to be the most powerful mage and ninja possible to show everyone who shunned me that I don't need their help to become strong. Naruto said with a burning passion in his eyes to prove the world that he could be powerful without them. Am I like your style kid very well, let's begin your training right before Ragnarok finished he extended his wings and flew at Naruto at blinding speed. Now. Ragnarok finished with a mighty roar. Six year later. It had been six years since his training began, and according to his parent figures, while they were in the pocket dimension one year in there was one month outside. So he grew up normally, but luckily he didn't to sleep, eat or anything while in there so his training had come along nicely. He had mastered his dragon slayer arts and god slayer arts in record time, and had gotten a surprise when he did master them. Why well because his mother had revealed to him to be a goddess not just any goddess on of the first goddess to come to life. That is while he was able to learn all elemental slayer art for his god slayer arts, his mother told him that since gods have to element to begin with, they could teach anyone to wield all the elements, should they please. That is why his mother got angry when he asked about the other god slayers in Earthland, calling them pretenders. His mother called them fakers and many other things, and when he asked why she called them that she said. They were never trained by gods Naruto all they did was fuse darkness magic with element magic to make that abomination they call god slayer magic, I mean their element come out black when you come out to be a gold color, so you see they are fakers Naruto, so if you see any pretenders out there I want you to teach them what a true god slayer can do okay honey. Lily had told him and Naruto had merely nodded, promising to teach all the fake god slayers a lesson. Ragnarok on the other hand had said he was a rare type of dragon known as the scaleless dragon, why well because apparently his didn't have any element, but he could instead use all the element like Lily, which had earned him the title of the dragon god, even though he wasn't a god by any mean. Now though we find a 13 year old Naruto walking along a mountain terrain with his mother on his right and a floating golden sphere of light to his left. So dad where is this um what did you call it oh right colony of dragons that you mentioned earlier? Naruto asked while looking at the small eye on his left. Patient my boy it's just over this ridge so we'll be there in maybe 10 minutes. Ragnarok spoke. And true to his word 10 minutes later they were over the ridge looking at the valley down below and were watching as maybe 5 dragons were either flying around or just sleeping. This is a colony dad I was expecting well I don't know dozens of dragons not 5. Naruto said while looking at the dragon going about their business. Yes well this 5 are some of the last living dragon around so I guess they thought being together might up their chances of living. Ragnarok said. Well go on dear and remember don't use anything other than your dragon slayer magic okay. Lily said making Naruto nod. Don't worry mom I'll make both of you proud. 
Naruto said before jumping down to the valley missing the smile on his mother's face. You already made me proud since the day I met you Naruto. Lily said before going on to look at Ragnarok. Do you think he'll be alright? Lily asked him. HMPH will be just fine in fact I bet he'll finish this in exactly 10 minutes. Ragnarok said. I see well then let's hope that we trained him well. Lily said. And with that they back to find Naruto walking up to the dragons that were looking at him with surprise, wonder, and hunger. But Naruto. As Naruto was walking toward them the dragons just looked at him, and when Naruto was in front of all five of the dragons, one came up and asked him a question. What are you doing here human leave before I devour you? A big blue dragon said then all Naruto did was get in a fighting stance and yelled out an attack which surprised the dragons. Lighting dragon roar. Naruto screamed and he shot out a huge lighting tornado that went straight to the dragon and ripped through him like a hot knife through butter. Before the eyes of the dragons the blue one fell to the ground dead with a gaping hole in his chest where his heart should be. The other were too shocked to notice Naruto move and when they did notice it was already over. Ice dragon piercing fang. After nearly 10 minutes all the dragon were laying on the ground dead with Naruto sitting on top of a dragon's corpse like it was nothing. Well done my boy that was absolutely amazing you are now a true dragon slayer and now that you have bathed in the blood of a dragon, you have activated your drive. Ragnarok said to him. Yes and once we implant the dragon lacrima into you, you will be a third generation dragon slayer and will be able to go in and out of your dragon force at will and you won't have to worry about turning into a dragon anymore. Lily said with a smile on her face. Now there is just one thing to do my boy. Ragnarok said to him making Naruto look at them and wait for what he need to do. And what might that be dad? Naruto questioned him with a tilt of his head. Live Naruto go on see the world, travel and meet new people join a guild make friends find a nice mate, we have finished your training, and as much as it hurts us to let you go, we have no other choice Naruto you are 13 years old and you don't even know the world outside the pocket dimension, so please Naruto go out and find yourself a grand adventure to do and pick up some friend along that. Adventure okay honey. Lily said with tears in her eyes while hugging Naruto to her chest, and all Naruto could do was hug her back while he too started to cry. Don't worry mom, dad I will make both of you proud, and I'll have the best adventure anyone can have my name will be known far and wide, and when anyone asks who thought you everything you know I'll look up at the sky and say my mother and father, so please don't cry mom this isn't goodbye, it's just to see you later. Naruto said with a smile. Okay I, I won't cry anymore honey. Lily said with a smile. Soon they started to walk down a road for an hour or so, till they got to a crossroad with a post with two signs on it. One was pointing left and said the name to a town, while the other pointed to the right and also had the name of a town. Well I guess this is where we part way mom and dad I hope to see you two again someday, but until then see you later you two. Naruto said while heading down the left path with a small duffel bag on his left shoulder and with his right hand waving goodbye to them both. Bye Naruto and don't worry because I have a feeling that we will see each other again real soon. Lily said before Ragnarok and her vanished like they were never there in the first place. But Naruto. It had been nearly three hours since he parted ways with his parents and he was really enjoying the silence of the day. That is until he saw a girl walking along the same road. Hey there you lost. Naruto asked and saw the girl turn toward him. No actually I'm heading back to my guild it's called Fairy Tale, have you heard of it? Urza said. No actually I've been living with my parent and never had the chance to travel till now, that is they finally gave me permission to travel the world and to go on many adventures. Naruto said. I see well would you like to join us the master is very welcoming and everyone there treats everyone like family. Urza said. Sure I would love to join this guild it sound like a cool place. Naruto said while holding out his hands. Soon both were shaking hand and started they walking again towards the guild known as Fairy Tail. This would be the start of a new adventure for Naruto and everyone in Fairy Tale. The question that remained though was would it be a good one or a bad one? But Naruto and Urza. It has been over an hour since Naruto found Urza, and the two of them started to head toward Magnolia Town. Hey Urza how far away are we from Magnolia Town? Naruto asked while walking next to her right. Well we are still about a days away from there. Urza responded to his question while drinking some water she had on hand. Really, well what are we supposed to do when night falls I mean look the sun is going down, so we have about another hour at most of light. Naruto said while well, pointing at the setting sun which made the sky look like it was on fire. Well we could camp out here for the night since there is no town or rest stops until we get to Magnolia Town. Urza said making Naruto nod. Well come on we should find a clearing or something to set up a camp. Naruto said making Urza nod. Soon they were walking a little away from the road so as not to lose their way. After about 15 minutes of looking they were able to find a nice little clearing to set up camp. Well this is a nice enough spot, so how about we set up here since we only have minutes before nightfall. 
Naruto said, and with that both start working of their sleeping bags. Urza do you mind making a fire while I go look for some food? Naruto said while making a little ditch for the fire. Um sure go ahead. Urza said. After about 30 minutes Naruto returned with about 3 rabbits and 2 wild chickens. Urza was surprised to find that Naruto was such a good hunter, and she was even more surprised to see him cook so expertly. Wow, Naruto I didn't know you could cook so well. Urza said making Naruto sweat drop. Well we have only known each other for about 2 hours, so I guess that's why. Naruto said making Urza blush in embarrassment about forgetting. Well you're just great company that I felt like I've known you for a while. Urza said while looking away trying to hide her blush. Why am I blushing I can't possibly like him after just 2 hours of knowing him right that's just not possible, but he is cute with those whisker marks and those beautiful ocean blue eyes oh my god I do like him, but maybe he could help me forget about th the tower. Urza thought while looking at Naruto eat his chicken leg. So, Urza what's fairy tale like? Naruto said gaining the redhead's attention. Well fairy tale is it's like one big family everyone they would do anything to protect their own, no matter what the master is like very own grandfather or father, he would risk his own life, if I meant saving one of his children, he is a great man, but an even greater grandfather. Urza said while looking at the fire with a big smile on her face. Sounds like a great place I think I'm gonna like it there more so now that I made a friend in you. Naruto said while smiling at her making her blush but good thing her hair was shielding her face, along with the fire illuminating her face making it hard to notice. So why don't we try to get some sleep? Urza said berating herself for stuttering in the beginning. Naruto merely smiled and nodded at her finding it cute when she tried to hide her blush from him. What was it that my mother said oh yeah if a girl blushes when she is around you, it means she likes you hmm, so Urza likes me huh, it's a little weird since we just met, but she is cute with that scarlet hair of hers. Naruto thought while looking at Urza get up and head toward her sleeping bag. Naruto aren't you coming you need your rest for the travel tomorrow. Urza said to him, but before he could answer he felt a pair of very recognizable eyes on him. You go ahead and sleep Urza I lum go for a walk to clear some stuff from my head you know I just got permission to travel and all, and in the end I made a new friend and I'm gonna join a guild all in my first day of travel, I need some time to process it all. Naruto said making Urza nod at him even though she knew he was keeping something. Sure okay but don't be too long okay we do need our rest. Urza told him with a pointed look making him laugh sheepishly and rub the back of his head while nodding okay. It took nearly two hours before Naruto found it safe to get up and walk about 30 minutes from the campsite. Mom, Dad you can come out now. Naruto said to nothing. It took about a minute before a small ball of light appeared along with a very beautiful woman that seemed to materialize from thin air. Naruto honey how have you been? Lily asked him with a concerned look on her face. Well considering that I was only gone for about half a day, I'd have to say great. Naruto said making both smile at his words. But anyways why are you guys here? Naruto asked them. All he got was his mother's embarrassed blushing face and some nervous laughter from the little ball of light. Well you see we kind of forgot to implant the dragon lacrima in you before you left, so we're here to well fix that. Ragnarok said making Naruto chuckle at his parents' misfortune. Oh well okay then um, how long will it take for the implanting and my recovery? Naruto asked them wanting to know how long would he be out of commission if he encountered trouble on his way toward Magnolia. Oh you don't have to worry about that with your sky god slayer magic you can heal any outer wound in a second, and besides, it won't take more than a few seconds since I'll just shove the lacrima in you, and then you'll be able to get up like nothing's happened. Lily said making Naruto look at her with an incredulous look. You never said anything about shoving a lacrima in me. Naruto said making both parents laugh. We forgot. They both said at the same time. Naruto merely let out a sigh and went to the nearest tree and smacked his face against it while chanting stupid forgetful parents over and over again. This made both of them sweat drop at the sight of their child saying and doing those stuff. Well we should get started now son so you can go back to that cute redhead. Ragnarok said making Naruto blush and send him a glare. Aw oh, yes that girl will make a fine wife for you one day, but considering that you're my son means that you can have more than one wife, and also since you're Ragnarok's child means the same thing, so you can have a total of six wives, three from me and three from your father, so go on and get six wives, and give me a ton of grandbabies as soon as possible. Lily said with a glint in her eyes at the thought of all those grandchildren. Both father and son merely looked at her with an eyebrow raised, well in the case for Naruto that is, and thought if she had gone mad. Well anyways on to what we came here for Lily. Ragnarok said knocking Lily from her fantasy world. Right sorry about that well hold still Naruto oh, and this might hurt a little. Lily said just before shoving her hand in the center of his chest, making Naruto flinch surprising him that it did not hurt as bad as her thought it would. 
They're all done and if you're wondering why it didn't hurt more, it's because as both a dragon and god slayer, you have a very high tolerance for pain, and also it doesn't hurt that you have a near regenerative healing ability thanks to your truly. Lily said with a smile while looking at him and kissing his forehead. Now go back to that cute little girl and start making me many grandbabies to spoil. Lily said making Naruto blush so much he looked like a tomato. Mom. Stop please. Naruto screamed making Lily giggle at his reaction. Okay then well go on we do not want to take up your time after all you do need to sleep. Ragnarok said making Lily pout at him for taking her fun away. Fine then have a good night and do not worry we will see you again when it is time to go back to the elemental nations and show them how powerful you got on your own. Lily said with a huge smile on her face. Naruto on the other hand got a serious look on and nodded because he couldn't wait to humiliate his family and to show them that he had gotten stronger than any of them could image. Yeah I can't wait for that day. Naruto said while smiling at both his parents. After they said their goodbye Naruto went back and found Urza sleeping so cutely he couldn't help but stare at her. I mean why wouldn't he Urza was sucking her thumb and was making mewling noises. After looking at her for a good two minutes Naruto head toward his sleeping bag and was soon fast asleep. Next morning. Light that was the first thing he noticed when he opened his eyes well the second since the first thing he noticed was Urza and his vision just looking at him with a small smile and a tiny blush. As soon as their eyes locked her as a jump back and started to look around so as to find something to hide her blush in. DGGG good, MM morning NNN Naruto. Urza stuttered at being caught mere inches from his face. Why am I stuttering for God's sake, I'm Urza Scarlet not some blushing schoolgirl, but he's so cute, especially when he sleeps no stop it, I need to keep my emotions in check oh God. Urza thought before trailing off seeing Naruto remove his shirt so as to change seeing as his current shirt was dirty. Well what what or why why you doing Naruto? Urza said blushing while looking at his body which was well developed for a 13 year old boy. Uh oh, well this shirt is dirty, so I'm gonna change to a clean one, why am I bothering you? Naruto said teasingly while going up to her face and get inches from her face. But of course not hurry and get changed, I wish to get to the guild as soon as pos before Urza could finish Naruto grabbed her and carried her bridal style, making her squeal in surprise. Then hang on because I'm gonna get us there in a flash. Naruto said making Urza nod and put her arms around his neck while having a small blush, and soon they were gone in a stream of lighting. Fairy tail. Fairy tail the guild that was just recently being recognized as one of the strongest guild in the kingdom of Fiori. Currently in the guild hall two little 11 year olds were fighting again. It was totally your fault you ice stripper. A pink haired boy yelled out to a black haired boy clad in only his boxers. No way it's your fault you stupid match stick. The black haired boy said. People were just watching them with smiles and laughing at the two all except for a blonde haired teen that was just leaning against wooden pillar. Those two are lame fighting over something so stupid like spilled water. The teen said while looking at the two fight a little longer, but before he could leave the teen's eyes widened when a yellow stream of lighting appeared in the center of the guild, making everyone stop what they were doing and get in defensive positions. But when the lighting cleared what they saw surprised them because there in the center of the guild was a young boy of no older than 13 with blonde unkempt hair, not wearing a shirt with only black baggy pants with a white sash around his waist. But the most surprising thing was that he was carrying her as a scarlet bridal style, and she was letting him touch her in such a way that would have gotten other men killed. Soon the boy put Urza down and started to look around the guild hall like he had never seen a place like it before. Man this place is awesome Urza now I know why you love it so much I can't wait to join this guild. That is what everyone heard him say and they were glad that he was going to join them because man could they feel his power just rolling off him like a waterfall. Yes, well come on the master is over here he will get you all set up here at the guild. Urza told him making him nod and follow her to the bar where a small old man was sitting on the counter while drinking a mug of beer. Master I have returned from a successful job and with a person who wishes to join fairy tale. Urza told the old man making him look at her and nod then look at Naruto and ask him a question. Well where would you like your guild stamp and in what color my boy? The old man asked him. But that's it, you're not even gonna see if I'm a threat to the guild. Naruto asked surprised at the man's behavior. Not at all my boy I sense no ill feeling toward the guild or to anyone, so I have no reason to be suspicion of you. The old man said while taking a swing of his beer. Thanks old man for the trust I will do all I can to make sure you don't regret it, but anyways I would like my stamp over my heart and in black with a white outer lining. Naruto said taking off his shirt making all the women blush at seeing his well-developed abs though the boys and men were all glaring at him, so having such a body at such a young age. Very well my boy they're all done well now introduction are in order so I'll go first my name is Makarov Dreyer, the third master of fairy tale. Makarov said Naruto then smile and pointed at himself. Well I'm Naruto Ragnar son of Ragnarok the scale less dragon and Lily the primordial goddess. 
Naruto said making everyone go wide eyes at that even Urza, since she didn't know anything about Naruto's magic. And my boy are you Adi Dragon Slayer? Makarov said still in shock at hearing him say who his parents are. The AI I'm a god slayer and a dragon slayer which I think makes me a dragon god slayer doesn't it master? Naruto asked him while in a thinking pose making some of the guild member faint from hearing a new slayer joined their guild. Why yeah I believe so my boy. Makarov said after calming down. So um what do I do know before Naruto could finish all the guild heard a voice. Hey you fight me. When Naruto heard this he turned around and found a little pink haired 11 year old coming at him with a flaming fist. Higher dragon iron fist. The little pink haired boy yelled out. Lighting dragon breakdown fist. Naruto screamed out making a big magic seal appear in front of him and a huge fist come rushing towards the boy. Oh that's a pretty big fist. Two men said while looking at the fist Naruto made. Naruto just stood there waiting for the two attacks to collide and after a few seconds the attacks collided and an explosion happened. When the smoke cleared the little boy was on the floor out cold it seemed. Um who is that master? Naruto asked the master, but when he turns toward the master he saw the master along with Urza and a white-haired gothic-looking girl, and all three of them had wide eyes, especially a teen about 17 years old off to the side who was leaning on a pillar. Um that was N. Natsue she is a dragon slayer like you the um, the fire dragon slayer. Makarov said while looking at Naruto. How powerful are you my boy even if Natsu is young he is a dragon slayer and they do have an immense durability to withstand almost a lot of damage even if Laxus was to do that to Natsu how strong are you Naruto? Makarov thought while looking at Naruto with curiosity in his eyes. Then Naruto why didn't you tell me you could use lighting magic? Urza asked well more like demanded while getting up all in his face. Um well you never asked about my type of magic. Naruto said while sweat dropping at a reaction. Hey there blondie you're kind of cute wanna go out some time. Naruto heard a voice say behind him, and when he turned around he saw the white-haired girl rubbing herself against him and giving him what he believed was a sexy look while also holding on to his right arm. Um we don't even know each other that good to start dating um, what is your name? Naruto told her making the girl give him a pout, but she never let go and instead answered her like that. Well then my name is Marahin Strauss the one who will rock your world. Marahin said while kissing him in the right cheek, making Naruto's face burn up at the implications of that sentence. Back of Marahin he isn't interested in you. Urza yelled while punching her away. Just before Urza could say anything to Naruto Marahin came back and uppercut Urza. Don't interfere you armor wearing hussy. Marahin yelled back. Soon though everyone was looking at the sense of Urza and Marahin fighting over a boy, something they thought they would never see happen. Though if anyone looked at the blonde haired teen they would see him pissed off at Naruto for some reason. Soon the blonde couldn't take it anymore and got off the wall and walked towards Naruto with lighting flowing through his body. Hey you, new guy what the hell do you think you doing? Everyone turned and saw the teen walk towards Naruto pissed. Oh wait what was the question again? Naruto asked while looking at the teen while scratching the back of his head. Don't play stupid with me you little brat, what do you think you're doing here in this guild, this guild isn't for the weak, so why is a weakling like you even doing in guild like fairy tale? The teen asked making Naruto raise an eyebrow at him. Laxus that's enough out of you. Makarov said while looking at the teen. No I'm sick and tired of you allowing such weakling to join the guild, I'll teach him what it takes to be a fairy tale wizard. Laxa said while disappearing in a stream of lighting straight at Naruto. Naruto didn't even have time to do anything because of the speed Laxa traveled and soon the stream of lighting went outside making everyone ran outside. Outside the guild. Laxa took Naruto behind the guild and stood across from him. Naruto merely stood up and dusted himself out and looked at Laxa with little to no emotion. Now you'll see what a real wizard can do. Laxa said while covering his entire body in yellow lighting. Sigh I don't want to fight a fellow fairy tale guild mate, but if you attack first, I will have to option than to defend myself. Naruto said making the master smile at him for not wanting to hurt his newfound guild members. DCH you don't have a choice Brad, either you fight and prove to me you're not a weakling, or you let me beat the hell out of you and humiliate you, not that you would even be able to touch me. Laxa said with a cocky grin on his face. Naruto said nothing instead he turned his back and started to walk away from Laxus. This action alone angered Laxus and sent him into a frenzy towards Naruto who wasn't paying any attention to him. Naruto look out. The voices of Urza and Marahin brought Naruto back to life and on pure instinct from his years of training for his parents, he was able to dodge. Everyone was surprised to see Naruto dodge an attack from Laxus of all people. This action only fueled Laxus's anger and without a warning, fired a lighting spell at Naruto. Raging Bolt. Laxus screamed while firing a bolt of lightning at Naruto who just stood there with a smile. Naruto move out of the way. Urza screamed who was extremely worried for him. Man he's a goner. Marahin said with no hint of remorse which earned her glare from Urza. 
but to the surprise of all the ones present Naruto merely got into a stance that they had seen Natsu too many times. Lightning Dragon Roar. Naruto screamed while shooting out a 10 feet wide and long lightning beam at Laxus. When the attack collided they were all surprised to see Naruto's beam cut through Laxus's attack like it was nothing and go straight toward him. Everyone thought that Laxus would just simply dodge it, but that wasn't the case Laxus was too surprised to do anything. The resulting effects were instant, as soon as the smoke cleared to show Laxus, they found him in a 10-foot crater almost 5 feet deep, with dirt and rubble, covering most of Laxus. The reactions were ones of shock, fear, and respect why well because he just beat someone, one was just recently made a S-class mage in one strike, with the same element type magic, said S-class mage used if that alone doesn't earn him some respect well they don't know what will. Then Naruto did do you know what you just did? A very surprised Marahin asked him a little scared since even she had never been able to land a hit on Laxus. Then this newbie comes out of nowhere and not only survives his fight, but beats Laxus in one move one for crying out loud. Um will I guess defend myself. Naruto answered her like it was the most obvious thing in the world. No, you just beat Laxus an S-class mage of fairy tale in one move. Urza said while looking at the crater that Laxus was in and then back at Naruto, and for some reason she felt a little hot under her collar. Yay that was freaking hot Naruto how about we go back to my place and get to know one another better. Marahin said while whispering the last part in his ear making Naruto have a small nose bleed at imaging himself and Marahin doing that. But before Naruto could say anything Urza came up to Marahin and punched her in the face and then both Marahin and Urza started to fight over him again. Hey master do you know some place where I can sleep and I'm beat and I need my rest tomorrow I'll for an apartment or something. Naruto asked him saying the last part under his breath. Before the master could answer Urza kicked Marahin away and came up to Naruto and grabbed his hand. Hum Naruto you be staying with me till you can find a place of your own no excuses. Urza said making Naruto shut up and just nod while letting her lead the way toward her home. Fifteen minutes later. It had taken them a little longer than expected to get to her home, only because Urza needed to make a quick stop at a bakery. After buying nearly two dozen strawberry cheesecakes they left only to have Naruto carry all the cakes. Well we're here Naruto welcome to my home. Urza said while waving around for Naruto to see. All Naruto saw was a normal looking living room that is until he looked down one of her hallways and saw many weapons and armors lining up her walls and anywhere he could lay his eyes on. Why a nice place you got here Urza it's oh well um you so where will I be sleeping at? Naruto asked her making Urza blush for some reason. Well all my spare rooms are being used to store my armors and weapons, so um, I guess why you could um sleep with em me on my b-bed. Urza said with a huge blush and if she would have looked up she would have seen Naruto in the same boat. Hey are you sure about this Urza I mean I can sleep on your couch for tonight if you would like. Naruto said trying to not to think about the stuff that could happen in her room. No it's okay I swear so come on we should get ready for bed. After Urza said this both went to her room which to his shock had posters of strawberry cheesecakes and other stuff, she even had a strawberry cheesecake plushie that she got from god knows where. After showering and brushing their teeth both got into bed with Naruto at the far right and Urza on the left. Good night Naruto. Urza said. Good night Urza. Naruto said smiling at her which in exchange got her to smile as well. Soon both were fast asleep and neither noticed that both were moving to the center of the bed where Urza ended up putting her head of Naruto's chest and putting her arm around his waist while Naruto put his head on hers and wrapped his arm around her protectively. Tomorrow would be quite the interesting morning for these two, I wonder what their reaction would be to finding themselves in this situation well, you'll just have to wait till next time. Next morning. Sunlight that was the first thing both felt. But both were too comfortable to wake up. But the light was persistent and won out much to the two's annoyance. The first to open their eyes was none other than Naruto, and the first thing that filled his vision was red. For some reason Naruto found it a beautiful sight to wake up to and just stared at it, for what seemed like forever. That is until he remembered where he was and who he was sharing a bed with, and slowly looked down at the head, the red hair was connected to Dot there he found the cutest sight he had ever laid eyes on there on his chest was Urza with her head on his chest with a bit of drool escaping her lips, and every so often she would hug the strawberry cheesecake plushie toward her with her free hand. Naruto just chuckled at the sight of it, but apparently his chuckling was enough to stir Urza from her slumber, which made Naruto stop and just look at her stretch. Morning and yawn, Naruto. Urza yawned at to him making him smile at her. Morning to you too Urza did you have a great sleep? Naruto asked her while she just rubbed her eyes while still having that little drool on her right side. Yay, I don't know why, but I had the best sleep in a very long time, how about you? Urza asked after fully awakening. Well my sleep was good too since I woke up to the cutest sight ever Urza I didn't know you were cuddlier. Naruto teased while pointing at her strawberry cheesecake plushie that she still held close to her chest while she rubbed her eyes. 
Urza merely looked at him then at what he was pointing and found him pointing at her plushy and blushed while trying to stutter out a response. I'm just messing with you Urza, after all you looked absolutely adorable like that well you best shower and change, will I make breakfast okay, then we can go and take a job together. Naruto said while walking out of the room, leaving a blushing and stuttering mess that is known as Urza Scarlet. 30 minutes later. After they both had showered they sat down and enjoyed simple eggs, toast, bacon, hash browns and a glass of orange juice that Naruto had made for them. Wow Naruto this really is a great breakfast. Urza said while serving herself second which only made Naruto laugh. Thanks, but this really is nothing, maybe next time we can enjoy a romantic candle at dinner eh, Urza. Naruto teased making Urza spit her juice to her right so as not to hit Naruto. Naruto really enjoyed teasing Urza since he found it so easy to be able to make her blush, stutter, smile, and laugh. It felt good to him since he could see that she didn't do those stuff quite often and was determined to make her happy. Thus teasing Urza now come on I wish to go on a job with you. Naruto said making her nod not trusting her voice right now. Naruto merely got up and washed their plates while Urza went to get ready. When she came back Naruto found her pulling a large crate with dozens of suitcases that he presumed were her armors. Let me guess, not everything fits in your requip space. Naruto asked while rubbing his templates. Urza merely nodded her head yes. Naruto then walked up to her and pulled out a scroll and started to write something that looked like runes magic but way more complexes to Urza. What are you doing Naruto? Urza questioned him while looking over his shoulder to look. I'm making a storage seal for you to seal your luggage in so as to make you lighter. Naruto answered her making her look at him in surprise and just decided to wait for him to finish. It had taken Naruto almost four minutes to finish and when he did he walked towards the luggage and made a hand seal. I Naruto thought and soon a plume of smoke appeared and when it cleared Urza saw her luggage gone. What happened to my luggage Naruto? Urza asked him to which Naruto merely picked the small scroll up and handed it to her. It's in here and it makes it easier to carry don't you think? Naruto said. Urza just nodded and took the scroll while attaching it to her waist and then looked at Naruto again. Where did you learn to do something like this Naruto? Urza asked to which she saw Naruto get a weird look on his face and instantly knew she had asked the wrong question. From a place that I wish never to remember again. Naruto simply said making Urza nod not wanting to make things worse. Come on Urza I wish to see what jobs we can find to keep us occupied. Naruto said making her smile and run after him. Fairy Tail Guild. It took them about 5 minutes to get there since Urza lived really close by so as to make it easier on her. When they entered they saw the guild going about their regular business which involved fighting each other. They made their way to the request board and Urza chose a job with a big reward. They then ran towards the master who was sitting once again on the bar. Master we would like to take this job together if you wouldn't mind. Urza asked him while handing him the request flyer so he could inspect it. Very well you too, but please be careful out there. Makarov said while stamping the job flyer and writing down their name in a book, so he knew you took the job. Okay, master, don't worry, we'll be back in no time flat. Naruto said while grabbing Urza's hand, making her blush, but before anyone could say anything, he picked her up bridal style again and disappeared in a stream of yellow lighting. Naruto Ragnar A. Something tells me you might be ready for the S class trail even if you are young. After all, age has nothing to do with the amount of power one possesses, you will go far, kid. So please be careful out there because I think that if you keep on going in this direction, Fairy Tail may have a new master in the making, Makarov thought while looking over his guild and at all his children and couldn't help but smile. Things will only get interesting from now on. Makarov finished his thought while taking a big swing of his beer. Six months later. Life couldn't be better for Naruto, he had joined the Fairy Tail Guild and not even a full year later he was asked to participate in the S-Class promotional trails. There Naruto had to fight Gildert's Clive, the ace of fairy tale and man was that one intense fight. But in the end Naruto lost, not from being overwhelmed by Gildert's magic power when he decided to unleash his full strength. Oh no Naruto lost from exhaustion pure and simply. Gildert's and Naruto had fought for over one full day which surprised everyone since they never thought Naruto would last a second against Gildert's. Gildert's had even said that at the rate Naruto was growing, he would surpass him in exactly three to five years. This fight alone earned him the S-Class position along with a very heated kiss from Urza which surprised everyone. Murahin not wanting to be outdone by her rival, stormed up to them, pulled Naruto away from her and kissed him with as much passion as when Urza did it. This went on for about 5 minutes with every man in the room cursing Naruto for landing two S-Class future beauties. That's not all apparently the council got wind of his exploits and invited him to Ira where they told him that they had something very important to tell him. Flashback Ira 4 months ago. Naruto was standing in front of the council with another boy about his age. The other boy had blue hair and a weird tattoo over his right eye. 
He looked strange to Naruto as if he was being possessed by something, but before he could think about it more the council call for his attention. Naruto Ragnar, son of Ragnarok the scaleless dragon and Lily the primordial goddess, we the magical council have called you and young Seagrain here to this meeting. One of the council members said making both stand a little straighter. We wish to bestow upon you two the title of one of the ten wizard saints, but unfortunately there is only one position available right now. A female member said. So we have come up with a way to choose who gets the position of wizard saint please Seagrain step forward. Another member said. Seagrain did as told and awaited the next step that the council would ask of him. Please unleash your full magical power and we will decide it who gets to join the wizard saints. The first council member told him. Seagrain then unleashed his full power, making the whole room start to tremble a little, making the council member to tense just a little. Thank you Seagrain that'll be enough now then Naruto please step forward and do the same. The same member said. Naruto then closed his eyes and took a big breath and tried to calm down. After a second he snapped his eyes open and unleashed his magic. Unlike Seagrain's his magical power cracked the wall and shattered the windows, it even made some of the council members grab onto the table so as to not suffocate under his power. Seagrain merely looked on in fear at the sheer power he displayed, and when they all looked at him all they saw was a huge white scale-less dragon roaring at them. The enough Naruto WEM made our CH choice. The chairman yelled out. Naruto then stopped his magical power and looked at them, and after about 10 minutes of them getting their breath back they spoke. Then Naruto Ragnar we hereby make you a wizard saint, and you will hold the seventh sit, we would also grant you a sit here on the council, should you please. The chairman said and no one noticed the rage-filled expression on Seagrain's face. No thank you honorable council, I am perfectly fine just being a wizard saint for now, but I know for certain Seagrain could make a fine addition to your council. Naruto said while suspiciously looking at Seagrain to see his reaction. Very well then you two are dismissed Seagrain stay, you might as well start learning the ways of the council now. The chairman said while tossing a wizard saint amulet to Naruto who merely caught in his left hand and decided to wear it like a necklace. Flashback ends. When Naruto got back and show everyone his wizard saint necklace, Makarov threw a huge party to which all of Magnolia was invited, since now their town had two wizard saint. After that Naruto decided to up his training so as to try to catch up with Makarov, who revealed that he was the current fifth sit in the wizard saints. To the surprise of Makarov, Naruto was able to rise to the sixth sit beating Ose Porla, the current X6 sit and master of Phantom Lord Guild. Now though we find Naruto along with all of Fairy Tail, doing nothing but sitting around and drinking, since all the good jobs wouldn't arrive till that afternoon. Hey big brother Naruto can you take me on a S-class job with you again? Asked an innocent voice which made him look down to find none other than an 11-year-old Lasana Strauss, the youngest Strauss. Really Lasana, I took Natsu, Grey and you on one last week. Naruto said to her which made her pout. But you're the only one who takes us on S-class jobs with you. Lasana said while giving him the teary eyes technique. Well to be honest he is a wizard saint, so there is little to no danger when you go with him on any jobs. The voice of Urza rang throughout the guild hall. She had just gotten back from a job that she and Mira of all people took together. They mostly did it so as to get to know one another better and to try to find a way to share Naruto. Yay that's true so why don't you take her on a job Naruto? Mira said after going to the master to inform him of their return. So I find I'll try to find a good enough job okay, so Mira, Urza do you wish to come along? Naruto asked them making them think for a while, and just when they were about to answer a light appeared in the center of the guild. The light was so bright everyone covered their eyes, so protect themselves from the sheer intensity of it. Soon the light faded and in its place was a beautiful white-haired woman in the most amazing black dress any man has ever seen. Right next to her was a small ball of golden light just hovering about the height of the woman's shoulder. Mom Dad. The guild heard Naruto say making everyone look back at him and the woman in light. Hello honey how have you been? The woman asked him making Naruto smile and walk forward. When he was in front of her he hugged her and nodded toward the ball of light, since he could hug a ball of light. I've been great mom, I've gone on many jobs, had many adventures, made many friends it's been amazing. Naruto said making the woman smile. Um Naruto what's going on? The voice of Makarov rang throughout the guild. Naruto merely smiled and started to introduce everyone to his parents. Well master say hello to my parents, the ball of light is my father Ragnarok the scaleless dragon, and this woman is my mother Lily the primordial goddess mom, dad, this is the third master of fairy tale Makarov Dreyer. Naruto said making everyone go wide eyes at having a goddess in their presence. Natsu on the other hand ran towards the ball of light and when he got up and close to it he looked up and said. Hey you're a dragon right so that mean you know where Igneal is right tell please where is Igneal. Natsu yelled at the ball of light. You haven't told him son. The ball of light asked Naruto making Natsu look at him. 
it wasn't my place to say anything and you know it dad I was either going to be his own dad when he found him or he would find out on his own. Naruto said making everyone nod their heads at his reason. Fine whatever I'll tell him kid your father and all the other dragon that trained you dragon had to leave to attend something called the Dragon King Festival, which only occurs every 400 year. Ragnarok said making everyone look at him and start to think why would the dragons leave to attend something like this. But why didn't he say anything then if it was something like that? Natsu said. Because he didn't have a choice it is mandatory all dragons are forced to leave their charges, no matter how attached they may be. Ragnarok said making Natsu look at the floor. But that's not what we're here for Naruto it's time to go back. Ragnarok said making everyone look at Naruto and saw his face go emotionless which scared everyone including the master, Urza, and Mira to get shocked faces. What, where are you going Naruto? Urza said to him. Allow me to tell them Naruto. Lily said making Naruto nod. Well first I have to start from the beginning for you all to understand and so Lily began the story of Naruto's past life and of his mistreatment. After the tell was done every single member of Fairy Tail was pissed at the treatment of Naruto over something as stupid as that. And that is why Naruto will go back to the village hidden in the leaf for the Chunin exam and show them all that he never needed their help to get strong. Lily finished making a lot of the kids look at Naruto and some got determined looks in their eyes. Naruto I will allow you to go on one condition. Makarov said making Naruto look at him. What might that be master? Naruto asked surprised at the fact that the master would allow him to go and humiliate his old home. But you go and show them what a fairy tale wizard can do, and also since you need a team of three to join the exams I appoint Mira and Urza to join you and Gilderts will be your team sensei for the duration of this exam. Makarov said making the three smile and for Gilderts to look up and chuckle. Well what are we waiting for let's go kick some ass. Mira said, but before they could move they heard Naruto's voice. If you go with me then you must be willing to kill other in the ninja world, it's a kill or be killed world, so I'll ask now are you willing to take a life should you have to. Naruto asked making Mira, Urza and Gilderts freeze and look at him. Mira and Gilderts merely nodded their heads, since they had nothing against killing, since they had done it a few times. Urza on the other hand froze and started to remember the Tower of Heaven and what happened to her grandfather figure. But then she started to remember all that she and Naruto had done together and the fun and how he always tried his best to make her laugh and smile. Yes, as long as you need our help we will kill should we need to Naruto. Urza said with fire burning in her eyes, making everyone look at her in surprise and at her pure determination at wanting to help Naruto. Oh look Ragnarok, Naruto little girlfriend is so cute she will definitely give me some very cute grandchildren. Lily said making Urza burn up. Mom. Please stop that. Naruto said while trying to hide his huge blush. Lily enough we are wasting time here Naruto, Urza, Mira and Gilderts go and get ready we leave in exactly 15 minutes. The voice of Ragnarok said making the four nod and leave to get ready. Ten minutes later. After getting back the four of them stood by the front door and started to say their goodbyes to everyone. Naruto showed them all what one of the ten wizard saints can do and show them that you're a proud member of Fairy Tail. Makarov said while ending his little speech by extending his left hand up with his pointer and thumb extended in Fairy Tail's goodbye symbol. Don't worry master will show them all the power of Fairy Tail. Naruto said while making his right hand in a fist and then the next thing anyone saw was a flash of light and when it finished the four were gone. Leaf front gate. Half a mile away from the leaf a shining light appeared and when it finished it showed Naruto, Urza, Mira and Gildert standing there with Lily and Ragnarok in ball form. Well we're here honey go and make them all regret their decision of ignoring you and shunning you show them the power of the true slayer. Ragnarok said. Don't worry once I'm done they will fear me and respect me and be begging me for forgiveness. Naruto said and with that the four started walking toward the leaf. Good luck baby we'll be watching over you always. Lily said before both Ragnarok and her vanished. Anoha front gate. Two Chunins were sitting down just looking at all the people entering for the Chunin exam. That is until the two of them saw four people coming closer and what they saw shocked them. The sensei, well that what he appeared to them, was a huge man about six feet five inches with rusty orange slicked back hair and a small beard. He wore what seemed like a black tattered cloak like he had been through many battles. The other three were 13-year-old children who were obviously his students. One was a white-haired girl who wore a long sleeve skin tight black shirt with baggy purple tight pants and black sandals. She wore a vicious murk which really scared them since she was expelling a purple shroud of chakra. They didn't know what it was since it felt like chakra but slightly different. The other was also a girl but she had red scarlet hair and she wore a standard black anbu armor with a sword strapped to her back. And she was expelling a red shroud of the same kind of energy as the white-haired one. Both the redhead and white head seemed to be arguing about something. Though the one who really caught their attention was none other than the only boy in the team. 
He wore a black skin-tight shirt and black anbu pants with a white sash around his waist, with a long part hanging loosely to his right side. He wore a black pair of boots with white lining around them. Think Goku's boots, but black and white were the oranges. He had a gray coat on like a cape, and around his neck was a strange amulet-like necklace with a strange cross design on it. He had sun-kissed yellow hair which only one other person that they knew of had. He also had ocean blue eyes and three whiskers like marks on each cheek, and he seemed to be radiating power if the golden shroud outline was any indication. As the group got closer the two gate guards couldn't help but compare him to their current leader. Soon the group got up to the booth and the rusty orange-haired man went up to them. Yes hello my name is Gildert's Clive and I would like to enter my three student in this year's Chunin exam. Gildert said while handing them all four of their registration papers. Okay then all we need is your names and the name of your village you will be representing. One of the gate guards said. Very well then my name is as I said Gildert's Clive and I am the sensei of this team and we will be representing the village of Fairy Tail. Gildert said. My name is Marahin Strauss and I am the she-devil of Fairy Tail. Mira said while pointing at herself. My name is Urza Scarlet and I am known as Titania Queen of the Fairies. Urza said to them making them look at her weirdly. Finally the one they wanted to hear looked at them with no emotion and pointed at himself. My name is Naruto Ragnar and I am known as the true slayer of Fairy Tail. Naruto said making both guards look at him with wide eyes since that name was very similar. So can we participate in the exams or not? Gildertz asked them snapping them out of their shock. Oh yes I'm terribly sorry, but yes the exams begin tomorrow, so please read this for it will tell you where to go for tomorrow. The guard said while handing Naruto a booklet for him to read. Thank you now if you'll excuse us we will leave to try and find a place to rest for tomorrow. Gildert said with a smile. And with that they entered the village and walked for about 10 minutes before they stopped and Gildert's looked at them. Well I guess you three can go and explore while I go and try to find out anything about the exams take care and try not to kill anyone unless they use force. Gildert said making them nod and with that he left. Well I might as well show you around eh? Naruto said making them smile and the three started to walk around the village with Naruto showing them around and telling them about anything they asked him to explain. Though when they were turning a corner they saw a group of people there and one boy, at least to them, it looked like a boy, was holding on to a child by the scruff of his neck. Hey brat why the hell did you bump into me? The boy said to the scared little kid. Please let him go he didn't mean it, it was just an accident. A bubblegum-haired girl screeched making Naruto, Urza, and Mira cover their ears at the sound of her voice. No way I'm gonna teach this brat to not mess with his superiors. The boy said while cocking his right hand back ready to punch the kid. Just when his fist was gonna connect with the kid's face the kid turned into shadows and disappeared. Soon after the other saw a shadow appear behind the makeup wearing boy. I really hope that you hitting a little kid was nothing but an act. Naruto said while fully materializing from the shadows. What if I was, what it to you? The boy asked a little scared. Naruto merely turned his arm into an iron sword and placed it at the kid's neck, scaring him even further. Well because I can't stand idiots like you who think that just because they have power they can do whatever they want. Naruto said while dragging the sword to the boy's manly parts. Now then you will turn around and leave because if I see you face again, I will not hesitate to kill you understood. Naruto asked him making him nod rapidly. But not get out and take your other member that's hiding in the trees with you. Naruto said making them look at him with surprise and look up at the tree, only to see a red-haired teen, and both paled immediately. Digara H how long have you been there? A very scared dirty blonde hair girl asked. Damari, Kankuro shut up you're an embarrassment to the village you what is your name? The now revealed Gara said while looking at Naruto. Neither Naruto's group nor Gara's noticed two new people joined the crowd and Naruto simply crossed his arms while answering his question. My name is Naruto Ragnar and what might your name be? Naruto said not noticing a girl his age cover her mouth and gasp. Brother is that really you? The girl thought while gaining tears in her eyes. Naruto we will meet in the exams and you will prove my existence mother wants your blood. Gara said before sand wrapped around him and the two others and disappeared. Naruto looked at the crowd and saw the pink haired girl along with a raven haired boy glaring at him and when he looked at the last person his eyes narrowed. Urza, Mira we're leaving. Naruto said quite harsh sounding making both girls merely nod at him. Before the girl could move to talk to him Naruto disappeared in a stream of lighting, leaving her with her right hand extended. Naruko, are you okay? The pink haired girl questioned. Sakura, Sasuke I'll see you two tomorrow in the academy, I need to go talk with my dad. Naruko said while taking off as fast as she could towards the Hokage Tower. What was that about? Sakura questioned but never received an answer, so she decided to go home and get ready for the exams. The wheels of fate have turned, Naruto has returned to the leaf and met his sister after nearly seven years of being missing. 
what would the Leafs' reaction be when they see just how truly powerful Naruto really is? Well you'll just have to stay tuned for the next update to get your answers later my fellow reader. Naruto's Hotel Room. After Naruto and the girls had reached the hotel room, Naruto merely sat on the sofa and kept quiet. The girls were nervous and kind of scared at an angry Naruto. I mean why wouldn't they be Naruto was a freaking wizard saint for a reason. With the power he possessed should he be angry enough he could single-handed take out an entire city. Naruto are are you okay? Urza asked him trying to keep him calm. Yes don't worry Urza I've calmed down it's just that seeing her first after nearly 7 years is still taking me some time to not just go up and beat her along with that family to an inch of their lives. Naruto said making both girls smile at knowing he wasn't angry. Well don't worry Naruto maybe tomorrow you'll be able to do just that. Mira said making Urza agree with her. Just when Naruto was about to respond the front door opened and in walked Gildert's with a bag of groceries it would appear. Um Gildert's what's with all that? Urza asked him. Um, you know I really don't know. Gildert's replied making all three of them face planted his answer. Then why did you buy it if you don't know? Naruto yelled out his question. Because the vendor was very convincing. Gildert simple said. Sigh whatever did you manage to get any useful information about this place that I don't already know. Naruto asked making Gildert's nod his head with a serious look upon him. Yes apparently someone named Orochimaru is planning an invasion on Konoha during the finals and he has the sand village and his fake sound village on standby for the invasion one month from now. Gildert's explained while Naruto went over to the balcony and looked over the village. I see well that is not our fight, we came here to show everyone the power of fairy tale, and that's it whatever happens we will not help them, we will defend ourselves should the sound, sand or leaf village, try to force us into anything. Naruto said making Gildert's and the girls nod. So what the plan Naruto? Gildert's questioned while munching on what seemed like a tomato. Nothing we go to sleep, wake up and participate in the exams as we planned. Naruto said, but then all three saw Naruto look over his shoulders and walk back inside while closing the doors to the balcony. It would seem we have some spies. Naruto said while going to the front door. I'll be back after I take care of this nuisances of ours, don't wait up for me. Naruto said while leaving the room. It seems like the leaf is about to lose some very promising ninjas. Gildert said while grabbing another tomato. DCH, it's their fault for spying on us the rules clearly say under no circumstances will anyone spy on visiting teams no matter the cause. Mira said while grabbing the booklets that the gate guards had giving them. I hope Naruto come back soon though. Urza said since unbeknownst to anyone she had gotten used to sleeping with Naruto as her pillow and as her source of warmth. But Naruto. Naruto merely walked on aimlessly around the village till he got to a remote area of a training ground and just stood there waiting for the team to make themselves known. Come out you five I know you're out there. Naruto exclaimed after getting tired of waiting. Soon five masked and cloaked figure fell down from the trees and stood in front of him. Naruto saw me your father wishes that was as far as he got before a sword mad out of shadows pierced where his brain was. Then Naruto saw me what are you August second said before being cut in half. Don't ever insinuate that I am that man's son. Naruto yelled out while going for the next one who just had enough time to dodge a fist of flames that would have mad contact with his face. Please Naruto-sama calm down another attempted to talk before being silenced forever. I said don't ever call me that. Naruto screamed before in a fit of rage entering his dragon force. To the shock of the remaining two Naruto grew what looked like golden scales on his body and face. Then they were able to see Naruto get in a weird stance where his legs were apart from each other and his arms held out in front of him as if grabbing something. Naruto then proceeded to throw his head back and take a huge intake of air before announcing his attack. Sky Dragon Roar. Naruto yelled out, and the only thing the last two saw was the image of a huge scale less dragon roaring at them. When everything cleared from all the smoke that covered the area, Naruto was able to see the five ninja dead and sprawled all over the training field. DCH, no matter what this insects will only see me as that man's son. Naruto said while walking away though on his way out Naruto stepped on one of the ninja's head, like if it was an insect. The resulting effect was the ninja's head popping and staining the ground red with its blood. Well then it seems I'll have to show him I'm no longer the little brat he ignored and pushed around as a kid. Naruto said while smiling like a madman at the scene he made. Um send all the ninja you like Hokage-sama, I'll just send them all back in body bags. Naruto told the night sky while walking away. Naruto never noticed another masked man coming out of the very trees and looking in his direction. It seems like no matter what Hokage-sama tries Naruto will just ignore or kill anyone comes his way. The man thought before leaving to inform the Hokage about the incident. Next morning. Naruto and the other woke up the next morning earlier than they were supposed to and ate a light breakfast, but they noticed that Gildert's was gone. Man I swear if he went out to goof around I'll be so pissed. Naruto said making the girls giggle at Gildert's absent-minded nature. 
Relax Naruto, Gildertz must have had a good reason for leaving early. Urza said to him trying to lighten the mood. Yay yeah, whatever let's just go and get to the academy to start the first part of the exam already. Naruto said while getting up and heading for the door followed closely by Urza and Mira. It took them about 10 minutes to get there since Naruto already knew where the academy was. As they walked in they went up the stairs and only stopped when they noticed a big group of kids around a pair of doors with two people in the front of it. Please let us in we want to compete in the exams as well. The voice of a brown haired girl made itself known. She was currently sporting some bruises and scratches here and there. Believe me kids this exams aren't for the faint of hearts we're trying to protect you guys from this. One of the boys said. Just when Mira was about to go forward Naruto placed his hand on her shoulder and stopped her. This is merely a way to point out the weak Mira, let's leave these idiots to their games. Naruto said making Mira nod and they began making their way to the real location. But just before leaving they heard an arrogant voice call out the guard bluff. Drop the Jinjutsu you too, I know this isn't the third floor, nothing fools in a chair, especially something as pathetic as that sorry excuse of an illusion. The voice of a raven-haired boy rang throughout the hallway. Idiot Naruto mumbled out and for some reason decided to stay and watch what happened. To their surprise a boy wearing a green spandex suit challenged the Sasuke Chiha to a fight to which the boy arrogantly accepted. Amurza, Mira, I wish to see the fool embarrass himself. Naruto told them making Mira and Urza to smile and follow him. But they saw bored them deeply since they had seen toddlers fight better than this too. Well that was boring. Mira said while looking on at the scene of an older man wearing the same suit as the kid who they now knew as Rock Lee. DCH that was a one-sided battle indeed none of them are even close to being in our level yet. Naruto said, and that's when they saw both the man known as Guy and Lee Hug and a sunset at the beach illusion appear. Naruto finding it disturbing extended his right arm and fired a pinpoint magic shock wave, throwing all the one on the ground level off their feet and onto their asses. The seven looked up to the balcony and saw Naruto leaning on the rails just staring at them with a bored expression. Did, did you do this? Guy asked while standing up. Yes, your weird illusion was bugging me so I merely got rid of it. Naruto answered back while yawning. By the way this match was boring you two were so predictable in your attacks, if I were you I'd hope you guys don't need to fight me since that fight would be so boring. Naruto added in making both Lee and Sasuke look at him with narrowed eyes. I'll have you know kid that my student here is the best out of his teammates in hand to hand combat. Guy said surprised that someone was able to disrupt his illusion and even insinuate that his student was weak. Whatever old man I'm out this place reeks of weaklings. Naruto said while walking away. What's that you idiot scared that I might beat you before the exam? The voice of Sasuke said. Naruto merely kept walking and only said. DCH, no, but I'd rather put off humiliating you till the finals where everyone in your precious village can see you lose. Naruto said making Sasuke boil in anger. But that Naruto and the girls were gone and they made it towards the third floor where they saw Gildert standing at the entrance. There you are Gildert's where were you? Mira asked him when getting up close to him. Yay yeah, sorry about you three it's just that all senseis must be here early to wait for their team to see if all three come or not not my choice. Gildertz explained. Ah I see then well wish us bad luck since we don't need any more good luck. Naruto said making Gildertz laugh. I'm going to skip the first part since I find that boring. In front of the forest of death. Naruto and the girls had passed the first part with flying colors and were then sent here to participate in the second part. And that's about all you guys need to know, so please head to your designated gate and await the bell oh, and one more thing try not to die. The crazy lady that Naruto had nicknamed the psycho snake loving blood hungry bitch finished her explanation about the second part and just then a bell rang and the gate opened for them to head in. After about 10 minutes of traveling through the tree they stopped and looked around. What now Naruto? Mira said while looking at him. Now you two wait Mira I can sense a team about 5 minutes from here so stay here while I retrieve the heaven scroll. Naruto said making both nod and watched as Naruto left. Five minutes later. When Naruto saw the team of what he recognized as the village hidden in the clouds, he sat down on a branch and waited to see what they would do. To his eternal boredom the three merely sat down and ate like if they weren't currently in a death game. Naruto merely got up and extended his arms while yelling. Lighting dragon. Lighting tower. Naruto yelled and out of nowhere a huge tower of lighting came out of the sky, hitting the team square on electrocuted them instantly. After the lighting stopped Naruto jumped down and saw the three burned bodies of the once cloud ninja and searched their bodies. It wasn't until he checked the last body that he found what he was looking for. Thank Kami you guys had the heaven scroll. Naruto said while taking it and leaving to go back to Mira and Urza. When he got there he found them sitting down while munching on some ration bars they had. So did they have the scroll we needed Naruto? Mira asked while eating the last of her ration bar. Yes now come on I for one don't want to sleep in this stupid forest. 
Naruto said while going at full speed toward the tower followed closely by the girls. Fifteen minutes later. They had made it to the tower and spotted a sign telling what to do next. Um seems we open the scrolls here well then no time like the present day. Naruto while opening the scrolls and tossing them on the floor. Soon a cloud of smoke appeared and once it cleared it showed none other than Gildert's there. Yo how's it going you three? Gildert's asked while waving the peace sign at them. Did I guess so what now Gildert's? Naruto questioned. Well you guys are the first one here, so I suppose you wait and relax till the five days are over. Gildert said making them sigh in annoyance. Man now I wish I hadn't found that scroll so early on. Naruto said making Gildert's laugh at him. Well come on you three let's go eat something, and then you can all go rest till the end of this exam. Gildert said making them nod. Five days later. It had been some very boring five days for the three mages indeed. There was absolutely nothing to do for them in the tower except eat, sleep, and train a little. To their surprise the sand team made it in almost an hour after them. After that it was the Leafs teams and other that they didn't bother remembering. Now though we find all three standing in front of the Hokujin boy were Mira and Urza nervous seeing as Naruto was covered by a dark aura. Well now that the entire group of finalists are here I would like to end thing over to the Hokage so that he may explain some things to you. The psycho bitch said. Naruto decided to tune out what the Hokage said and merely looked at his competition and boy was he disappointed when he saw no one who looked even remotely challenging. Now then I will choose the first fighter, so please stand by the protector said. I'll be skipping matches until I get to Naruto's and the girls. Now then the next fighters are and soon the screen was spinning again and Naruto just watched hoping he got a decent opponent. Naruto Ragnar vs Rock Lee. When the screen stopped everyone heard a groan and looked to see Naruto have a disgusted face. Um now Naruto it might be at least fun to humor them. Gildert said making Naruto sigh and jump off the balcony. It seems Lee will win this fate is on his side today. The voice of a wide-eyed boy next to a brown-haired panda-looking girl said. Man what a bummer to be paired up against Lee who is technically the best jutsu user of our age. The girl said. Add when they all heard laugh and when they turned to look they saw Gildert's laughing along with Mira and Urza who were giggling. What might be so funny Gildert's? A man with silver hair asked. Oh it's just that it's funny how you guys think Naruto is gonna lose. Gildert said. What do you mean is Naruto really strong? A girl with red hair asked quiet and curious. Of course he'll win after all Naruto is far stronger than me. Gildert said making all the kids go wide eye at the thought of a genin being stronger than a janin. Really then what is he doing still being a genin eh? The arrogant voice of Sasuke said. Oh that's easy you see in our village we don't classify our members by genin, chunin or even janin. Gildert's lied. Then how do you classify them? A red-eyed woman asked getting everyone curious including the Hokage and the woman next to him who were listening in. Well we classify them by either them being no class or S-class ninja. Gildert said making them all look at him weird that is until Gildert's continued. But there's a class above S-class that only 10 people can achieve at a time. Urza said this time. And what might this 10 people be called if I may ask? Guy said. They're called the 10 wizard saints, with the top 4 being called the gods of Ishkar, since they are so powerful they aren't considered human. Mira said making everyone sweat at the thought of these four beings. Hey and you're saying Naruto is one of this ten wizard saints. The pink haired holler monkey said. Yup and not only that, but Naruto is the sixth sit with our village leader being the fifth sit, so that mean after the first four Naruto is the second strongest human wizard saint. Urza said making them all look at Naruto and all they saw was his bored expression. D then why the hell did you guys let him join this exam if he really is as powerful as you say, then why? The silver haired man known as Kakashi asked a little nervous. Because Naruto wanted to rise in the ninja ranks normally since he got bored of all the S-class, SS-class, SSS-class, 10-year and 100-year missions he would normally do. Gildert said. SHH the match is starting. Urza said making them all look at the arena. Arena. Are both fighters ready to begin? The proctor asked. Yes Lee said while Naruto merely nodded his head. All right then begin. The proctor shouted while leaving the field. Before anything could happen Guy shouted out to Lee. Lee removed them. Guy shouted. Hey are you sure Guy sensei you said to never remove them unless I'm in a dire emergency? Lee asked back. Lee trust me you'll need everything you've got to beat Naruto. Guy said making Lee nod. If you say so sensei. And with that Lee jumped up to the statue and removed a pair of weights. Naruto just stood there with an amused smile and waited for Lee patiently. When Lee threw the weights to the floor they created a huge crater and Naruto for once whistled at the impressive sight. That moment was the moment Lee ran toward Naruto at full speed becoming nothing but a streak. Lee's team thought it was overseeing as Naruto was busy looking at the crater than at Lee. But to the surprise of everyone when Lee went for a roundhouse kick to the head Naruto merely tilted his head and the kick missed. What he dodged? Were the screams of Lee's female teammate. 
Meanwhile with Naruto, Lee continued trying to hit him by appearing everywhere so as to confuse him. It was to no use Naruto just continued dodging everything Lee threw at him. Like I said back when you fought Sasuke, Lee you're too predictable I see everything you're gonna do that I'm starting to get bored, so please show me how Leaf Ninja really fights, or else this match is gonna be fast and brutal. Naruto said while dodging a barrage of fists directed him. Lee on the other hand couldn't believe someone was able to dodge his attacks when he removed his weights. Lee then jumped back and took off to the side of the arena and tried to get behind him. Sai so man what a boring fight I guess I finish it now since I'm completely bored. Naruto said while moving to the right slightly and letting Lee pass him just before grabbing him by the neck of his shirt and pulling him back. The result was Naruto planting his knee directly in Lee's spine and everyone heard a sickening crunch. HHH. The pain screams of Lee was heard all around the balcony. Naruto didn't stop there just before hit the ground Naruto used his right foot to kick him up in the air where Naruto reappeared on top of him. Naruto then took a deep breath and fire a point-blank breath attack at the defenseless Lee in midair. Lighting dragon roar. Naruto screamed out, and everyone was able to see a huge lighting tornado coming out of Naruto's mouth and hitting Lee dead on. HHHHH. Lee screamed while being hit at point blank range. When it was all over, everyone looked to Lee to see him on the ground burned badly, and his leg seemed to be broken along with his right arm. Though what shocked them the most was that Lee was missing his left arm, and his right eye was bleeding profoundly. Um, seems like you survived that, well, whatever Proctor called the match, I won. Naruto said, and all the Proctor did was nod. He the winner is Naruto Ragnar of Fairy Tale. The proctor announced and all he got was silence. Lee. Those were the shouts of Lee's team running to see if he was alive. Oh my god Lee what did he do to you? Tenten said while covering her mouth even Niji was shocked at what Naruto did. This was just a preliminary match you didn't have to do this to him. Guy screamed at Naruto. Well you shouldn't send wee children like him to an exam where he could lose his life as far as I see it, I acted according to the rule of the exam, therefore I could have killed him, should I wanted to back then he just got lucky since I was actually aiming to kill him. Naruto said making everyone else fear fighting him. The brother what have you become? The thought of one Naruto asked. Na Naruto is that really you? This thought belonged to none other than Minato and Kishina who watched Naruto with fear at the brutal display he put on. Naruto merely walked back to his team and sat on the ground with his back against the wall. That was so fucking hot Naruto. Mira said while looking at him with hunger in her eyes. Yes even though a bit brutal it was a very great show of strength Naruto. Urza said while playing with the hem of her shirt since she was feeling hot under her collar again. Yo Naruto why didn't you kill him I saw you there at the end you porously stopped the attack before it could kill him my question is why. Gildertz asked. I may hate this place with every fiber of my bone Gilderts, but I'm no murder, but should any of them try to get revenge well then now that's a different story. Naruto replied hearing him a nod from Gilderts. Hey or I'd everyone please go back up to the balcony so that we may continue. The proctor said making everyone go back up. The next match will be Urza vs Tenten will both fighters please come down. Tenten merely got a fire in her eyes and head down immediately. I guess it's my turn huh? Urza said, but before she could jump down to the arena Naruto told her something. If you win Urza I'll take you out on a date and I'll buy you all the strawberry cheesecake you want you here Urza. Naruto said with a small smile. Urza blushed at the date comment and then got a glint in her eyes when he said he'll buy her as much strawberry cheesecake as she wants. Be prepared to go broke Naruto. Urza said with a mischievous smile giving Naruto a shiver. But that Urza hopped down to the arena and stood in front of Tenten. Are both fighters ready? Tenten said nothing while Urza bobbed her head up and down really fast in excitement. Well then begin. And with that Tenten began throwing kunais, shurikens, and all manner of weapons. But they were no use against a girl with a mission Urza merely re-equipped a pair of sword and ran straight at Tenten while cutting all her weapon. It took her only 10 seconds to get in front of Tenten and then Urza proceeded to punch her in the face, knocking her out instantly. Why win her Urza Scarlet? The proctor said while Urza got the biggest smile while chanting something about free cheesecake for life. But Naruto. Naruto and the other merely smile at Urza's quick finish. I guess if you want her to finish something fast all you have to do is promise to buy her some cheesecake. Gilderts laughed at the fast match. You know you go poor now right? Mira said while looking at Naruto. But it was worth it don't you think Mira I mean now you're the only one left that needs to fight. Naruto said making Mira smile. Yeah I guess you're right. Mira said while looking at her opponent. Will the final two please make their way down at this time? The proctor said making Mira jump down followed by her opponent. The final match will be between Gera of the Sand versus Marahin Strauss, are you two ready? All he got was a pair of sadistic smiles. Okay then let the match. Begin. And with that Mira rushed forward. 
will Mira be able to beat Gera or will she lose and most likely lose her life to the deranged boy? You'll have wait till next time my friends. Last time. The final match will be between Gera of the Sand versus Marahin Strauss, are you too ready? All he got was a pair of sadistic smiles. Okay then let the match. Begin. And with that Mira rushed forward. Right now. As Mira rushed forward intent on finishing it fast, she was able to see a huge amount of sand imprisoning her in a dome of sand. Ahihim mother wants your blood. Gera said while extending his right arm and making a crushing motion. Tamari, Kankuro and the others started to feel sorry for the fairy tale losing a member. Kakashi was about to say how sorry he was for their loss until he saw Gildertz and his students smiling. Aren't you three angry or sad about your friend dying down there? Kakashi asked them. No because this fight is just beginning. Gildert said making everyone raise an eyebrow at that. That's when everyone heard a voice come out of the sand coffin and they saw Gera's eyes widen in shock. Demon take over. Satan's soul. The voice of Mira rang out and the sand exploded outward showing a very different person. Everyone was shocked at what they saw all except for the boys and somewhere turned on. There in the middle of the arena was Marahin in her full takeover. She stood there in a very revealing suit that showed her toned belly and her impressively grown breasts. Her suit was red with yellow lining and claw-like gauntlets with a black tail coming out from just above her pelvis. Well that was interesting to say the least come on show me what you can do or was that it? Mira said while smirking at him. Everyone was shocked to see Mira change and just kept looking at her with wide eyes. Balcony. WH what the hell just happened? Sakura asked while Ino, Hinata, Naruko, Kin, Tenten, Tamari and Sakura herself were starting to feel self-conscious since they could see Mirahin becoming a very beautiful woman in the near future. Sakura and Ino were more jealous about Mira's figure since they had tried to get that type body for a long time. Sasuke on the other hand had gotten interested and was smirking. She would make a great wife and give me some very powerful Ichiha airs. Sasuke said making Naruto, Urza, and Gildert's laugh. What's so funny? Sasuke said making everyone look at the fairy tale team. Do you think Mira will go out with you hot a fluck boy Mira only likes people with power and you don't have that power. Gildert said making Sasuke glare at him. Everyone was looking at them like they were crazy, that is until Ino decided to ask you could possibly be stronger than Sasuke. Really well who could be stronger than Sasuke, huh? Ino asked getting Urza to look at her eyes. Naruto of course. Urza said with a smile making Sasuke shut up when he saw Naruto look at him from the corner of his eyes. Everyone shuddered at Naruto's brutality when he fought against Rock Lee. Arena. Mira merely stood there waiting for Gara to make a move and he didn't disappoint. Gara sent a huge wave of sand at Mira, hoping to crush her only to fail, since Mira spread a pair of black bat-like wings and flew into the air. HMPH pathetic it seems all you can do is control sand well, then allow me to show you my technique. Mira said while landing on the arena and putting her hands together and a black sphere started to materialize in her hands. Up in the balcony. Up in the stands Urza and Gildert's eyes widen, while Naruto merely laid his head on his right hand which was on the rails. DCH seems this match is over already and here I wanted to see Mira crush this guy. Naruto said making Tamari, Kankuro, their sensei and the sound ninja to look at him. What are you talking about your friend hasn't even gotten close to Gara. Tamari asked not believing that Gara would lose. Watch and learn then because Mira's next attack is killer. Gildert said with a smile. Arena. Mira simply stood there making the sphere while smiling at her Gara on the other hand grew angry. I'll show you power giant sand burial. Gara said while summoning a huge tidal wave of sand. Mira simply smiled while adding more power to her attack. Mira waited until the last minute before extending her arms and shouting out her attack. Soul extinction. Mira shouted out while firing her beam at Gara, which surprisingly ripped through his attack and it ended up hitting Gara full force which caused a huge explosion. Everyone was holding their breath while waiting for the smoke to clear too. When the smoke cleared everyone saw Mira in the air, flying like nothing happened with a huge smirk on her face. In the arena floor Gara lay face down with his sand sprawled on the floor and seemed to be unconscious. DCH I was expecting more from this boy. Mira said while land and turning back to normal. D the winner of this is Marahin Strauss from Fairy Tale. The proctor said. Everyone especially the sand and sound team were shocked to see Gara lose. Now will the winners please come down. The proctor announces making all the winners come down. Now then you will all draw a ball from this box and with that we will choose the finals match debut. The proctor said while well, one by one they came up to get a number. Alright then now that everyone has a number could you all please redirect your attention to the screen and you will see the match line up. The proctor said making everyone look at the screen. Sasuke vs Naruto first round. Urza vs Tamari second round. Shikamaru vs Mira third round. Shino vs Kankuro fourth round. Niji vs Naruko fifth round. 
and with that the preliminary round have come to an end, so now all of you have a full month to train and get stronger for the finals, so you can all leave now to train see you all in one month. The proctor said while everyone started to leave. Nanarito can we talk? The meek voice of one Kashina Namikas asked behind the four of them making turn around to look at them. No I have nothing to say to either you or that man, you gave up that ride a long time ago. Naruto said while walking away from them with Urza and Mira on his left and right flanking him with Gildert's right behind him. Kashina and the rest of the Namika's family just looked on in sadness as they saw Naruto walk away. What now mom, dad? Naruko questioned while looking down at the floor trying to keep her tears in. We'll keep trying until he lets us talk to him. Minato said while taking a thinking pose. Honey why don't you get both Jiraiya and Tsune to train him, maybe he'll forgive us if you get two of the legendary Sanin to train him. Kishina pleaded him trying to do anything to get Naruto to forgive her. You know you might be right Kishina, I'll get in touch with them immediately, but for now come Naruko we need to up your training for the finals. Minato told them making them nod. Unknown location. In the dark room stood the sand team and the sound team looking at someone in the shadows. It would seem that the sand's ultimate weapon was nothing but a lie, but I am quite surprised at the recent turn of events what those two did has really caught my attention. A voice said making the children shiver at the hissing the voice made. I still can't believe that Gara lost I mean he had his ultimate defense up, how could he have lost to that girl? Kankuro asked no one in particular. Never mind that I want you to be ready because when the time comes for the invasion I want you along with anyone we can spare at the time to bring me Naruto Ragnar, he would make a fine subordinate if I can get him to see things my way until then stay clear of him and train for the finals. The voice said just before it disappeared. Yes Lord Arachimaru we will do as you command. Two of the sand siblings and the only remaining member of the sound team said. So can may we ask why you were spared by Arachimaru and not the other two? Tamari bluntly asked her. Apparently Dosu went after the injured Rock Lee to finish him off, but was caught by the Anbu and took his life in order to not be interrogated Zuko on the other hand was useless with two broken arms, so Lord Orochimaru made him dinner for his snakes, as for me well he said, since this Naruto person seemed to like strong females, he wishes for me to get close enough and to try and coax him into sex. Apparently Lord Orochimaru wishes to have a blood descendant of Naruto, should he fail to acquire Naruto's body, so I'm basically a breeding factory now. Kin finished with a sigh. And you're okay with that kin? Kankuro asked the girl who the two of them had started to see as more than an ally and thought they were finally starting to make a friend. I have no choice should I succeed and Lord Orochimaru fail in his effort to gain Naruto's body as his next vessel, then Lord Orochimaru wants a descendant of Naruto to experiment on to try and reproduce Naruto's power and even create many more like him to have as his next body therefore he would never have to look for the next candidate. Kin said while looking at the floor sadly at the thought of possibly giving up her first child to the madman known as Orochimaru for his sickening experiments. Well you don't have to worry because should it come to that we'll give our lives so you can escape and go to this Naruto person I mean if even Orochimaru fears him then maybe he'll be able to protect you from him and I highly doubt is the type to abandon his family, I mean look at him, he may be fucking scary and powerful, but when it came to those two hot girls around him was always keeping close. As if keeping an eye out for them. Kankuro said since this was the first time he was able to make a friend. Kankuro is right so don't worry if you do succeed in getting pregnant by Naruto, we'll be there to protect you no matter what. Tamari said while brandishing her big fan. Thank you, you too. Kin said with a small smile at finally making some new friends beside a certain foul mouth girl. No problem, now come on we have to rest and start our training tomorrow for the finals. And with that Tamari and the other two walked away from the dark room to head back to their hotel room. Four days later. It had been four days since the end of the preliminaries, and Naruto and his team were hard at training in a secluded part of the leaf away from everyone. They knew they could handle anything, but they wanted to make sure to humiliate their opponent. It didn't help that Naruto was able fight first against the supposedly prince of the leaf, since he was the last to Chihimira on the other hand, was eager to fight against a genius, and see was this Shikamaru Nara was made of. Urza was mad that they would get to fight Leaf Ninja, while she was stuck fighting a wind user, who as she said wouldn't even last five seconds, unless she let her. Now here they were the fifth day of training, and Gildertz and Naruto were watching Urza and Mira duke it out in a spar. Gildertz then without looking at Naruto began to speak to him. Naruto there's exactly five people watching us about 500 feet north of here what should we do? Gildertz asked Naruto who simply looked in the direction that Gildertz said and answered. Come out you five I know you're there. Naruto exclaimed loudly so the five people could hear him. His yell made both Mira and Urza stop and look at him. That's when they noticed Naruto's biological family, along with a man with white hair that reached his waist and a blonde woman that had the biggest pair of tits the two had ever seen. Once the five of them were within speaking range, Naruto just stared at them and decided to talk first. 
What do you people want can't you see you're interrupting our training session? Naruto said making his parents look down sadly while the other two glared at him. Hey brat show a little respect to your parents. The blonde woman said. I wasn't speaking with you old hag. Naruto said making the blonde woman gain a tick mark on her forehead and send bloody murder through her eyes. Whoa there kid calm down that's no way to speak to your new teachers. The white hair man said with a huge grin. And Naruto this are Jiraiya the toad sage and Tsunade the slug summoner and renowned medic nin, and they are two of the legendary Sanin of the leaf, and we thought that to show you how sorry we were, we asked them to train you for the finals. Minato said sheepishly. HMPH I have no idea who this two old fossils are, and I do not wish to have them train me, they can't teach me anything of use to me anyways, so take them with you and leave I'm far stronger than this two wannabes anyway. Naruto said making Jiraiya and Tsunade go shocked and angry at this kid, actually saying he was stronger than two of the Sanans. Kid who do you think you are to say something so ridiculous? Tsunade said, but soon got a weird look on her face. Tell you what though I'll humor you and let you have a match against me if you win we'll leave you alone, but if I win you'll train under us and spend time with your mother and father. Tsunade said and Naruto merely looked at her and then at his team and sighed. If you wish to be humiliated by me then fine I'm ready when you are. Naruto said after his friends moved to the sideline along with Uraya and the Namikazes. Well guess you'll get to spend time with your son after all Minato, because Tsunade is going to wipe the floor with him. Jiraiya laughed and Minato merely looked on and hoped Jiraiya was right. What followed soon wasn't worth calling a fight since Naruto rushed forward and delivered a devastating blow to Tsunade's chin, and Naruto soon followed through by grabbing her leg and slamming her back to the ground. Tsunade was able to get up and jump back, but Naruto was faster and closed the distance in a second. White Dragon's holy breath. Naruto fired a point-blank extremely weakened breath attack at her exposed stomach. And followed it up with a lighting attack. Lighting Dragon soaring lighting. Naruto shouted while landing a lighting-covered head but Tsunade couldn't even defend let alone counter, since Naruto was keeping up his attacks, leaving only a fraction of a second open, which wasn't enough for her. Hiraya and the Namikazes were shocked to see Tsunade the supposedly strongest women in the elemental nation, get battered around by their own son like it was nothing. Wow what the hell is going on here why is Tsunade losing she never loses except in gambling. Jiraiya was terrified since he had no memory of Tsunade get beaten up this bad. They then saw Naruto preparing another attack and from the looks of it, it was gonna be huge. Dragon Slayer Secret Arts. 100 Lighting Strike Dance. Naruto bellowed and just when Jiraiya was gonna jump in and stop it the technique struck home. All they could hear was Tsunade's screams of pain and agony. When it was over, which took a while considering it was called a 100 strike dance for a reason. Jiraiya and the others ran toward Tsunade and found her alive but badly injured. Be gone from my sights all of you you aren't even worth the workout. Naruto said while walking away with Urza, Mira and Gildert's not far behind him. Minato come we need to take Tsunade to the hospital fast. Kishina said gaining a nod from the blonde. Right come on I have a marker there so everyone hold on. And with that the five of them disappeared in a yellow flash. But Naruto. So what now Naruto? Gildertz questioned him as they walked back to their hotel rooms. We keep training and then on the finals the three of us will show everyone the power of fairy tale and show them how more powerful a mage is than a ninja. Naruto said making them nod. Well let's hope that in the day of the finals these ninja give us a good challenge. Mira gleefully announced. HMPH I highly doubt any one of them will be much of a problem to us. Urza said and then she remembered something. Naruto you still owe me cheesecake and you said I could have as much as I want so come on we're going shopping. Urza said while grabbing his right hand and running off. Oh hell no, you're not taking my Naruto from me. Mira shouted while running after them. Haha ha, it's only a matter of time before they get together, I don't know whether to be proud of Naruto or to worship him his one lucky bastard for managing to snag two future S-class beauties in the making. Gildert said while giggling perversely at the mere thought of what he would do with two girls should he ever get them. Time skip day of the finals. Naruto, Urza, Mira and the rest of the finalists stood at the center of the arena, waiting for the proctor to arrive and begin the finals. It took nearly 10 minutes for the proctor to arrive, and Naruto grew suspicious when it turned out to be someone new. Welcome everyone to the Chunin exam finals. The proctor announced getting the crowd to roar in excitement. Naruto tuned out the rules and everything else and decided to wait for his match to begin. Will Naruto Ragnar and Sasuke Chiha please stay while everyone else head to the stands? The proctor announced though only Naruto was seen making everyone else wonder where Sasuke was. Stance. Up in the stand Sakura and the rest of the rookie 12, along with a highly bandaged Lee were confused as to why Sasuke hadn't shown up. Hey do you guys think Sasuke ran since he has to fight that kid Naruto? Kiba asked only to get two glares from Ino and Sakura. Sasuke would never do that just you wait he'll show and beat this nobody. Sakura said getting everyone to doubt her. 
We let's hope you're right Sakura. Ino said while thinking maybe Sasuke should just forfeit the match to avoid ending up like Lee. Back in the arena. It had been about 10 minutes already and Sasuke had yet to show Naruto had taken that time to meditate while he waited for his opponent. It seems Sasuke is a no-show. Sasuke Chiha is here by the proctor couldn't finish his sentence since at that moment a plume of smoke appeared in the center of the arena. After the smoke cleared standing there was none other than Kakashi Haddock and Sasuke Chiha back to back. The crowd cheered loudly for their arrival while Kakashi looked at Naruto and saw him merely siding cross-legged on the ground with his eyes closed. Hey loser get up it's time for me to teach you who's superior here. Sasuke mocked Naruto who simply continued meditating. Sasuke be careful this isn't going to be an easy match, so start off strong you hear. Kakashi whispered to him. HMPH whatever this loser won't last 5 minutes against me. Sasuke boast. Overly confident are we princess. Naruto teased back and that comment got Sasuke pissed. Well now that you're here we can begin Kakashi head up to the stand if you will the proctor announced and with that Kakashi left to join the other senseis and their students. Are the two of you ready the proctor asked gaining Sasuke's heated glare which he then got in his stance and Naruto simply got off the floor and put his hands on his waist looking bored. Well then let this match begin. And with that the first match of the finals began. Stance. Up in the stand Ino and Sakura along with all of Sasuke's fangirls started to screaming about how Sasuke would beat Naruto in 10 second flat. Just then Kakashi joined them getting their attention. Ah Kakashi how have you been I hope young Sasuke is ready for this match. Guy said while helping Lee sit up better. Honestly I don't think any amount of training will make him a match for Naruto. Kakashi said making everyone there gasp. Kakashi sensei how can you say that I mean you trained Sasuke one on one there's no way he can lose now. Sakura asked. Yes I know but remember that Naruto is part of this 10 wizard saints organization, I highly doubt they would have given him that title if Naruto could be beaten by a lowly genin. Kakashi responded getting the nods from all the senseis. Then what was the point in having him be in the finals if he'll lose? Kiba said. Experience Kiba, Sasuke needs the experience of fighting someone far superior than him, no matter how brutal it turns out to be. Kakashi said making the children look down at the arena. Let's hope Naruto finishes this fight faster than ours or Sasuke might just have to give up being a ninja altogether. Rock Lee said making everyone flinch. Pages booth. Up in the cages booth the Hokage along with the Reikage, Suchikage, the new Mizukage, and the Kazukiage were all sitting waiting for the fight to start. The Kazukiage was though in reality Orochimaru and he was extremely interested in the fight between his next vessel and Naruto. So that's your long lost son eh Hokage? The Tsuchikage asked with no hint of hate of humor. They may have been enemies during the war, but after all that's what war is it didn't mean they really hated each other, it was just the action of few and not of whole. In fact all the cages got along quite nicely not buddies, but not stranger either. Yes but certain events have drove us apart and we are currently trying to make amends with him. Minato said and behind him were Kashina and the third Hokage as acting bodyguard and advisor. Well I can't say I understand, but I do wish you the best of luck my rival. The rakage, as said with a man that looked like him and had a pair of shades stood behind him, along with another dark-skinned man with white hair, who seemed to be falling asleep while standing up. Yes after all we do have the arranged marriage in the works don't we Lord Hokage? The Mizukage said while a man with an eye patch over his right eye and a shy looking boy stood behind her. So I yes I know May, but right now I'm more focused on getting my son back than that. Minato said making May nod in understanding. Well it seems the match is about to begin, so let's watch what your son can do Lord Hokage. The Kazukiage hissed out. Right your Lord Kazukiage. Enoki the Tsuchikage said. Arena. After the proctor announced the beginning of the match he jumped away to the top of the wall. Naruto and Sasuke merely looked at each other for a while, just waiting to see who would make the first move. Of course Sasuke being Sasuke grew impatient and jumped back while going through hand signs and when he finished he held his right hand and in it the sound of chirping bird could be heard. Everyone including the cages were surprised that Sasuke Amir Genin could pull of a S-class assassination technique. Once Sasuke finished he rushed forward toward Naruto intent of killing him for disrespecting his when he finished fighting Lee and because he knew that if he got rid of Naruto then Mira and even Urza could become his. Tadori. Sasuke roared while lunging at Naruto when he merely 5 feet away. Then a huge cloud of smoke happened and everyone had to cover their eyes to shield them from the debris that was flying. Everyone held their breath and waited to see if Sasuke's attack connected or not. It was agonizing for some, but slowly the smoke cleared and what they saw made many faint and others to cover their mouth. There in the arena floor was Sasuke face first in the dirt with a 5 feet wide crater and above him was Naruto with his right hand extended in a fist without a single scratch on him. Everyone waited to see if Sasuke would get up, but when the proctor checked him over, he found out that Sasuke was completely knocked the fuck out. 
Um what exactly did you do? The proctor asked Naruto, and since it was so quiet everyone was able to hear him, and they waited to hear what kind of powerful technique this newcomer used. I simply smack him in the head. Naruto said making everyone face plant at his response. A simply smack shouldn't have knocked him out so easily. The proctor argued when he recovered. Psy goes to show you how weak he was if he couldn't even handle a little smack upside the head. Naruto said while walking away. Well the winner of the first round is Naruto Ragnar. The proctors announce and it took a few minutes before the crowd started to cheer for him. Stands. In the stands the rookies 12 were stunned to see how easily Naruto defeated Sasuke. That kid is frightening Asuma said having dropped his cigarette on the floor. The simply have smacked young Sasuke upside the head and had gotten those results, I can see why he got the title of one of the 10 wizard saints, and to think he's merely the 6th sit, I don't even want to know what the 5th sit or the first 4 sits can do if those 4 are called the 4 gods of Ishkar. Gurunai said while trembling at the mere thought of facing someone far stronger than Naruto who was already leagues ahead of her. Yes very frightening indeed I can see why even his sensei follows his orders, if he can do this with a simply smack image, was he can do if he goes all out. Guy said now realizing why Naruto talked down to him and his student back when he first met him. I'll see you guys later I need to make sure Sasuke is alright. Kakashi told the men disappeared without waiting for a response. I'm scared Kiba simply said having peed his pants a little. No one else said anything else since they were too shocked to speak. Pages booth. The cages just sat there with their mouths open while looking at the very fast match. What the hell just happened did Sasuke really just lose to a simply smack upside the head this Naruto brat is really dangerous at this rate, I'll never be able to take over his body, I need to find a way to get him to come to me, but what tch seems like I'll need kin alive after all, damn I need to find someone else to take her place during the invasion, the Naruto Ragnar your body shall be mine. Kuki Kuku. Arachimaru said while still being disguised as the Kazukage. Well what just happened Lord Hokage? The Mizukage asked while looking at Naruto walk back to the competitor's stance. I'm at a loss for word to Mizukage Minato said while looking at the crater Naruto made and wondering if he had been holding back when he fought against Tsunade. Your son is very interesting indeed Lord Hokage. The Kazukiage gave his opinion about the whole ordeal. Indeed he is Kazukiage don't know indeed he is. Minato said while regaining his composure. But Naruto. As Naruto walked up the stairs he was able to see Urza coming down with a smile on her face. Great match Naruto though I thought you would make it, La Urza couldn't finish her sentence since Naruto had grabbed her by the waist and pulled her towards him and smashed his lips against hers. They kissed for what seemed like forever until Naruto broke it and looked her in the eyes. I know you and Mira have been planning on sharing me and I must confess that I was playing dumb so as to not hurt either of you but now I don't have to so win this and the three of us can go home and go out on a real date okay. Naruto said making Urza blush and nod. Oh okay I'll win but you better go and tell Mira as well one last kiss for good luck. Urza said nervously since she's never done something like this. Naruto simply kissed her for a good 15 second before letting her go and watched her go to the arena. He noticed that Urza was putting a little more sway in her step and couldn't help but watch her amazing behind as she walked away. When she was out of sight he ran up the step and saw Mira looking at the arena board. He noticed everyone else also looking at the arena and so went up to Mira and grabbed her hand before dragging to a dark corner. Mira was confused at Naruto's sudden intrusion, but wasn't able to say anything since like Urza, he simply pulled her and kissed her. Mira didn't care what his reason was for doing this, so she simply wrapped her arms around his neck and deepened the kiss. When they broke apart Naruto looked her in the eyes and saw her daze from the kiss, so he simply chuckled. Wow what was that for Naruto don't get me wrong I'm not complaining I'm just curious is all. Mira asked while licking her lips trying to taste him on her lips. Like I told Urza a few minutes ago I know about your attempted of sharing me, and well, this is my way of saying I'm okay with it. Naruto answered her before kissing her again making her blush a little, but otherwise accept the kiss. Now come once we finish up here we'll go home, and the three of us can go on a real date okay. Naruto told her after breaking apart all he got was a nod and a dreamy faced Mira. Um Mira let's cheer Urza so she can finish up faster so we can go home. Naruto said making Mira snap out of her trance and nod. Arena. The smiling Urza could be seen standing in front of Tamari which scared Tamari a little. Are both fighter ready the proctor asked before getting a yes and put his arms in the air. And begin. And with that both girls launched at each other ready to fight with everything they had. Who will win the match and will the fairies be dragged into the invasion or will they abandon the leaf to their fate? You'll have to wait till the next chapter friends. Last time. Arena. The smiling Urza could be seen standing in front of Tamari which scared Tamari a little. Are both fighter ready the proctor asked before getting a yes and put his arms in the air. Then begin. And with that both girls launched at each other ready to fight with everything they had. Now Rina. 
Urza ran toward Tamari intent on finishing it like she did with the panda-haired girl. Just when she was within striking distance Tamari sent a blast of wind at her sending her flying back. Urza was surprised at this and looked up and saw Tamari with a huge fan out and smirking at her. What's the matter Red can't get me I'm not like the weakling leaf girl with the panda ears who you can just punch and be done with it. Tamari said unknowingly causing Tenten to glare at her. Urza looked at the fan and saw that this girl was a wind user, so Urza merely smiled and re-equipped into her heaven's wheel armor. When Urza finished every single man and boy blew back because of a massive nosebleed, since Urza's choice of armor was very revealing. Oh uh, what's that armor gonna do huh? As long as I stay away from you that armor is pointless. Tamari said while jumping back and firing a blast of wind. Urza just stood there and when the wind was within five feet of her everyone saw Urza smile. Tamari was surprised that Urza was smiling despite the situation she was in, but she soon found out why Urza was smiling. When the wind was directly in front of her Urza sliced the wind in half, making everyone's jaw hit the floor. Stance. Up in the stand the rookies and their senseis were looking on at the battle with excitement, but that soon changed to shock at seeing Urza slice the wind in half. She cut the wind in half. Sakura screeched making a lot of people cover their ears from the sheer loudness. No way H how's that even possible? Tenten asked while looking at the two fighters in the arena. That is mighty impressive if I do say so myself. Asuma said while lighting up another cigarette. Yes but I can tell that she doesn't possess the same kind of power as Naruto. Kurenai said making the entire genin look at her. What do you mean Kurenai sensei? Kiba asked her while looking at her along with all the other genin. Well when I see Naruto I instantly start to tremble at the power that rolls of him along with Gildert's, but when I look at Urza and Moran, I feel nothing which tells me that this two are nowhere near the same level as Naruto and their sensei. Kurenai said making everyone look surprised at that. Then what are they doing in the same team as Naruto and their sensei? Ino asked while looking at the two girls. My guess is that this two are the current strongest females in their village, but Gildert's and Naruto are the strongest in the boys and men ranks, not counting the other nine wizard saints. Guy said for once acting smart. I see was the only response he got from the people around him. Arena. Back in the arena Tamari was starting to have a hard time considering that Urza merely sliced up any wind-based attack she sent her way. DCH you're good I'll give you that, but that doesn't mean you'll win. Tamari said while jumping back and sending yet another blast of wind at Urza. We'll see about that re-equip. Flight armor. Urza yelled out while jumping back. Everyone expected another revealing armor, but instead they got her wearing a cheetah armor with a set of ears on her head. Competitor stands. Up in the stand were all the fighter where you could see both Mira and Naruto holding hands while they watched the fight. Sai this match is over now that Urza knows her opponent abilities she won't hesitate anymore to finish it. Naruto said out loud making all the fighters look at him. DCH it seems she's actually good for something after all. Mira said while snuggling closer to Naruto much to the other fighters peeve since Naruto was able to snag a hot piece of ass like Mira. Naruto didn't respond since he was fixated on the outcome of the match that was about to end. He knew that the invasion would begin depending on the outcome of this match. At ready Mira if Urza wins here the invasion will begin. Naruto whispered to her making her nod without changing her expression. Arena. Damari got ready for anything since she knew that no matter what the invasion would begin after this match. I'm truly sorry for this. Urza said making Tamari lose focus for only a second before her vision was filled with a fist. Everyone was shocked at the speed that Urza revealed because one second she was on the other end of the arena and the next she was right in front of Tamari. Everyone was witness to Tamari flying back from the force of the punch and just when she was gonna hit the floor, Urza appeared and kicked her up into the air. Urza followed up with a massive choke slam from five feet in the air directly into the ground. The mere force of it allowed Urza to make a crater, but Tamari refused to lose and jumped back trying to gain space. Her attempts were for naught because Urza appeared right behind her and with a pair of swords slashed her in the back in an X fashion. Though luckily her fan was there to protect her, the unlucky part was that her fan was destroyed in the process. Tamari knew that without her fan she was weaker since she had trained mostly with her fan, not believing she would ever be without it. But now fate had shown her how wrong she was for ignoring her sensei's words about practicing without it. Now then without your fan you don't present much of a threat, so what will you do now eh? Urza asked while putting her sword in a cross position ready to deliver the finishing blow. I surrender. Tamari said with her head down in shame since she hated to admit defeat to anyone. Just when the proctor was about to say who the winner was an explosion happened in the cage's booth and in the audience feathers started to rain making everyone but the most experienced ninja fall asleep. But Naruto. As Naruto saw what was going on behind him a group of ten sand jounin appeared and lounged at him in an attempt to grab him. What happened next no one was clear since they never saw Naruto move, but yet all the sand ninja dropped dead. 
Mira let's go I wish to play with Orochimaru a bit. Naruto said making Mira nod before jumping down to Urza. Arena. Urza was currently surrounded by no less than 20 sound ninja. As she looked around she saw one of them hand Tamari a new fan. It looks like we win after all. Tamari cockily said before she gasped at seeing all the ninja around her get hit by what seemed like white lasers. Holy Ray. The voice of Naruto was heard from above making Tamari pale at the thought of fighting him. Wrong you are my desert torn though I am not gonna hurt you since I have a bigger fish to fry than you so we'll be taking our leave now. With that Naruto grabbed onto both Mira and Urza and left in a stream of lighting. But the cages. The cages were presented with a dilemma right now for right in front of them was none other than Orochimaru of the Sanin. Orochimaru what's the meaning of this? Saratobi stupidly asked. Nothing much I just wish to finally kill you sensei and that brat Minato too, but right now I don't feel like wasting my time, so I'll leave you six with a present. Orochimaru said making the four cages tense along with the ex-Hokage and Jiraiya. Impure world resurrection. When the six of them heard that they grew surprised that Orochimaru had perfected that technique. Quick stop them from opening. Saratobi yelled making them all start firing justices at the ten rising coffins. They were able to get eight of them, but they missed two making them tense at who could possibly be behind those coffins. The coffins opened up to reveal the first and second hokage of the village hidden in the leaf. Asharama and Tabarama Senju the Senju brother and two of the founding members of the leaf village. Asharama Sensei, Tabarama Sensei I have failed you. Saratobi said sadly at the thought that his own prized student did this. Before Rachimaru could start bloating everyone heard a voice ring out through the enclosed barrier. So that's the great and powerful Orochimaru of the San and or better known as the genius of the legendary three. The voice of Naruto rang out through the outside, making them all look to see him along with Gildertz and his girls behind him. Gildertz as you please make an opening for me Urza, Mira I want you to find a way to break one of those four holding the barrier up out of their muse and take them prisoner, I want a few answers after this. Naruto said making the two salute him and run to the nearest one, who happened to be a redhead like Urza. Orochimaru was about to mock him, saying how his barrier was impenetrable only to shut up when he saw Gildertz rip open the barrier, allowing both him and Naruto to enter. Gildertz take care of those two fossils Orochimaru is mine. Naruto said while walking forward to Orochimaru. You got a kid after this you owe me a rematch of our last fight, I wish to even the score this time you got it. Gildertz said making Naruto smile and nod. Wait those two are some of the most powerful ninja to come out of the leaf you can't expect to win on your own. Saratobi yelled only to get Naruto to look at him. Shut it old man if it wasn't for you we wouldn't be in this mess, but you were too much of a soft-hearted old man that you left an insane criminal walk out alive, so spare me your sympathies, Gildertz can take care of them so shut up and stay out of our way. Naruto said making Saratobi flinch at his words. Did whether you like it or not, Orochimaru is strong that I would have to result to using my sage mode, so I'll be lending a hand in this fight. Jiraiya said with two toad fused to his shoulders and getting toad like warts and nose. Ah so that's the legendary sage mode man if I have to turn into a toad every time I need the added power, I would never bother learning it. Naruto said making Jiraiya earn a tick mark. Hey shut a kid if I was fighting you in my sage mode instead of Tsunade, I would have won hands down. Jiraiya proclaimed. That's right my boy for sage mode is the power of nature itself they're nothing stronger than that. The old male toad said. Power of nature how well let's see how your nature energy can withstand the power of a dragon. Naruto said making everyone stop fighting including Orochimaru, since they all felt the power coming out of Naruto. That's when everyone saw Naruto gain gold-like scales on his face and body, it wasn't until Naruto was covered in a golden fire-like energy that Orochimaru knew he was fucked. What is this power? I have never felt anything like this it feel 10 no a hundred times stronger than Jiraiya's sage mode. Orochimaru along with everyone else thought. Well what is this power? The old looking toad asked scared, since when everyone looked at Naruto all they saw was a huge scale less dragon roaring at them. This is the ultimate technique of a dragon slayer this is dragon force. Naruto said while running toward Orochimaru at blinding speed. Orochimaru didn't even have time to dodge, and because of that Naruto landed a fire covered fist in his stomach, making Orochimaru for the first time in a long time, spite out blood. Fire dragon iron fist. Naruto followed up I landed in front of him and firing a point blank roar. Holy white dragon roar. The roar pierced Orochimaru's stomach and chest, making him spite out a huge amount of blood. Everyone was so shocked to see a 13-year-old beat an experienced ninja who fought in a war and came out alive. Wow seems like Naruto isn't pulling any punches. The voice of Gildert said behind them making them turn to him. You beat the first and second already. Jiraiya all but screamed. Yea all I really had to do was destroy two kunais that were embedded behind their skulls, not a really hard job even Naruto would have finished faster than me. Gildert said making the cages along with Uriah and Saratobi nod dumbly. 
Um, why is Naruto covered in gold scales, Gilderts? Minato asked, wanting to know what exactly happened to his son. How oh, you see, your son is what we call a dragon slayer, and currently he is in what they call the dragon force or the ultimate dragon slayer technique, since in this form they wield the actually power of a dragon. Gildert said, and before they could speak, Gildert went over to the place Urza and Mira were trying to get a hold of the redhead. Gildert put his hand over the place where the redhead was making her pale and sweat. Before their eyes, the place where his hand was completely disassembled into little pieces before the whole barrier disappeared. Gildert grabbed the girl and threw her towards Mira and Urza and walked back to the others. There now your men can take those other three into custody. Gildert told Minato before turning back to the one sided fight of Naruto and Orochimaru. Gildert's word did Naruto learn this dragon slayer techniques from if I may ask. Minato asked just in time too since Kashina and Naruko landed next to him and were able to hear his question. The A word did brother learn all this stuff from? Naruko asked trying to know a little more about her estranged brother. And probably from a dragon like every other dragon slayer did. Gildert's answered making everyone raise an eyebrow. Why would a dragon teach someone an art that could kill them? Other Rakage asked him. Because long ago there was a dragon civil war in which the dragons fought each other over the fate of humans, you see one side wanted us as nothing more than food, while the other side thought we could be friends, and so they waged war against one another, now the pro-human side was losing so in an effort to win the dragons took on seven humans and thought them they art and had them enter the war. The seven would soon come to be known as the dragon slayers. Gildert's explained making everyone look surprised. And you're saying my son was taken in by a dragon and taught this dragon slayer arts himself. Kishina asked slightly concerned that her son was in the presence of a dragon. Yes but according to Naruto this dragon is his father giving the fact this dragon actually took the time to teach him actually Naruto knows another slayer art, but I can't tell you since that one is up to him to reveal not me. Gildert said making both Minato and Kishina look sad at the thought that Naruto thought of a dragon as more of a father than them. How many of this dragon are left if we may ask? The Mizukij asked trying to see if she could get a few of her ninja to become this dragon slayers. None since Naruto there killed them all about six months ago. Gildert said making everyone nearly faint at that. Bro brother killed the remaining dragons. Naruko stutter out to which Gildert merely nodded. Before any more question could be asked they heard an explosion and looked to see Orochimaru spitting out another him, but this one looked weaker and paler almost like he was dying. DCH to think I would be losing to someone like you, but I must say I will enjoy using your body because it's now mine. Arachimaru screamed while shedding his skin, revealing a giant white snake that rushed at Naruto. Builders keep everyone where they are I'll finish it here. Naruto said still in his dragon force. Right don't worry I got this. Gildert said while extending his arms preventing anyone from moving. Arachimaru rushed towards Naruto and saw that Naruto didn't even move but thought nothing of it since he would soon have the only body he'll ever need. To the shock of everyone Arachimaru succeeded in entering Naruto's body which soon turned pale and his eyes turned snake-like. Yes I did this body, this power it's all mine haha. Ha. Orochimaru laughed in the body of Naruto everyone was ready to jump to him, but Gildert stopped them. Just wait Naruto has a plan just wait he wants to make sure Orochimaru can never return. Gildert told them making them hesitant for a moment before nodding. That when they saw Naruto Orochimaru do some hand signs that no one recognized. I don't need anyone anymore with this body I can really achieve immortality. Curse Mark Remival. That when everyone understood what Naruto was doing, he was waiting for Orochimaru to remove the curse mark from everyone else. That when they saw him laugh even harder until they saw him stop and grab his head, everyone saw one of his eyes turn back to sky blue. What's going on I'm I in control of th this body. Orochimaru said while grabbing his head in pain. Everyone saw him fall to his knees and that's when everyone rushed toward him to see if he was okay. Urza and Mira jumped in front of Naruto, preventing them from coming any closer to him. What are you doing get out of the way my son needs me? Kishina said before she saw both girls glare at her. Then where were you when he needed you the most eh? Mira said making Kishina flinch. Enough no one is to touch Naruto right now, for there is the possibility that Orochimaru can escape via that method. Gildert said making everyone not have forced. Inside Naruto's head. The tables had turned rather fast for Orochimaru, since now he was the one being sucked in by his own technique. Naruto merely looked on with a bored expression looking at Orochimaru as he sank lower in his own technique. And this was easier than I thought it would be letting you take over, and you destroying those blasted curse marks man that was too easy thanks to you, you yourself will never be able to come back, no matter how much anyone tries, since you will soon be a part of me, and thanks to my dragon slayer art, you can't affect me ever. Naruto said while Orochimaru couldn't say anything. Just when he was second from dying for good he heard Naruto say something. I, by Orochimaru your tail ends here too bad I was your opponent. With that Orochimaru of the Sanin was no more. Real world. 
Back in the outside world everyone saw Naruto stand up and dust himself off with his hair shadowing his eyes. Na Naruto is that you? Mira questioned. Beyond yay it's me don't worry Orochimaru is gone for good now. Naruto said making both Urza and Mira hug him tightly. But that the invasion ended when the word that Orochimaru had finally died went around. Everyone single sound ninja ran away not wanting to be here anymore since without Orochimaru they knew they would lose. The sand surrendered and turned themselves in deciding and ending it quick instead of losing more men and women in the process. Two weeks later. Time flew and the sand was forgiven since they didn't know that their Kazakiage was dead and that they were following the orders of Orochimaru instead. Naruto and his group were constantly asked to come to the council, but they ignored it every time not wanting to deal with those old farts as Naruto once said. Now though we find Naruto and his group leaving the leaf and headed to a hillside to teleport back to Fiori and back to their home. Just when they had stepped out of the village they all heard footsteps and turned around and saw Naruko and her parents running up to catch them. Brother wait please please stay we were really sorry, so please stay here and allow us to make it up to you please. Naruko said while bowing her head to her brother of all people. No I already told you I only came here to become a chunin, and that's it from now on our paths will never cross, so I will never see either of you again, so this is the final time we'll ever see each other again goodbye Naruko. With that Naruto left with his group leaving behind the crying mess of the Namika's family. Hill sighed. The group of four made it to the hillside, where they found Naruto's adopted parents there along with two girls who were glaring bloody murder at Naruto. Now, now you two don't make those faces or your face will stick that way. Lily said making the two look down and mutter sorry. Great now then come Mira, Urza, Gildertz and of course Dei and Kin, let's head back to Magnolia. Naruto said making them nod. You better not have lied about this place taking in us in. Teia said trying really hard to leave behind this life and to try and forget ever working for a man like Orochimaru. Don't worry you too Master Makarov is very accepting in who he lets into the guild. Naruto said making the girls nod. Well fine then let's get on with it, I don't have all fucking day. Teia said with a small shiver of hope. Mom if you please send us back to Magnolia. Naruto said making Lily smile and nod. Next stop Magnolia town. Lily said. But that the eight of them disappeared in a flash of light. Fairy Tale Guild Hall. Back in Fairy Tale everyone was doing their usual routine of drinking, fighting and taking on job requests. That is until the light blinded them and made them get into a fighting stance. When the light died down there in front of everyone was none other than Naruto, Urza, Mira, Gildertz, Lily, and the ball of light Ragnarok along with two others. Hey guys guess who's back. Naruto waved with his trademark foxy grin, making the entire guild roar in happiness at their arrival. Naruto. My boy welcome back. Makarov yelled out while coming up to him and giving him a grand fatherly smile. I hope everything was put in order. Makarov asked gaining a nod. Great. Well just one more thing my boy who might those two young girls be? Makarov asked getting the two girls to walk forward and present themselves. Name's Teia don't forget it old man. Teia said with a smirk. My name is Kintsuchi Master Makarov. Kin said with a small bow. The girls in return got a hearty laugh from Makarov and he waved them off. No need for formalities my young ones, but allow me to introduce myself my name is Makarov Dreyer and I am the current third master of Fairy Tale. Makarov said while smiling at them. So do either of you wish to join Fairy Tale? Makarov asked making them both go wide eyes before nodding. But well where would you like your guild stamp and in what color? Makarov asked them. Right left shoulder and in blue gray. Both girls answered at the same time. After the stamping was done Makarov jumped up to the second floor and yelled out. Let's welcome our newest family members and returning family with a giant feast. With that the entire guild went nuts. The fight in the elemental nation was over and the group made it back to Earthland. Will the elemental nations ever resurface or will they stay forgotten forever? You'll have wait till next time my loyal readers. Don't worry though I'm working on fixing that little problem by taking a break from writing those two stories. Once I'm once again pumped I'll dive right back to those two. So yay think of it as a vacation from writing those two also I might rewrite the Dragon Slayer King all over again, seeing as it has so many problems. Also the fact that many of you are sending flames about just about anything in that story lead me to believe that a rewrite is in order. I know that the whole story moved too fast and that many things are different that canon, but come on this is why this website exists for doesn't it? It's for us fans to write our own version of our favorite shows and I'm books etc. So I'll probably take down the Dragon Slayer King and do an entire rewrite from beginning till the newest chapter. I hope I made some of you people who only come to this site to bitch happy sheesh, I don't know why it's called if we the fans can't even write our own stories the way we like it without a stupid idiot coming along and saying stuff like. Naruto wouldn't act smart. Or Urza should only be paired with Gel. Last time. Fairy Tale Guild Hall. 
Back in fairy tale everyone was doing their usual routine of drinking, fighting and taking on job requests. That is until the light blinded them and made them get into a fighting stance. When the light died down there in front of everyone was none other than Naruto, Urza, Mira, Gildertz, Lily, and the ball of light Ragnarok along with two others. Hey guys guess who's back. Naruto waved with his trademark foxy grin, making the entire guild roar in happiness at their arrival. Naruto. My boy welcome back. Makarov yelled out while coming up to him and giving him a grandfatherly smile. I hope everything was put in order. Makarov asked gaining a nod. Great. Well just one more thing my boy who might those two young girls be? Makarov asked getting the two girls to walk forward and present themselves. Name's Taya don't forget it old man. Taya said with a smirk. My name is Kintsuchi Master Makarov. Kin said with a small bow. The girls in return got a hearty laugh from Makarov and he waved them off. No need for formalities my young ones, but allow me to introduce myself my name is Makarov Dreyer and I am the current third master of fairy tale. Makarov said while smiling at them. So do either of you wish to join fairy tale? Makarov asked making them both go wide eyes before nodding. But well where would you like your guild stamp and in what color? Makarov asked them. Right left shoulder and in blue gray. Both girls answered at the same time. After the stamping was done Makarov jumped up to the second floor and yelled out. Let's welcome our newest family members and returning family with a giant feast. With that the entire guild went nuts. Now fairy tale guild hall. The party had started like any other fairy tale celebration, with lots of alcohol and people fighting over the smallest thing. Right now we find Naruto up in the second floor looking down at everyone along with him were Laxus who stayed a good distance away from him and Gildertz who was leaning on the rail and looking at the party. Hey Naruto don't forget our little agreement hey you and me, one on one you hear loser has to do whatever the winner wants. Gildert said while smiling at his friends enjoying themselves. The yeah, I know we'll fight later but not right now, since I have to think of a place to take both Mira and Urza for our first date. Naruto murmured out while looking at the two girls. Both girls were currently beating the shit out of everyone without mercy. Naruto merely looked on and saw both Taiya and Kin also in the fight. Taiya seemed to enjoy it more than Kin if her million watt smile was any indication. Kin seemed confused about the way Fairy Tail partied and was seen mostly dodging attacks instead of delivering them. Naruto also noticed that his parents had already left and was a little sad since they didn't even bother to say goodbye. As Naruto continued to survey the fight he noticed that even the master was joining the party if him having a drinking contest with two of the older men in the guild was any clue. Hey Laxus what about you got any girlfriend yet? Gildertz teased the older blonde with a troll face. DCH they would only slow me down. Laxus said while looking away and staring at the S-class request board. Sai sheesh Laxus you should go out and enjoy life, I mean we humans never know when our last day could be, so why not enjoy it while it last day? Naruto asked him only to get a pointed glare, but nothing more since Laxus was weary of Naruto since the first time they met and Naruto beat him. First floor Urza and Mira. Down on the ground floor both Mira and Urza finished their little disagreement and were sitting down at the bar, waiting for their order to come. So Naruto asked you out too huh? Mira stated more than asked. Why yes he did after he kissed me that is. Urza said remembering the kiss she shared with Naruto. You too I knew he was a good kisser from the time we kissed him when he made S class, but damn that kiss almost had me wetting myself in pure pleasure. Urza just blushed at the way Mira phrased it because she too had almost wet herself from the kiss. So what do you think he'll do for a first date? Mira asked her breaking Urza from her naughty fantasy. Huh? Oh I don't know maybe take us out to one of the fancier restaurants in Magnolia. Urza told her while trying to remember which restaurant sold the best strawberry cheesecake. At that moment their order arrived and it showed that Urza had ordered the aforementioned desert while Mira ordered the devil's food cake, XD. Second floor. Back up in the second floor Naruto grew bored and decided to go home for the day since he was tired with what happened with that family. Well I'll see you two later I'm beat so I'll be heading home now. Naruto said before making his way toward the stairs. Alright see you around kiddo maybe during the next S-class promotional trails we can have an exhibition match. Gildert said to Naruto as he passed by. All Naruto did was wave his hand dismissively at him while walking down the stairs. As Naruto made his way through the fighting crowd he dodged flying people, object, and the occasional magic spell sent this way and that way. As he was walking down a lonely road on his way to Urza's house which the two still shared, he noticed his parents waiting in front of Urza's door. Mom, Dad what are you two doing here I thought you guys had left. Naruto asked when he was within asking range. Well we wanted to congratulate you on your victory honey. Lily said while smiling at him and holding out a small banner that said. Happy birthday Naruto um mom I think you have the wrong banner. Naruto deadpanned. Wow I guess I do silly me. Lily sheepishly laughed trying to hide her embarrassed blush. 
Ragnarok merely stayed quiet and watched the scene for another minute or so before sighing and looking at his adopted son. Naruto listen w we kind of forgot to tell you something. Ragnarok said while sounding meek. Um okay whatever it is that it couldn't wait till the next time I saw must be important so shoot. Naruto told them while crossing his arms over his chest. Well you know how we said you could have more than three wives Lily began and seeing Naruto nod, she gulped nervously. Well it turns out that since you're the first true god slayer that it's different that Ragnarok's mating thing. Lily said before looking off to the side to stall for time. Just get to the point mom. Naruto sighed out. Well it turns out you have a mating season like a dog or any animal does that just so happens to start at the peak of a god slayer peak, but for some reason you're the exception which I attributed to being Ragnarok's son. Lily said making Naruto drop his jaw and have his eyes bulge out of his sockets. You mean to tell me I'll be in heat soon? Naruto all but yelled. Surprise don't worry though since I was able to make his pill just for you Naruto. Lily said while handing him a jar of pills. Take one right now and another in the morning, one pill a day keep the hunger away. Lily giggled at her own weird joke. Naruto ripped open the jar and took one out and swallowed it whole without asking what exactly it did. So this pills will stop me from getting the urges. Naruto happily said. Oh heaven no honey that would be too dangerous. Lily said making Naruto raise an eyebrow in confusion. Then what the hell do these pills do mother, father? Naruto asked frantically. They prevent you from impregnating all the females you have sex with since they forcibly kill the sperm before it even reaches the surface. Ragnarok explained while sounding rather pleased with himself. Naruto just stared at them with disbelief written all over his face. Look Naruto if we made a pill that stopped your urges that would only bury them and if you had even forgotten to take your pills, once the urges would have been so strong you would probably have had sex with every female in Magnolia, also it doesn't help that when in heat your potency increases to 100%, meaning you would have very likely impregnated the whole female population by the end of your mating season that lasts well over two weeks. Lily sagely said to him. Your mother is right son this was the only safe way we could think of to keep you under control, your mating season starts in about three days, so make sure to tell fairy tale about it and try to stay home, since you'll have a 24-7 heart on also try and convince your lovely ladies, since if you don't have sex for about one day, then you'll also go mad and attack and most likely rape a poor woman and we don't want that now do we so always have a girl with you so as to calm down and stay away from any other women since once you made a mark will appear on the base of their necks with your symbol marking them as your mates which mean no other man can touch them. Ah is there anything else I should know also is this gonna be a yearly thing or what? Naruto asked a little scared about the whole mating thing. No it's a every five year kind of thing so come on son we'll go with you to tell your guild mates and warn them. Ragnarok said making Naruto sigh and nod. Okay let's go then better get this out of the way sooner. Naruto said defeated. Build hall 10 minutes later. Once they got to the guild Naruto went straight to the master and asked to speak in privately before telling the whole guild. So what is so important that you needed to speak to me in private my boy? Makarov asked once they were inside his office. Master Makarov my son will be entering his mating season since he is my god slayer and Ragnarok's dragon slayer and therefore we are here to tell you about the potential consequences that may occur. Lily began before she told Makarov everything they had told Naruto just a few minutes ago. And that's why my son will need your help to at least maintain a bit of his sanity. Lily finished and all three looked at Makarov and saw that he had his jaw on his desk. B but Naruto is just 13 why is he going into heat now? Makarov asked a little freaked out about the whole thing. We are well aware about that Makarov, but actually this wasn't supposed to happen until Naruto turned 18 or even 20 at the most since at those ages, one reached the peak of his or her power, but apparently Naruto gained that peak now and well, it forced him to enter his mating season sooner rather than later, and if you're worried about him impregnating all your female mages don't be since we gave him a special pill that I created to stop him from impregnating anyone since even I know he's too young to be a father. Lily said in her rare state of seriousness is too young to be having sex in the first place, why couldn't you make a pill that will stop his urges instead? Makarov asked them making both parents sigh. Because it's like we told our son, if we were to stop his urges then they would only bubble up inside him and drive him crazy attacking any and all women in his path, resulting in Naruto impregnating all the female population of Magnolia that aren't either married or in a relationship, since Naruto would be able to smell the scent of another man on them, signifying that they have already mated with someone else. Lily informed him making Makarov see the logic in her words. I see well if there isn't anything I can do about it then I'll have to trust you in not letting him impregnate my children. Makarov said making Naruto's eyes bulge out of their sockets. Are you serious master don't you have some sort of powerful spell to help me or anything? Naruto questioned desperately. 
Naruto you of all people should know that there is nothing in the magical world that can stop something as natural as a mating cycle. Makarov reminded him. Naruto only bowed his head since he didn't want this to happen, and he certainly didn't want to hurt the two girls he just started to show his feeling to. Naruto I know you didn't expect this and neither did we, but we didn't have any warning either, and when we noticed it was too late to do anything about it, so we're sorry honey. Lily said while looking away from him not wanting to see his disappointed face. Don't be mom I know you two would have done something had you two known earlier, so I don't blame you two, it's just that I don't want to hurt Mira and Urza, since I just started to finally show them my feeling. Naruto told them while sighing. Well no need to worry about that my boy since I know for a fact that those two really do love you and will do anything to help you even this. Makarov said with a grandfatherly smile. Come now my boy I'm sure you'll have at least four mates by the end of this two weeks ahead. Uh -huh. Makarov giggled perversely. You go and tell the master I wish to go home and rest for the time being. Naruto said before walking out and leaving through the guild back door so as to not have to explain to anyone why the master and him spoke in private just yet. When Naruto left Makarov and Naruto's parents went to the guild hall and saw that everyone was still fighting each other. Quiet down you stupid brats I got an important announcement to make. Makarov screamed. Everyone instantly stopped what they were doing and looked at their master and waited to see what he had to say. What is it master? Urza asked while looking at him. I have recently been informed that Naruto being the son of Lily the primordial goddess and Ragnarok the scaleless dragon will be going into heat and therefore they have asked me to warn all women their child bearing age to stay away from him and three day he will go into heat and it will last for two weeks so anyone that is 13 and up stay away from him all who wish to help him come to my office now. And Naruto's parents will decide it if you're eligible to help Naruto. And with that being said Makarov headed back to his office along with Naruto's parents. They didn't have to wait long since not even five minutes later he heard a knocking sound. Enter. Makarov expected only Mira and Urza, but what he got surprised him and Lily. Master is it true what you said about Naruto? Urza asked a little nervous. I'm afraid so my dear, his parent have just filled me and myself. With that he looked at the gathered crowd and spoke. Once you do this there is no going back children since once you mate with him and Mark will appear at the base of your neck marking you as his and his alone, no other man may touch you, which means you won't be able to even kiss another since the Mark will act up and burn you, but the Mark will seal the other man's magic or if the man is strong, it will kill him since he isn't your mate. Lily spoke while warning them what might happen. DCH I don't care about that my demon takeover magic identifies Naruto as my alpha therefore I don't have any problems with this terms since as a half demon I go for the strongest man and Naruto is that man so I can't leave him even if I wanted to since he is my alpha already. Mira said while looking Lily in the eyes to show she was serious. We owe that shit had our lives since if it wasn't for him I'd probably be being tortured or worse right now by those leaf ninja. Taya said while trying to hide her small blush. At first this started as a mission to be impregnated by him to bring back to Urachimaru, but Naruto killed him and freed me, therefore I owe him my life like Taiya said, so if it mean giving him my body, then so be it I'd do anything to make sure that the man that saved me is safe, so leave Naruto-sama well-being to us my lady. In said with a bow making Lily, Makarov and the other girls to look at her strangely. I too owe him Lady Lily, since your son saved me from a life of loneliness and he made it worth living I would do anything to help him out, so leave it to the four of us ma'am. Urza said making Lily smile at the girls that were willing to help her son. Thank you, you four well then I guess you four need to prepare yourself for what's to come in three days, also I suggest not letting them take any jobs since they will need to stay close to my son those two weeks. Lily said while smiling at the four of them. Yes I believe so too well good luck you four and I really wish this didn't need to happen, fortunately this will only happen every five years. Makarov said before the four girls left to prepare for the next two week. The next two week will be quite interesting for sure, but unfortunately you'll have to wait till next time. Fairy Tale Guild Hall. It had been over one week since the end of Naruto's mating season and things were just getting back to normal. Since as soon as he was allowed to take jobs again Naruto took the hardest S class he saw and booked it out of the guild. He had taken both Grey and Natsu with him to let them gain more experience. Well at least that was his reason for taking them with him his real reason as to why he took them was to get away from the both Urza and Kin who seemed to have become quite clinging to him. Mira and Taya had become monsters in his mind with their near insatiable stamina when it came to the sex. Well Mira more than Taya since Mira had said it had something to do with her own demon wanting to mate with him and give him a child to seal the deal. Also the fact that Mira had almost as much stamina as him made it satisfying her all the more difficult. But now we find the three of them returning from the job, and to the surprise of all in the guild hall, Natsu seemed to have a scar going from top left of his face to the middle of his left cheek. Everyone wondered just what job they took that had given Natsu that scar. 
Gray on the other had just had a little scar about half an inch to one inch going horizontal in the middle of his nose. We made it back alive suckers. Natsu screamed out making Naruto smack across the back of his head. Don't scream Natsu I'm pretty sure they can tell we made it back alive and well. Naruto scolded. Naruto. As soon as he heard that he turned tail and ran as fast as he could. That's when everyone got to see four very angry girls jazzing after their mate. Naruto on the other was running around the guild hall like crazy trying to get away. Everyone was enjoying the show since it wasn't every day one saw a wizard saint running away from something. Alright that's enough you four please leave Naruto alone so he can report into me then once you five get home you can do anything you wish I had. Makarov giggled making Urza and Kin blush. They Aya merely looked away to try and hide her blush while Mira huffed and looked away with the tiniest blush on her face. Naruto on the other hand sported a rather large lump on his head from the four of them slamming their fists on his head. Now my boy please tell me what happened in this mission. Makarov said after calming his giggles. Ugh the job went great master, but the only thing worth reporting is the idiotic attempt of both Grey and Natsu, in trying to be heroes I was able to save them, but as you can see they didn't make it out without a mark. Naruto said after getting up and dusting himself. I see well that's fine and all, but did you complete the job my boy? Makarov sighed in relief at knowing that three of his children were back and were just fine. Yes master the job was completed with minimal property damage. Makarov seemed to smile even more at that before frowning. Naruto the others have called for an emergency meeting, so get ready to leave in an hour okay. Naruto was surprised at this since the others mostly never called for a meeting. Everyone knew who this other were I mean how couldn't they when their master and second strongest member were a part of this group. Of course the group they were referring to was the 10 great wizard saints. Of course master I'll get ready at once. Naruto said before grabbing his bag and head for his home. The girls right behind him following and it wasn't until they reached their new home that Tai and Kin asked. Okay what the fuck did the old fart mean by the others calling for a meeting? Taya blurted out. Huh? Oh right you two don't know how well here in Earthland there is an organization of ten incredibly strong people called the Ten Great Wizard Saints. Urza started before Mira sat down on the couch and continued for her. From this ten, four are considered so powerful that they're not even humans anymore, they're called the Four God of Ishkar, and below them are the rest starting from the fifth sit to the tenth sit Mira, then motioned for Urza to continue. Yes and the current fifth sit is Master Makarov, meaning that apart from the four gods master is the most powerful human, the sixth sit is actually taken too by Naruto, so you see the two most powerful humans are both from fairy tale, but it's quite surprising to see them going to a meeting, since the wizard saint hardly ever get together. Urza finished explaining making both Tai and Kin look surprised at learning that Naruto was considered to be one of the most powerful mages around. That may be true, but for them to actually call for a meeting it must mean something important, so please stay out of trouble while me and Master are way okay oh and please keep Natsu and Grey out of trouble for me. The voice of Naruto was heard making them look to the stairs. Naruto was coming down after changing, and he was wearing a black coat on with a kanji for True Slayer on the back, think Minato. Under the coat Naruto didn't even wear a shirt leaving his wizard saint medallion out for all to see. He also wore black ninja pants along with black boots with white linings. Okay we promise and when you get back we'll continue from where we left off okay Naruto. Mira said giving him a too sweet smile creeping them all out. Naruto started to sweat since he knew once he got back he wouldn't get enough sleep or rest for a long time. The other girls just then started to smile at him making him start to sweat. As sure okay we well I better be going now. Naruto said before heading for the door. Hold it Naruto aren't you forgetting something? The voice of Mira was heard once again. Naruto turned around to ask for what and got his face grabbed by his girls who forcefully stole a few kisses from him, leaving him dazed afterwards. A few minutes later. It took quite a while for Naruto to be able to escape from the girls since they had started to get quite aroused from the all the kissing. Now though Naruto was walking down the road to the meeting spot with Makarov to his right. Hey master why do you think the others would call for a meeting now of all times? Naruto asked. I don't know my boy, but I have a bad feeling about this though. The rest of the way was silent for the both of them, since both were trying to think of a reason as to why the others had called an emergency meeting. Fortunate for them the other decided to hold the meeting close by Magnolia, so it didn't take more than six hours to get there. As soon as they entered the grand looking building they were greeted by a very beautiful woman in a maid outfit. Greetings Makarov Sama, Naruto Sama welcome to the core please follow me the others have already arrived and are currently waiting for you. The blue haired maid informed them. While they walked down some hallways that were barely lit, Naruto couldn't help but look at the woman and wonder who she was. We have arrived please go forward and take you spot everyone is waiting. The woman bowed once more before leaving. Once both entered they saw the other wizard saint sitting down on a circular table. 
They both noticed that one was missing though, and also that the four gods were looking sad for some reason. Reading everyone sorry for the holdup, but I had just returned from a job. Naruto said after taking his sit along with Makarov. Don't worry about Naruto Dono we all haven't been waiting long either. The voice of an older man said making Naruto look in his direction. Oh Jura how are you I haven't seen you in a while. Naruto asked with a smile making Jura nod in his direction. Okay that is enough we have come here to give you all some news Ose Porla was kicked out of the wizard saints because we found out that he was trying to find a way to attack you Makarov and your guild so watch out from now okay. A man said. Naruto and Makarov merely sighed knowing that Ose was crazy but not this crazy. I see thank you very much first and what might the other news be? Makarov asked the now revealed first ranked wizard saint. Ah yes we have recently received news about Tartarus, this news are to stay with us, not even the council are to know about this yet am I understood everyone. When everyone nodded their head the first continued. We have reason to believe that Tartarus is currently looking for some very powerful mages for what we don't know, but from what we know they currently have about three very powerful mages, we also have reason to believe that they have recently gotten their hand on one of the demon from Zeref's book of demons the first said, making them all tense at that. Then why aren't we doing something about first if they really have a demon from the books of Zeref we need to act now? Another man asked. Because we don't know nothing about them yet, so we can't give this information to the council, since we don't know anything about their numbers, members, or who their master even is so we can't rush things. The first responded. You know I was expecting this from Naruto given his the youngest from us, but I guess I should have expected it from the newbie as well. A man to the first's right said. Hey I may be the youngest here second, but I at least have experience being here the tenth sit just joined us a month ago, so I doubt he knows our ways just yet. Naruto defended himself. Enough of your childish fight I know this meeting was short, but the news here were worth a meeting also please note that the council is now looking for a new wizard saint, so please keep that in mind Naruto if I'm right, you had your eyes on a mage you said could be a potential wizard saint right? The first asked. Yes but she isn't ready yet, so I can't give you her name or anything once she realizes what she can really do and lets go of her conflicting feeling will I tell you who she is I hope you understand first. Naruto said making the mal nod with a frown. We understand so we will wait now then this meeting is over please be on the lookout for anything even remotely pertaining Tartarus and remember don't try to attack them now we'll wait till the time is right. With that everyone started to get up. While they were all leaving one of the wizard saints came up to Naruto. This man looked to be in his mid to late twenties with wild dark blue hair. He had an athletic build of a swimmer which was ironic given that his name literally meant water. Mo oh, hey there Mizu how's it going with your wife? Naruto asked since Mizu was one of the few wizard saints that accepted him immediately when he joined, so he became almost like his big brother figure. Oh well Megami and I just had our first child, so she's at home right now taking care of little Michael, so I heard that you have four girl as your wife already Naruto, should I be jealous of you? Mizu teased making Naruto gain a tick mark on his forehead. Who told you about that man? Naruto yelled. Makarov Dono told everyone all about it when you were still in your two-week mating season, so should we be expecting little Ragnar to pop up anytime soon? Mizu teased him some more making Naruto blush even more before he started to stutter out a response. Just remember that Mizu is a great name to give a boy okay hahaha. Mizu teased while wrapping his arm around Naruto before disappearing in a swirl of water since Naruto shot a gold bolt of lightning at Mizu. Am Mizu and his stupid teasing I'm 13 you stupid idiot I'm too young to be a father yet. Naruto yelled to the heavens. After calming down he started to walk back to Magnolia knowing full well that Makarov had left him behind to avoid his rage. One day later. When Naruto entered the guild hall he was tackled by none other than Lasana. Big brother Naruto you're back. Lasana screamed gaining everyone's attention. Hey there Lasana how's it going? Naruto asked gaining a teary eye look from the little girl. Natsu doesn't want to go on a date with me big brother has a big jerk. Lasana pouted making Naruto smile. Hey that's not true you liar. Natsu screamed, and soon the guild was filled with laughter, since whenever Lasana complained to Naruto, she always got what she wanted. This is my family fairy tale is and will always be my home, I wouldn't change anything about it, not its destructive nature or even its members we may be called immature or even overly destructive, but that's just who we are I hope one day this world can finally stop these stupid wars and finally live in peace not for my sake, but for the younger generation, so they can finally stop this foolish. Hiding. Naruto thought with a smile while looking at everyone laughing and enjoying themselves even his mates. He couldn't help but smile even more at the smiles on Kin, Teaya, Mira, and Urza faces. He couldn't stop staring at them since he knew they deserved this happiness considering their pasts and all. I'll die to preserve this happiness, no matter what no one will ever take away their smiles from them, I swear on my life. 
Naruto thought while looking at his mates with a determined face, then looking at Lasana who was busy chasing Natsu, trying to catch him to make him go out with her. I will maintain that innocence in you Lasana after all you are my little sister. If only he knew of the horror that would happen in the future to not only Lasana but everyone else as well. Minus three years later. I have to hurry God please let me be on time. The thoughts of one 16-year-old Naruto rang out through his head while he ran as fast as he could through a burning town. It had been three years since the day Naruto made that promise, and now it would seem he would fail that promise. Why you ask well he had just gotten back from yet another meeting with the gods of Ishgur about the Balam alliance. When he got back he found out that the Strau siblings had gone off on an S-class job from a 14-year Netsu Dragneel. His other mates had also been out on jobs, so he was left bored in the guild hall until only one hour ago. It had been a surprise to everyone when out of nowhere Naruto grabbed onto his right arm in pain. He checked it and found a weird symbol on his arm, and he somehow knew what it meant. The symbol then morphed into two words which read demon, danger. Almost immediately Naruto and Natsu ran out of the guild, knowing what it meant Mira was in danger, and by extent so were Elfman and Lasana. It took them almost 15 minutes to locate Mira's and Lasana's magic signature, and when they got there they split up both having different targets in mind. Now both had reunited and were headed towards the location where they felt the magic signature of Mira and Lasana. Naruto come on we need to go faster before something bad happens. Natsu yelled. Then what are we waiting for? Responded Naruto before both ran even faster. Strauss siblings location. Things had started out well for the three of them, and then like a hurricane everything went to hell so fast. Elfman thinking he could finally master his full takeover, tried to take over the beast that they had been able to contain in the forest around the town. When both sisters were able to notice they found Elfman already in his full takeover both thought he had finally done it until the beast gave a mighty roar. Mira had tried to subdue him only to get slammed onto the ground quite hard breaking a few ribs and breaking her right arm all in one go. When Lysanda had tried to join the fight, Mira had made her evacuate the civilians instead while she tried to calm Elfman. That's when everything went horribly wrong because she didn't want to hurt her baby brother. She had tried to put him to sleep only to get swatted away like a fly. She had tried to knock him out with a well-placed pulse of magic, only to stop at midway after she remembered it was her brother and not just a mindless beast. Now we find Mira on the ground holding on to her broken arm and looking at the beast getting closer to her to finish her off. Mira I evacuated all the civilians, so please let me help you. Lysanda said after landing in front of her. No Lysanda get out of here now please let me handle this myself. Mira yelled trying to at least save her precious little sister. No Mira I'm staying no matter what you say we're a family and we always stick together you hear me. Lysanda said before walking forward and extending her arms so as to block Elfman way. Hey big brother elf I know you're in there and I just have to say wow you finally were able to perform your own full body takeover wow I'm so proud of you so please come home with us I'm sure big brother Naruto will also be so proud to know you were finally able to achieve it. Lysanda smiled at him all the while Elfman kept getting closer and stopped right in front of her after hearing the last part. Lysanda please leave, get away from here. Mira screamed at her trying to get up to protect her. That's when she saw Elfman raise his left arm ready to strike and she saw Lysanda not even moving an inch. So what do you say big brother will you come home and show everyone your new powers? Before anything else could be said Elfman brought his arm down on the poor defenseless Lysanda who was only smiling up at Elfman. Mira watched in slow horrible motion how the arm got closer and closer to her baby sister and couldn't do anything about it. That's when Lysanda and her heard away to familiar voices. Higher dragon roar. Higher god bellow. Came the voices of the two people that made both girls blush and smile even if lightly even in this situation. Naruto Natsu. Both girls screamed. Both breath attacks hit Elfman dead center, sending him flying in a tornado of gold and then orange red flames. Mira are you okay? The worried voice of Naruto made its way to her. Lysanda what were you thinking doing something as stupid as this eh? A crying Natsu sobbed out while hugging her and surprising everyone by kissing her. Elfman on the other returned back to normal only sporting mild burns here and there. Mira and Naruto were watching Natsu and Lysanda kiss. Naruto with a smile and Mira with a scowl not liking a boy kissing her sister. Mira when she heard her name being called she turned only to like Lysanda have her lips claimed by her man. Don't ever scare me like that you hear. Naruto whispered into her ear, making Mira shiver at his hot breath in her ear. Okay I want Naruto can I ask you something? Mira asked. Anything. See can we have a baby soon? Mira stuttered out nervously. Naruto eyes widened at her request and looked at her to ask why only to see her acting shy and not looking him in the eyes. Mira not that I minded, but why do you want that all of a sudden? Naruto asked. 
W well it's just that I I wish to finally be able to call us a family instead of my mate, I wish to give you something to look forward to, and just come home to us girls and sex, I want to give you a family of your own, also this will give me a reason to finally retire from being a mage, because after this I I don't ever want to put my sister and brother through this again, because I don't ever wish to. Experience this feeling of almost losing two of the most precious people I have after you and my mate's sisters. Mira told him making him smile. Okay we'll have a child, but not now Mira we'll have one when we are older, so we can give our child a better and more stable life. Naruto said making Mira smile. Thank you H honey. Mira nervously replied before passing out from exhaustion. Naruto caught her and carried her bridal style he also saw Natsu do the same, and just then happy Natsu's talking flying blue cat caught up to them. Happy great timing I need you to carry Lasana so Natsu can carry Mira while I carry Elfman okay. Naruto told him getting a nod from both of them. Aye sir. Happy saluted. Hotel room. After they left they were able to get to a hotel, and Naruto instantly started to use his Sky Dragon and God Slayer healing magic to heal all three of the Strau siblings. It took quite a while to heal Mira since she had the most injuries and once he was done he left them alone to rest. Hey big brother if we hadn't had made it in time we could have lost them, couldn't we? Natsu asked when he saw Naruto enter the living room of the hotel room. Let's not think about those kind of things okay Natsu, let's just be glad that we were able to save them okay. Naruto said making Natsu nod his head. But what if we before Natsu could finish it, Naruto held his hand out stopping him from finishing that sentence. Enough Natsu when they wake up you'll go and ask Lasana out and take her on the best date of her life and be happy with her and make sure nothing like this ever happens again you hear. Naruto said with a few tears streaming down his face at the mere thought of losing the one girl he thought of like a little sister. Natsu merely smiled and nodded at him, then he went on to start thinking about what would make a great date for someone like Lasana. Naruto went into the girl's room and lay besides Mira and decided to go to sleep to try assuring himself that it was merely a bad dream and that they were still here with him. Before he fell asleep he just looked at Mira's sleeping face and smiled while thinking about starting a family with his four lovely girls. Only time would tell if the family they wanted would ever come or if the ninja world would come and destroy everything they love. Next morning. As the sun shone brightly on the people in the hotel room, one thing could be said for four of its occupants. That was that four of those people had the best sleep of their entire life. The scene that one Elfman Strauss woke up to was one no brother should ever wake up to. The scene was that of his big sister and her husband getting it on with each other, and his sister seemed to be burying her face into the pillow to stifle her screams. What the hell are you two doing? The scream woke up both Lasana and Natsu, who currently had her head on his very warm chest. The next sound that was heard was twin smacks, and then the door to her big sister's room opened up and out came Elfman with two huge lumps on his head. Don't interrupt us Elfman or I swear to god that the beating you'll get for the stupid stunt you pulled yesterday will be worse you got it. Mira angrily yelled out. Why yes Mira the dizzy Elfman subconsciously answered. Good and Natsu, Lysanda don't you dare make me an ant early, or I'll rip out what makes you a man, am I understood Natsu. Mira seethed out. Natsu and Lysanda just blushed before Natsu's inner pervert took over and was blown back by a massive nosebleed. Lysanda just looked at him and couldn't help but grin perversely, since now she had another way of teasing Natsu. I make no promises Mira. Lysanda grinned making Mira stare at her. The sisters just stared at each other for a while, Mira wearing a deadpan look while Lysanda was wearing a perverted grin. Whatever Lysanda just make sure it's not too soon you hear. As Mira was closing the door she heard Lysanda say something. You as well Mira you're still too young to be a mother, so take it slow okay. Lysanda said softly making Mira smile before closing the door and getting back to her mate. Minus three hours later. After finishing up the group went to get a late breakfast where Elfman kept his head low because of what he did. After breakfast the group got their stuff and started to head out back to Fairy Tail, that is until Elfman stopped in the middle of the road. Elfman what's wrong? Natsu asked. I I don't deserve to go back to Fairy Tail after what I did I I'm leaving Fairy Tail you guys. This shock everyone immensely. Wow what are you saying big brother stop joking Aru before Lasana could finish Naruto stepped forward. Is this really what you want Elfman? Naruto asked him only getting a nod from him. Well then I'll give you a list of places I want you to go in each place there will be someone who will be able to train you in something different and hopefully by the time you finish you will be able to do a full body takeover successfully without incident. Naruto told him while writing something done on a piece of paper before handing it to Elfman. They started to walk again for about 30 minutes before they got to a fork in the road where Naruto stopped them and looked at Elfman. Well this is where we part ways Elfman you are to take the road on the left while we take the one on the right. Naruto merely extended his right hand to which Elfman extended his right hand. 
Hein if you really are leaving then as your older sister it's my job to give you the fairy tales farewell ceremony, Nira said while walking forward with her hair shadowing her eyes. As a member of fairy tale you must remember the three important rules when leaving the guild, Nira said before stopping in front of Elfman, with her eyes still hidden behind her hair. 1. You must never reveal sensitive information about fairy tale to others for as long as you live. 2. You must never use former contacts met through your being in the guild for personal gain, before she said the third rule she put her right hand up in the fairy tale symbol while she finally showed her eyes. Adwin Elfman saw the tears in his big sister's eyes and that alone brought tears to his eyes. Big sis Elfman thought sadly. And number three. Though our paths may have diverged, you must continue to live out your life with all your might, you must never consider your own life to be something insignificant, and you must never forget about your friends and family who love you. That's when Elfman saw Naruto, Natsu and Lysanda doing the same symbol as Mir. Well both Naruto and Natsu shot fireball into the air to create fireworks. Elfman continued to cry along with his sisters before the Strauss family came together for one final hug. They cried and hugged for about 10 minutes while Naruto and Natsu merely watched with sad smiles. Promise me you'll write to us every week okay big brother elf. Lysanda cried out. I promise I'll write to you two every week and you two promise me to take care of yourselves okay. The girls just nodded since they were crying too much to form words. After a while they separated and with one final smile at each they let go of each other. Elfman started walking toward his paths with tears still rolling down his face and he decided to take one last look at his family. He saw them already walking down their path, but that was not what shocked him it was the fact that all of them were still holding up the fairy tale symbol without looking back. You guys I promise you I will get stronger and come back ready to protect you all, and I will never put any of your lives in danger again I will protect fairy tale. Elfman thought with burning determination in both his heart and soul, ready to do anything and everything possible to him to get stronger and come back ready to protect and not destroy. Minus three hours later with Naruto. As the group got closer to Magnolia and Fairy Tail Naruto saw that Mira was crying into his shoulder while Lysanda cried into Natsu's. He knew that no matter how strong Mira was when it came to her siblings, she was vulnerable. So having to separate from her baby brother after everything they went through must have hurt more than any physical wound could ever do. Everything will be fine Mira you'll see him again I swear, and when you do he'll have done what any member of Fairy Tail is meant to have Naruto started making Mira look at him. And what may that be Naruto? Mira cried out. He'll have had the adventure of a lifetime Mira. All Mira did was dry her tears and smile while looking at the sky and smiled even more thinking of the things Elfman would do and see. Things he wouldn't have been able to do with her holding him back with her overprotectiveness. I, I guess why you're right Naruto maybe Elfman will find happiness with this trip and find what's missing in his heart. Lysanda answered having been listening in. After that little speech the group smiled a little more and they all looked at the sky that showed the setting sun. Well we better start walking again or we won't make it to fairy tale till tomorrow. Natsu said. Aye sir. Happy yelled out finally speaking up. Night time. They had gotten to Magnolia late at night and they decided to tell the guild about Elfman tomorrow. Well we better get home and rest we've had a long day. Naruto said. Um I'll be staying with Natsu from now on Mira, big brother Naruto. Lysanna nervously said. Both Naruto and Mira just nodded not wanting to discuss the subject at the moment. Okay then good night and remember no children till you both get married you hear. Mira teased. Lysanna and Natsu just started to walk away rapidly trying to hide their burning blush. With happy giggling behind them and trying to not laugh but failing. Naruto's home. As they entered their home they headed straight for bed well Mira did Naruto just went to the living room and sat down on the couch while looking out the window. You know if you keep hiding in the shadows we won't ever get anything down right. From the shadows a figure came out and just stared at him with a sad expression on its face. What are you doing here Naruko? Naruto asked his sister. We will you adopted mother brought me here. The moment those words left her mouth she regretted it. Be careful how you refer to my mother Naruko. Naruto said with a glare at her. Naruko just nodded and was about to sit down on the couch opposite of his. I don't remember giving you permission to sit in my home. Naruko merely sighed and looked at her estranged brother and looked at the floor. Naruto th the elemental nations are Naruko didn't finish since at that moment there was a loud banging at his front door. While Naruto went to see who it was the other occupant awoke and came out of their rooms to see what all the commotion was about. Hey what the fuck is the blonde princess doing here in Earthland? Taya asked after looking at Naruko. Before either girl could say anything Naruto came back and seemed to be sad about something. Naruto simply sat down on the couch and cried for a full 30 minutes, making the girls wonder what could have made him cry so badly. Naruto what's wrong, what happened? Urza worriedly asked rushing towards him. It's Master Makarov his is dead when they all heard that every single one of them gasped and tears welled up in their eyes. 
Well, what do you mean dead Naruto? Kin asked with tears falling down her face. It would seem that Master had been fighting an illness without telling anyone, and last night it finally won out, and Master finally died last night of a quick heart attack. Naruto explained while covering his face with his right hand. The H that's why Master wasn't at the guild today. Kin said filling everyone as to why no one discovered the Master until today. Who found the Master Naruto? Urza asked from her position in his right shoulder. Laxus did apparently he found it weird that the master didn't come in today and went looking for him and found him in his bed with a smile on his face and two letters on his desk, one addressed to him and the other to me. What does yours say Naruto? Taya asked trying to act tough even in the situation. All Naruto did was hold up the letter, what it contained shocked them. Dear Naruto. If you are reading this then it mean I'm already dead. Do not be sad my boy for even if I'm gone I'll be looking out for the guild from above with the previous masters. But since I was not able to personally choose the fourth master I will leave it in this letter. Naruto Ragnar I the third master of fairy tale hereby bestow upon you the title of the fourth master of fairy tale. Please look after everyone for me and protect the guild like I did and how the second and first master did before you. For now you will be the new father to the younger generation, the future grandfather to the next generation that you will surely see. So please take care of everyone in my absence Naruto because I know that if anyone can make fairy tale into an even greater guild, it's you Naruto. Signed. Makarov Dreyer, third master of fairy tale. After everyone finished reading it they looked at Naruto and couldn't believe it Naruto Ragnar the current six sit in the wizard saints was now the new fourth master of fairy tale at the young age of 16. Well what are you gonna do now Naruto? Urza sobbed out. I need you all to go and gather everyone it's time we gave master Makarov the proper farewell. That when they saw him send a little blast of magic into the letter and out popped Makarov's signature staff. Naruto then used it to stand up and held it in his right hand and started to head for the front door. I'll be in the guild waiting so please be quick. The girls were in instant motion they went everyone as fast as they could telling the guild members that they were needed in the guild hall fast and said no more. Naruto one hour later. Naruto was sitting down on the bar like Makarov used to sit and waited for everyone to come to the guild. It took an hour but soon everyone was present in the guild hall waiting for Naruto to speak since he was the one to call this meeting. Even Laxus was there leaning on a pole in the shadows near the back with his little group around him with sad expressions as well. Hey what's the big deal Naruto why did you get us up at this hours? A random mage asked. Naruto then proceeded jump up on the railings and looked at everyone before closing his eyes and started telling them all what happened to Makarov. By the end of the story every last member was crying and some of the girls were on the ground crying harder than others. No this isn't real Gramps can't be dead. Natsu yelled out both in pain and denial, along with most of the younger generation. I'm sorry to say it's true Natsu no one knew he was fighting an illness until Miss Priyusika check him over to find the cause of death, apparently he had been fighting it for almost 20 years, since that was the last time he allowed Priyusika to give him a health checkup. Naruto explained. Everyone was now crying even harder, since they couldn't believe the master would hide something like this. My grandfather made Naruto the new fourth master of the guild, so that means it's Naruto's call on what to do now, so master what is you first order as the fourth master of this guild eh? Laxa said making every last member of the guild look up at him. What h how I thought he died last night before we even returned? Lysana asked between sobs. He left two letters one for me and the other for Naruto, where he explained everything to us about what happened to him and who the new master would be, everyone wonder why Laxa stressed the word everything out. But no one could ask since they saw him disappear in a bolt of lightning and appeared next to Naruto. And I for once will put my entire trust behind Naruto. Laxus finished and everyone saw the tear marks on his face. Everyone slowly looked at Laxus and then at Naruto and slowly one by one, they all started to smile and dry their tears. If Laxus of all people can actually say that with a serious face then I guess so can we. Natsu exclaimed while giving Naruto the biggest smile he could muster. So master what do you want to do first? Gray asked for once not stripping. Naruto felt tears rolling down his face at this and just looked on with a sad smile before answering. We'll give Master Makarov the biggest farewell there ever was and we'll make sure everyone remembers him in fairy tale for as long as it exists. Naruto screamed at the top of his lungs, making everyone scream in joy as well. For the third master, for the man we called grandfather, for Makarov Dreyer. The guild yelled out while throwing the extended right pointer finger and thumb up in the air. Naruto looked over at the guild with a smile before looking at Laxus and seeing him nod at his direction. Don't worry Gramps I'll make sure fairy tale endures for years to come and in your memory I'll make this guild the strongest in the entire kingdom of Fiori no in the entire world and I'll make sure your children have the best time here and that no matter what happens in the future they will have a place to call home. Naruto thought before he put his own symbol in the air and started to scream with everyone. 
be your fairy tale, and we will come back from this stronger for our old man and show him that no matter where he is his children will live on in happiness. Naruto screamed making everyone yell their approval. Watch us old man and we'll show you the famous stubbornness of fairy tale, and we'll prove to everyone that this will not end us, but only make us stronger. One week later. Naruto was currently fixing his black coat and checking himself in the mirror to make sure he was presentable. Naruto come on we don't want to be late now do we? The voice of mirror was heard. He turned and saw her wearing a beautiful black dress and a black veil over her shoulders, along with black fishnet gloves with flower designs on them. Okay let's get going then. As he walked out he grabbed the staff and started to walk towards the cemetery, where all of fairy tale was along with almost half of Magnolia and a few other guilds. The entire wizard saints were there as well to pay their respect to their fallen comrade. As he walked he saw Mizu along with his wife Megami and their two-week-old son Michael. Hey there kid. Mizu somberly said. Mizu, Megami thank you for coming. Naruto bowed making Megami smile. Of course Naruto if it wasn't for Makarov and you I wouldn't even be alive, let alone have met my husband. Megami said while walking up to him and hugging him in a tender sisterly hug. Well let's get going I'm sure everyone should have finished getting there. Mizu said making them nod. Cardia Cathedral Cemetery. The entire cemetery was filled with people from different guilds, even the council was there. As Naruto walked up to the front of audience people either bowed to him or smiled at him. Some came up to him and shook his hand others came up to him and hugged him. Soon after almost 30 minutes of handshaking, hugs and smiles, he finally made it to the front. Thank you all for coming out so please if you would please take you sit so I can get started. Naruto asked them while using magic to magnify his voice. Sorry I just can't make a great funeral speech or scene so there will be none. After the funeral everyone was walking out either heading home or to their respected guilds. He was then caught up by his girls and to his surprise his sister he didn't even glare at her, he simply pulled her into a hug. Naruko just blushed at the intimate contact since the only ones to ever do this were her parents. Thank you for caring Naruko. That was all he said before letting go and walking back to the guild with his mate. Master's office. Naruto was currently in his office with his mates and Laxus of all people, along with Natsu, Lasana, and Grey. So what now master? Natsu asked with a little grin. Sai I don't know for now we'll recover from this blow and try to prove to Fiori that we haven't gotten weak but instead gotten stronger, also I'm thinking in holding the S-class trails earlier this time, so be ready for that. Before anyone could ask another question they heard a knock on the door. Enter. Naruto called out. In came his sister with a sad expression and was fidgeting with her hands as if scared to say something. Yes Naruko what can I help you with? Naruto asked. Can we speak in private brother? Naruko asked. I'm sorry but we are currently in the middle of an important meeting, so just get to the point. Naruto said making her look down at the ground. It's about why I came here in the first place. Everyone waited for her to continue her speech. This intrigued everyone since they all knew she was from another world. Oh and what might that reason be? Naruto asked teasingly. They saw that Naruko went silent and just started shaking, making them raise an eyebrow at a reaction. It it's just that a group calling themselves the Akatsuki attacked the elemental villages kidnapping all their Jinchurikis, and well the leader came to the leaf and attacked it to find me h he killed everyone Naruto mother, father, godfather. Godmother no one was spared I didn't die because your adopted mother came and got me out in time mother screamed at her to save me, well papa fought the leader Naruto, and the others saw her fall to the ground sobbing. H he was no match even with his flying thunder god technique he couldn't touch him, so Miss Lily took me and sent me here telling me to find you, she also said that she would put a wall between this world and the ninja world, making it impossible to get here, so that the Akatsuki can't ever come here, since it's powered by the chakra of my world, so if it ever runs out the wall will break down. Naruko explained making everyone present look at her with sad eyes. You know I would have laughed and said what a relief it was to have those two gone. Naruko looked up in anger ready to lay into her brother, but stopped when they all saw his tears. But recently I've been losing too many people I care about and quite frankly I don't want to lose you too, so you can stay here and join Fairy Tail and become a member of our family, did you seal their bodies Naruko? When he saw her nod he nodded and got up and walked up to her before pulling her into another hug. Welcome home little sister. Naruto said making her start crying again. Why you know W we're T twins are right. Naruko cried out while hugging her brother for the first time in almost 10 years. But I was born first. Everyone just smiled at seeing the sibling reunited and sharing a hug, Laxus merely looked on with a tiny grin. Come let's go get your fairy tale stamp. Life just got a whole lot sweeter for Naruto, since now he had his sister back and his mates all that was left for him was the family he secretly desired. But is the Akatsuki really gone or do they have another way of getting to Earthland that not even Lily knows about you'll have to wait and see. Last time master's office. 
Naruto was currently in his office with his mates and Laxus of all people, along with Natsu, Lasana, and Grey. So what now master? Natsu asked with a little grin. Sai I don't know for now we'll recover from this blow and try to prove to Fiori that we haven't gotten weak but instead gotten stronger, also I'm thinking in holding the S-class trails earlier this time, so be ready for that. Before anyone could ask another question they heard a knock on the door. Enter. Naruto called out. In came his sister with a sad expression and was fidgeting with her hands as if scared to say something. Yes Naruko what can I help you with? Naruto asked. Can we speak in private brother? Naruko asked. I'm sorry but we are currently in the middle of an important meeting, so just get to the point. Naruto said making her look down at the ground. It's about why I came here in the first place. Everyone waited for her to continue her speech. This intrigued everyone since they all knew she was from another world. Oh and what might that reason be? Naruto asked teasingly. They saw that Naruko went silent and just started shaking, making them raise an eyebrow at a reaction. But it's just that a group calling themselves the Akatsuki attacked the elemental villages kidnapping all their Jinchurikis and well the leader came to the leaf and attacked it to find me he killed everyone Naruto mother, father, godfather. Godmother no one was spared I didn't die because your adopted mother came and got me out in time mother screamed at her to save me well papa fought the leader Naruto and the others saw her fall to the ground sobbing. H he was no match even with his flying thunder god technique he couldn't touch him, so Miss Lily took me and sent me here telling me to find you, she also said that she would put a wall between this world and the ninja world, making it impossible to get here, so that the Akatsuki can't ever come here, since it's powered by the chakra of my world, so if it ever runs out the wall will break down. Naruko explained making everyone present look at her with sad eyes. You know I would have laughed and said what a relief it was to have those two gone. Naruko looked up in anger ready to lay into her brother, but stopped when they all saw his tears. But recently I've been losing too many people I care about and quite frankly I don't want to lose you too, so you can stay here and join Fairy Tail and become a member of our family, did you seal their bodies Naruko? When he saw her nod he nodded and got up and walked up to her before pulling her into another hug. Welcome home little sister. Naruto said making her start crying again. Why you know W we're T twins are right. Naruko cried out while hugging her brother for the first time in almost 10 years. But I was born first. Everyone just smiled at seeing the sibling reunited and sharing a hug, Laxus merely looked on with a tiny grin. Come let's go get your fairy tale stamp. Now fairy tale guild hall. When Naruto said that Naruko just wiped her tears and nodded before heading toward the door. Naruko go on ahead I'll be down there as soon as I'm done with this meeting okay. Okay be brother. Naruko answered smiling at finally getting to call him brother, but for some reason it felt wrong to her. As soon as she left Naruto turned toward the gathered group and saw Laxus, Mira, Urza, Teaya, Kin, Natsu, Grey and Lasana standing there with small smiles. So as I was saying before the little family reunion happened Laxus began. What are we gonna do now that you're our new master eh Naruto? Laxus asked with his arms crossed. Well right now the only S-class mages we have are Urza, Mira, Mistigan, Teaya, Kin, Gildertz, and Ulaxis, so the first thing is for you guys to take jobs and show everyone that we are still organized. Naruto began while leaning into his chair. The next is discipline this applies to Yunatsu, Grey, considering that the majority of complaints are cause, because you two broke something so from now on every time that happens, you will be forced to take the lowest paying jobs and the most grueling ones as well understood. Naruto threatened making both boys pale. Aye sir. Both saluted making Lasana giggle. Great and what else? Laxus asked. Laxus I have a 10 year mission for you all set up and I have absolute faith in you and your team, so here take it and make your grandfather proud. Naruto said while handing him a flyer. Laxus as well as everyone in the room were speechless at what he just did, but Laxus snapped out of it and smiled. Thanks master, I'll make fairy tale be respected and fear far and wide just you wait. With that Laxus left. I guess this ends this meeting so go on go back to what you usually do. Naruto I, I would like to take a break from jobs if you don't mind. Mira's statement attracted everyone minus Laxus back. Everyone was shocked since they knew the real reason behind her statement and before Natsu and Grey could start shouting protests, Lasana spoke up. I, I would also like to take a break from the guild master. Lasana announced making Naruto look between the two sisters and sigh. I guess fairy tale will have to do with only 6s class mages for now huh? Naruto said before taking out the guild stamp and standing up from his chair. Naruto walked up to Mira and held out the stamp toward her making her blink at him. What's this for Naruto? Mira asked while taking the stamp form him. Well from now on you'll be in charge of stamping all our new member into fairy tale, along with being one of our barmaids along with Lasana, that is if you two accept. Both girls looked at each other and smiled at him before nodding making Naruto smile. 
But then from now on when I'm away at Guildmaster meeting you'll be in charge okay Mara. Everyone was surprised at that, but they understood since he needed to leave someone he trusted in charge. Okay we'll do it and don't worry I'll make sure nothing gets broken when you out with Big Sis's help. Lasana smiled at him. Well Mira go on and welcome our new member into the fairy tale family. Naruto smiled while sitting back in his chair. What about you? Aren't you gonna go welcome your sister into the guild? Natsu questioned. I'd love to Natsu, but apparently being the master is a lot more work than I thought, and also I have to go to a meeting in a day, so I have to finish this paperwork before then. Everyone chuckled and nodded while leaving him to continue his new duties. Build whole ground floor. Back in the ground floor everyone was talking about the changes that they thought Naruto was gonna do. But the other topic was about how Naruto's sister from the elemental nation was here and was sitting at the bar looking over the guild. Um is it always this rowdy here? Naruko asked no one in particular. What don't tell me the princess is scared. Probably expected this to be all uptight like your village huh? When Naruko turned to look at the owners of the voices she was met by Tai and Kin. Kin, Tai enough Naruko is going to be a member in a sec, so treat her like one okay, and don't you dare talk back to me, this is Master Naruto's order. Urza scolded while gaining a red aura around her making both girls pale. Tai though turned around to hide the fact that she was scared of her fellow redeed, much like Naruko suddenly found herself while staring at Urza. I sir. Kin said while hiding behind Tai. But now Mira if you would be so kind. Okay so what color and where do you want your guild mark? Mira question making Naruko think. I'm on my belly button in an orange. Naruko said while smiling. Okay well hold still. The second she lifted her shirt almost everyone man in the guild was blown back in geysers of blood gushing from their noses. Mira just giggled and pressed the stamp on her stomach, getting a few giggles from Naruko. Welcome to fairy tale Naruko Yuzumaki. Mira welcomed her with a surprisingly sweet smile. Naruko smiled and looked up at where her brother's office was and smiled at its general location. So how does a guild handle missions, does the master hand them out personally or what? Naruko asked hoping it was the first. All the others simply pointed at the giant board and Naruko's sweat dropped. So I just like take any that I like and then what? You bring it to me so I can write your name down so Naruto, excuse me so Master Naruto can inform the client that the job has been accepted by one of us. Mira said while walking over to the board and pointing at a random job and showing her the flyer. You can take an easy job and still get paid well, see this one pays about 50,000 joules, 50,000 joules equals $5,000, and all it asks is for you to go to the next town over and get a special order from an ingredient shop there. Urza said while pointing at the job description below. Naruko smiled and stared at the board before grabbing one and handing it to Mira and smiling. This one, I'll take this one. Before Mira could give it the okay they heard Naruto's voice come from the second floor. Hana please take her and show her the ropes since I bet she doesn't even know where the job location is. Everyone turned to Kana who was busy downing a barrel of wine like no tomorrow. Kana nearly drowned at that but regained her barring and looked at Naruto then at his sister. I guess I have no choice eh master. Kana teased while standing up and taking a barrel of alcohol and heading toward the door. Well come on newbie, the sooner we finish the sooner I can get back to my sweet alcohol. Kana said making Naruko nod and take the flyer and run after her. Naruto smiled while heading back towards his office, but not before smiling at his four mates and giving them a wink making them blush, knowing what that wink meant. Two years later. Fairy tale a guild like no other, it was the only guild with a total of 7s class, making it one the strongest, especially when their master was the current 5th seed in the Wizard Saints. Currently we find the guild members sitting around eating and chatting with one another about random stuff. In the second floor we find four of the 7s class mages eating and talking to each other. Hey Urza when is Laxus coming back from this 10 year quest? The voice of an 18 year old Taya asked while munching on a sandwich. Next to her was Kin and Naruko who were also sitting next to her with Naruko devouring about 10 bowls of ramen. Master Naruto said that the 10 and 100 year quests are the most difficult, so it might take Laxus quite a while to finish it, they're not called 10 year quest for nothing. Urza mentioned while eating her cheesecakes. Urza you know his our mate right, so you don't have to be so formal. Kin told her while putting down her book and looking at her. Kin's writers and besides don't you need to go speak with him about something. Mira questioned and everyone saw the huge difference in her from about two years ago. Mira now wore a beautiful maroon dress with white lining around her neck and the hem of her dress. She also wore maroon heels with a flower bracelets and a blue crystal necklace in the shape of a heart. Yes I know but he is at a wizard saint meeting right now. Mira tilted her head and smiled at her making everyone think if her changing also changed her mentality. I forgot. All the others just sighed and nodded at her making her walk away with a smile. Naruto wizard saint meeting. 
In the dark room in Crocus the nine most powerful mages in Fiori were currently standing in a circle, talking about issues pertaining to the magical population in Fiori. So what is the next topic we have to talk about? Mizu questioned the top five mages. Naruto having aged nicely now stood at an impressive 6'2", with his hair now reaching his shoulders and still sticking out in all places. His face was now more angular and devoid of all baby fat, with a look of a battle-hardened warrior. His clothing changed as well now he wore a coat identical to Makarov's wizard Saint coat. But under it he wore a white muscle shirt with black slacks and black boots. He also had Makarov's staff in his right hand and his wizard Saint badge was around his neck. Naruto has something to tell us about the fallen member of our group. The first rank said hidden in the shadows. Everyone gave their attention to Naruto making him nod at the first and clear his throat. Those Aporla is becoming more unstable and it has come to my attention that he has made contact with Oration Says. Naruto began unknowingly he kept his eyes on the newest member of the saints. The boy who his redeated angel told him about. See Grain Fernandez the supposed twin brother of Jello Fernandez the boy who Urza said helped her out when she was locked up in the Tower of Heaven. Naruto had learned the stories behind Urza, Mira, Kin, and Teia after all they were all engaged and he loved them all. It had taken quite a long while for Urza to open up though, but he left her and knew she would tell him eventually and she did. So now he was even more suspicious of Seagrain because he felt something off about him from time to time. Yes, and what do you have in mind fifth? Seagrain asked with a weird look in his eyes. You know you shouldn't even be here seeing as you're also part of the magic council and all. Another saint said while crossing his arms. But then you eight would think me a traitor like Jose, and I would rather not anger you eight, especially you Lord Naruto, and of course you four. The four gods of Ishkur narrowed their eyes along with Naruto and exchanged some looks before nodding at each other. Anyways my plan is to contact one of my friends that I met in Phantom Lord and have them keep an eye on him for me and to inform me if he tries anything. The others nodded and thought that would be a great idea and decided to trust him. Very well then go ahead and do it, but who is this friend you have in there? Mizu asked. For my friend's safety I'll keep their identity a secret for now. Naruto told them making them nod in acceptance. But then, then this meeting is over we will meet again when something comes up. The first rank said while the four gods disappeared, showing they were nothing but thought projections. Outside hallway. Once the meeting ended the remaining five filed out and Naruto kept his eyes on Seagrain and saw him walk down the other side of the hallway. Before Naruto could follow him he saw Mizu walk up to him with a smile. Yo kid can we talk? Mizu asked him. Naruto looked at Seagrain and then at Mizu and sighed but nodded anyways. The two of them then walked down the main hallway until they got to one of balconies. So what is it you wanted to talk to me about Mizu? Mizu leaned on the railing and looked over the hill where the building in which the wizard saints held all their meetings. Overlooking the beautiful small village down below they saw how everyone there were so carefree knowing that as long as the wizard saints made this their meeting ground, no one would dare touch them. Yes, actually me and Megami were wondering if you and Mira would be our son's godparents. Well, what be, but I thought you had someone else already. Nope Megami would hear them out once she kept saying how she wanted you too, and only you too, so what do you say? Naruto was surprised at that and just stood there a little shocked, but then smiled and looked at him. Sure me and Mira will be Michael's godparents on one condition. Sure what is it? Mizu asked. That you and Megami be mine and Mira's first child godparents as well. Now it was Mizu's turn to stand shocked at that and then grabbed him by the shoulders and started to shake the poor newly found out father. You not lying are you Naruto when did you find out? Mizu said after letting him go. Yesterday, Mira and Urza were feeling sick, so they went to our guild doctor, and she found out they were both a month pregnant. Naruto managed to say. Holy shit two of your girls are pregnant holy congratulations man. Mizu happily yelled out. Thanks bro, now if you'll excuse me I need to go back to them since they are starting to get their cravings and well also their mood swings, so oh, I have to get back home to them, so I'll see ya at the next meeting alright. Alright then later Naruto. But that both waved goodbye before Mizu disappeared in a vortex of water and Naruto left in a golden stream of lighting. Fairy Tale Guild. Back at the guild everyone was laughing and having a good time while drinking and Natsu and Grey were once again fighting. Urza and Mira were rubbing their bellies not that anyone noticed since they were both up on the second floor. The only ones who knew were Teia, Kin, Lasana, and Naruko. Hey big sis have you two come up with name for them yet or not? Lasana asked. I have actually, if it's a girl I want to name her Elizabeth, and if it turns out to be a boy then I like Akuma. Mira said making them look at her with small smiles. And you Urza what are your name choices? Kin asked a little jealous that both Mira and Urza were giving Naruto children first. Well I like the names Vivian and in memory of my surrogate grandfather Rob. Urza said while looking at her stomach and smiling happily at knowing she would have a child. 
I have to admit, I'm a little jealous at you too. I kind of wished I was the first to give him children though. Kin said while looking at Urza and Mira. DCH I'm glad that I use protection when Naruto and I have sex, I don't want any brats ruining my body just yet. Taya said making the other chuckle. At that moment Naruto appeared in a golden stream of lighting and stood in the middle of the guild. Master. Welcome back. The guild screamed. Naruto smiled at everyone and walked towards the stairs that led toward the second floor, while smiling and waving at the guild members. When he made it to the second floor he kissed Urza and Mira in the mouth and Kin on the forehead, while he grabbed Taya Chin and kissed her mouth roughly. He knew that Urza and Mira liked when he showed them both affection, and he knew Kin liked when he was gentle with her while with Taya he knew he had to be rough, since she liked it rough. When he looked at his sister he saw he looking away with a small blush, making him raise an eyebrow at that. Hey Naruko how have you been? Naruto asked her surprising her. I I've been G good B brother. Naruko stuttered out. Naruko didn't know why she felt warm whenever she looked at her brother, but she couldn't look at him in the eyes. It had all started about a year ago when he accidentally touched her butt when they were sparring. He had apologized of course, but had made a joke saying how she had a very soft and nice butt, making her start chasing him around his backyard, shooting fireballs and wind blasts at him. Since then she has been blushing whenever she looked at him and couldn't help but remember that day, and she started to blush like a schoolgirl. This wasn't lost to the other of course, but thought that since they were related he wouldn't try anything. That is until Urza asked Naruko a question. Flashback one year ago. Urza was walking down a hallway in their home when she caught Naruko talking to Mira. Hey Naruko may I speak to you for a sec? Urza asked getting her attention. Sure, excuse me Mirahin. Naruko said while giving Mira a small bow. Dust Mira is fine and I guess I'll see you around. Mira said before leaving. So what did you want to speak to me about Urza? Naruko asked while looking at Urza curiously. Well you see when we were in the elemental nations I heard that some clans don't care if its members practice incest, as long as it's not a father and daughter or mother and son, but that even brothers and sisters, along with cousins can get together. Urza told her making Naruko blush a little wondering where she was heading with these questions. Why yes that is true most clans have very little modesty about stuff like that, since back in the olden days when clans were at war with each other, they didn't have the options of getting new blood from outside the clan, so they mostly had the clan members have children among themselves. Naruko explained happy she wasn't asking about her incident with her brother that morning. Though I find it wrong I guess it makes sense, but I heard that you and Naruto were part of the Uzumaki clan and was wondering if your clan also had incest families as well. That question brought a huge blush to the redeeded Yuzumaki and started to stutter before taking a deep breath. Why do you want to know that Urza? Just curious to know more about my mate's family is all. W well why yes we you Yuzumakis also had incest and a lot of it since unlike other clans where deformities were common, we had something akin to a bloodline which made deformities impossible and therefore we had more incest families. Naruko told her going from meat to knowledgeable and telling her everything her mother had once told her. Does that answer your questions Urza? Naruko asked. Yes thank you very much Naruko. Urza had gotten the answer she wanted and started to think about the relationship Naruto had with his sister. Flashback end. Present. Naruko thought Urza had just asked those questions because she was curious and nothing more, but now she wasn't so sure. Urza had been acting weird ever since then and not just weird, but she had been putting her in so many awkward situations with her brother. She had made her come out in only a towel, only to bump into her brother one morning she decided to stay over at his house. She had fainted in front of him since her towel almost fell in front of him. Naruko can I speak with you? Urza's voice brought her out of her thoughts. Oh okay. B do you like your brother more than you should? Urza asked in a whisper so the other didn't hear them. Wh what would you ask something like that? Naruko panicked. I'm not stupid Naruko, I've seen the way you look at him and the way you act around him so I'll ask again do you like him in a romantic way? The way Urza asked made it seem like more of a demand than a question. Naruko didn't know what to say. On one hand she could tell the truth and have them all look at her with disgust or risk it and lie and hope they believed her. I I do. Naruko sadly said while looking at the ground. All she felt was an arm around her and saw Urza smile at her and she also saw a glint in her eyes. Then it's up to me to help you win your man. Urza announced. Well what, but why aren't you disgusted? Naruko asked. Of course not because I know you don't see him as a brother, since you two never were able to establish that bond, so all you see is a man who you're able to marry and have children with, and also the fact that your clan fixes the risk of deformities I see it as a win don't you? Naruko was shocked at the fact that Urza would help her get with her brother of all people. I I. No don't say a thing I'll help you get with him, and Mira and the others will help, and by the time I and Mira get into our second trimester, we'll make sure you and Naruto are together. Now come we have a lot of planning to do. 
but that both Urza and Naruko got up and went over to Kin and Taya and sat down and told them everything. Taya didn't like it, and Kin didn't care while Amira having joined them thought it was a great idea. And so it began the scheming of this five to get Naruto to bang his sister and get her to join their ever-growing harem. Naruto on the other hand was sneezing like crazy in his office and didn't know why. Will Naruto accept his sister into his harem, or will he deny her and try to keep it a sibling relationship? Well you'll have to wait till next time my friends. Last time? Naruko can I speak with you? Urza's voice brought her out of her thoughts. Oh okay. B do you like your brother more than you should? Urza asked in a whisper so the other didn't hear them. Wh what would you ask something like that? Naruko panicked. I'm not stupid Naruko, I've seen the way you look at him and the way you act around him so I'll ask again do you like him in a romantic way? The way Urza asked made it seem like more of a demand than a question. Naruko didn't know what to say. On one hand, she could tell the truth and have them all look at her with disgust or risk it and lie and hope they believed her. I I do. Naruko sadly said while looking at the ground. All she felt was an arm around her and saw Urza smile at her, and she saw a glint in her eyes. Then it's up to me to help you win your man. Urza announced. Well what, but why aren't you disgusted? Naruko asked. Of course not because I know you don't see him as a brother, since you two never were able to establish that bond, so all you see is a man who you're able to marry and have children with, and also the fact that your clan fixes the risk of deformities I see it as a win don't you? Naruko was shocked at the fact that Urza would help her get with her brother of all people. I I. No don't say a thing I'll help you get with him, and Mira and the others will help, and by the time I and Mira get into our second trimester, we'll make sure you and Naruto are together. Now come we have a lot of planning to do. With that, both Urza and Naruko got up, went over to Kin and Taya, sat down, and told them everything. Taya didn't like it, and Kin didn't care while Mira having joined them thought it was a great idea. Now Fairy Tail Guildmaster's office. Naruto sat in his chair reading yet another report of a job well done by the council. Which just made him smile, ever since he threatened both Natsu and Grey with those punishments two years ago, the two have been behaving better when they were out on jobs. At first, they didn't take him seriously, and Natsu ended up destroying an entire city block. Grey on the other hand unconsciously stripped in front of a client's daughter, giving the old man a very wrong idea of the boy. Naruto of course beat the ever-loving snot of the two and made them take the one mission in all of Fiori that no one, not even a dark mage would ever take. Retrieving the princess's wild and untamable pet cat. Every mage in Fiori knew of the demon in cat form, and no one wanted to take the mission that was always appearing in every guild almost weekly. Why well because when someone got brave enough to take it, they always came back with bruises and cuts that made them look like they had just finished a 100-year quest. Natsu and Grey cried and begged for mercy, only to have Naruto drag them all the way to the king's castle. Once there Naruto told the king that for the next three months, they would help retrieve his daughter's cat for free. The king had been overjoyed at the mention of not having to pay for the mission. Natsu and Grey on the other hand were scared and started to beg once more to Naruto for forgiveness which never came. When the three months were up, they returned to the guild looking like they had just returned from war. Natsu somehow had gotten a broken arm and had broken his left leg while sporting many cuts all around his body, but mostly his face. Grey had his entire face wrapped like a mummy and was using crutches to help him walk. Though somehow he was still able to strip his clothes, which was a mystery to everyone on how he did it. After that, the two of them started to behave going as far as not picking a fight with each other when Naruto was around in fear of him giving them that punishment. Now though it had been seven months and Fairy Tail had risen through the ranks and had become the most popular guild in all of Fiori. The weekly sorcerer had called them the number one guild in Fiori and the one which represented the country. In that time the guild had also grown to where it once held only 50 members, now it had up to 150 guild members. Naruto couldn't be happier than know that he was making Fairy Tail into the guild that hopefully the first and Makarov would have wanted one day. Though the biggest shocker and his happiest memory was the day his two princesses were born. Throughout their pregnancy Naruto had been there to help them out in any ways he could only leaving for guildmaster meetings or wizard saint meetings. Urza had given him a little girl with light orange, almost peach color hair and aqua blue eyes. She of course named her Elizabeth who had her mother's skin tone and love for strawberry cakes. Mira had given him a little girl with hair that looked to shine in the light from how bright it was, though in the right light, it looked like the sun. She had named her Vivian who had her father's skin tone and eyes along with his curiosity. Both girls though did inherit something from their father, and that was his unique magic which manifested when Natsu had accidentally sent a fireball in their direction. This had scared the living shit out of everyone until they saw the two playing with the fire like it was one of their plushy dolls. When Naruto saw this, he was shocked to see his daughters get his Slayer-related magic. Of course, this didn't stop the beatdown the two boys received from both Urza and surprisingly a very angry Mira. 
This just went to show how far a mother would go to protect her young. After that, Urza had said she would remain in the guild for a while, until maybe her daughter turned six months. Another surprising thing was the surprise letter from Elfman who was still traveling around Fiori. He had said that he had met Gildertz and Laxus out on his journey, and how in the little time spent with Laxus's group, he had fallen for his only female team member. Mira hadn't stopped giggling at how her little brother found love in the weirdest place. Though what did surprise them was how he had convinced Evergreen to join his little trip. Something Laxus was quite annoyed at seeing how he lost one of his very few friends. Naruto just laughed and waved it off while continuing with his work. Now though we find him walking out of his office with a smile on his face while looking down at his guild. Oh master hey I didn't see you there. One blonde kid said while bowing to him. This kid was maybe about Natsu's age and yet was surprisingly stronger than Natsu and Grey put together. He was also one of the newest S-class mages under his command. Which surprising were seven young kids some barely entering their teen or adulthood. Which brought his S-class members number up to 14 very powerful powerhouses. It's alright Zancro, now mind telling me where you're headed. Naruto asked more out of boredom than actual curiosity. Oh right well Lady Mira allowed me to take a S-class job. Zancro said making Naruto nod. All right well take care of the little one you hear. Naruto told him. You see out of the newest S-class mages, one was a little nine-year-old pink-haired girl named Chilia Blendy. Though she was young, she was amazingly powerful along with the other member that is. The other was also a young 13-year-old green-haired boy named Organonagir. He along with Zancro and Chilia made a team named the Kami Slayers of Fairy Tail. Naruto at first wanted to humiliate them for they proclaimed to be God Slayer, which Naruto knew was not true. However, when he saw their ages he calmed down enough to ask why they wanted to join his guild. They simply said they wanted a home to actually call their own. He let them join, but never said anything about him being a true god slayer. Don't worry Orga and me will make sure the little run doesn't trip on her own two feet more than three times. Zancro said with his crazy looking smile. Make it once since I don't want Tai all over my face yelling at me for letting her go on this job without her again. It was no secret that the cold-hearted Teia who could only love Naruto had a huge soft spot for the little S-class mage. She had practically clung to her the moment she laid eyes on her when Naruto brought her back from one of his rare jobs. Aha is the great master of fairy afraid of his own woman. Zancro tried to tease only to shut his mouth when he saw Naruto. He had an almost pitch black aura around him in the shape of a dragon's head, bearing his fangs at him. Just get going already you little brat. Naruto growled out making him run away. That wasn't very nice Naruto. The voice of his sister entered his ears. He turned around and found her with her hands on her hips. This was another mystery to him in the last 10 months she had stopped calling him brother and started to call him by his name. Sorry got a little carried away there I guess. Naruto shrugged. He then noticed her clothing, which was a tight long sleeve white shirt much like his actually. She also wore a mid-thigh black skirt with orange strips here and there with black spandex shorts underneath to protect her modesty. She now though wore ninja boots that reached right below her knees. Her red hair now done up in a ponytail showing off their trademark blue eyes. She also wore a much smaller necklace that looked like a replica of their father's tri prong kunai. He had also noticed the way she seemed to try to flirt with him or try to act a little more seductive. Though he never showed any sign of noticing, he was actually falling for her, which made him feel conflicted on this since they were brother and sister. Naruko on the other hand was beginning to think that maybe her brother only wanted to keep their relationship as just that pure sibling. However, Urza and Mira kept saying that, that wasn't the case. Hey Naruko want to go and get some Raymond out in Magnolia with me? Naruto asked her, which made her widen her eyes and nod with a little blush on her cheeks. I I would love to Naruto. She responded with a little smile while thinking that just maybe she was getting somewhere. Just as they were, going to head out the guild doors opened up and in came a frog creature that seemed to be a humanoid frog thing. Second floor. Huh, what's a council messenger doing here? Taya asked while in her head she was trying to remember if someone broke or destroyed something recently. No idea, hey do you guys think Natsu finally broke and destroyed something? Kin asked while carrying Vivian. I don't think he would after all I bet he doesn't want that punishment again. Mira said making Urza nod. Yes and if Master didn't punish them then I would have certainly would have done it myself. All the other girls merely sweat dropped at her statement. But Naruto and the messenger. What can I help you with um ma'am? Naruto asked a little confused as to the messenger's gender. I have come to extend a hand to you fourth master of the fairy tale guild Naruto Ragnar to join the king of Fiori on a political meeting with one of our neighboring kingdom as his highness's bodyguard. When those words left its mouth, everyone was shocked. Wah what? Naruto asked with surprise. 
the king has heard of your power and knows that you are extremely powerful for someone so young, so he wishes to take you and anyone else who you trust on this trip to better secure him in this delicate peace treaty with one of our neighboring kingdoms. The frogman woman thing explained vaguely. Naruto feeling all the guild's eyes on him sighed and took a thinking stance which was him crossing his arms and closing his eyes. If I say yes then this can really boost fairy tale reputation and can probably take us off the list of the most destructive guild in Fiori, since the king wouldn't ask a guild known for their destructive nature to do this right. As Naruto thought about it, everyone else was thinking the same thing, especially Urza who wanted fairy tale to be known for their warm and caring nature like Rob had once said to her. I will gladly accept the great honor of protecting the king of Fiori. Naruto announced with a smile on his face. Excellent then please head over to his castle in exactly two weeks with whoever you choose to accompany you. The frogman woman said before turning around and leaving. When it left, Naruto turned around and searched the whole guild in less than a second before announcing. Hey I you will be coming with me on this trip you hear. Naruto loudly said making the foul mouth young woman yell out. Why fucking me? Te I retorted. Thus say yes for once okay. Naruto said while rubbing his template. Sorry Naruko seems our lunch will have to wait. Naruko just smiled and waved her hands in front of her face to show she had no hard feeling. Although she was a little peeved that she would go out on this little semi-date with him she understood. It's alright I understand now if you'll excuse me I'll go find a job to kill time then. With that she head over to the request board to take a simply job. Even though she had become an S-class mage under Naruto's new S-class trails, she didn't always want to go on life-endangering jobs. She sometimes just wanted to take things easy. She was currently the only S-class member without a team, since most of them had one. Bilderts from what she's heard only ever teams up with Naruto, since apparently he was the only to actually be able to challenge him in a straight one-on-one -on -one fight. Laxus had his team of bodyguard known as the Thunder God Tribe, who consisted of Free Justine and Bixlow, Evergreen, used to belong to the Thunder God Tribe, before leaving them to travel with Mira's little brother Elfman. Urza used to take missions with Mira, but with her out of commission, she instead started to take missions with Tai and Kin. They were quite feared all over Fiori since with two short-tempered redheads, things tended to go south really fast. Which is why Kin was there since she was the level-headed one she was the one who did most of the talking in their little group. Then there was the Kami Slayers of Fairy Tail, they didn't let you go with them on mission if you weren't a god slayer. They liked to keep it that way since it made things easier for them to understand each other apparently. Even the ever-solitary man known as Mystigan had a partner that no one besides Naruto knew. However, according to him, this man wasn't a S-class mage, yet Mystigan was said to be sent on pure espionage mission by Naruto. When asked he simply said they were his eyes and ears all around the world and left it at that. The other three she didn't know since they were in deep undercover mission who even Naruto kept his mouth shut about saying if they were found out this three could very well die. This surprised them seeing how Naruto never sent anyone on a mission with such high risks before, but Naruto said that this three were great actors, so keeping up the act was child's play for this three S-class mystery mages. What mission I mean job should I take this time? Naruko asked herself. That was until Natsu's voice broke her out of her musing and made her turn around to see what was up. What do you mean a dragon was spotted out in the countryside? Natsu yelled out to a random guild member. Yay man that's what I heard from my last mission, some people were talking about a flying creature that was head in the direction of the wastelands. The mage responded. It might be Igneal come on happy let's go. Before here and out a voice stopped him. You're not going anywhere Natsu not now chase this lead later for now I have an important job for you. Naruto told him. Just when Natsu was gonna yelled at him for stopping him the moment Naruto said he had a job stopped him and made him nod slowly. But now listen I need you to go to Ashibana town and collect a very important artifact from an old home acquaintance for me be careful okay this is very important to me since it involves a project I'm currently working on okay Natsu I'll pay you the same amount a low S class job is worth. When Natsu heard this he became increasingly excited at finally getting a non officially S class job. Does this make me an S class mage now? Natsu happily asked. Finish this job with no incidents and then we'll talk okay Natsu. When he said this Natsu nodded his head and caught the rolled up paper with the directions and a bit of money that he guessed was for Naruto's friend as payment for getting the artifact for him. See ya in four day everyone. With that happy and him ran towards the train to catch the next possible train there. When Natsu left, everyone started to get back to his or her regular routine until Naruto called out to the man that had told Natsu about the dragon sighting. Rowan please go and investigate this dragon sighting a little more for me, I wish to give Natsu some more concrete info than just a passing rumor okay. The now named Rowan simply nodded his head and stood up with a friend. Will do master. With that, he left with his friend to follow up the dragon rumor. Naruto's office two hours later. 
Naruto was going over some plans he had about expanding the guild building to house more members, seeing as his little family kept growing and growing with each passing day. Inside his office on the right were Urza and Mira with their daughters breastfeeding them. Teia was leaning on the wall next to Mira, while Kin and Levi were on his left and right, respectfully helping him out on the plans. I still think we should make a bigger library so that every member can document their magic and store it there for the future generation of fairy tale to use if needed. Naruto said while writing something done on a separate piece of paper. That would be nice, but not everyone would be kin on sharing private information like that honey. Mira said while looking up at him. She's right some like to keep their abilities a secret, but we can make a library and store what we do know about other type of magics, maybe that can help. Levi said while pushing up her glasses. I think we should also add a small training field for our member to train, and you know not go rusty. Teia said speaking up. Great idea Teia may be also a pool and player room for our mage to cool down and relax, so as to raise our moral conduct as well. Kin suggested. Don't you mean so you can goof around eh Kin? Teia teased making Kin blush. We should also think about expanding our armory and maybe buy up-to-date weaponry. Urza said making everyone look at her in shock and confusion. Why would we do that Urza we aren't an army we're mages and we aren't going to war since that is forbidden by the magic council. Mira said. She's right though Mira, I heard rumors that the council is going to start a purga or a dark guild extermination and whether we're a no-killing guild, it matters not to them. Naruto said with a completely serious face scaring them all since they thought that all the killing would have stopped already. Are really do you know when this will begin? Levi asked being the most scared right now. It's just rumors right now so we don't have to worry about that for hopefully a long while. Naruto waved his hand trying to dismiss it. But he knew better since in the last wizard saint meeting the four gods of Ishkar pulled him aside to tell him about it. Flashback four months ago. Naruto was just beginning to leave the room where yet another meeting of the wizard saints had been held. He saw Seagrain walk toward him with a look that said he wanted to talk to him. However, stopped and started to walk away when he saw the four gods walk toward Naruto. Naruto may we have a word with you. Warad asked very seriously for once. Of course Warad-sama. Naruto bowed a little and followed the four powerful entities in all of Fiori. They led him down a few stairs and then they turned quite a few corners until they got to a pair of double doors. The first rank opened them and motioned for the other to enter first. Inside he saw a huge library like he's never seen before and he noticed that the bookshelves were made of gold apparently. What is it you wish to tell me Warad-sama? Naruto asked. Naruto it has come to our attention that the council is planning an extermination act to get rid of the entire dark guilds here in Fiori. The second rank said making Naruto widen his eyes. B do you know how they plan to do this since I know for a fact that legal guild aren't allowed to wage war against other guilds and that there are quite a few no killing guild out there mine included. Naruto said while looking at them. That's the thing my boy they don't care from what we heard once a kill job lands on your guild that guild must go and kill every last dark mage in it no exceptions or risk being marked a traitor. The third rank sighed out. Well what that is abuse of power isn't it? Naruto asked them not believing his guild might have to kill very soon. Yes but we can't do nothing about it since apparently the king himself is backing it up. Warod informed him. Naruto stood there shocked he couldn't believe that his guild might have to get their hands dirty one day very soon, then it hit him. Wait if they go after dark mages they might go after my three undercover member. Naruto told them. Yes that is why we call you we need to know their names to somehow protect them when they start sending out the kill jobs. Warod told him. I I can't not yet if I do you will be forced to tell other so as to protect them better and I can't afford any loose lips right now, they are so close to finding out their master plan, just give me a little more time please. Naruto told them. Half a year Naruto after that we can't help you anymore okay. The first rank told him. Deal. Agreed Naruto. With that, they let him go, and Naruto knew he had to get in contact with his three guild members very soon. Flashback end. Present. While he was remembering this, he felt a tingle in the back of his head and knew what it meant. Hey can we take a break I have something important to deal with right now. Everyone just looked at him and instantly knew what he meant. The three mystery members were trying to contact him via thought projections. Okay we'll be downstairs if you need us okay. Levy told him making him nod. As soon as everyone was gone, he placed his hand on the wall behind his desk and the room glowed blue for a second before settling down. Then out of nowhere three figures appeared before him. The first girl was a slender young woman with blue hair, dark blue eyes, pale skin and a curvaceous figure. She had long hair, tightly curled at the base, wearing a navy blue coat, a fur shawl with a teru teru bozu attached to it, as well as a Russian Cossack hat. This was Juvia Luxor. The second girl had long, bright pink hair, which is tied on the top of her head in two large buns. She has a curvaceous figure, peach skin, a beauty mark underneath each eye and sports red lipstick. 
She wears a long, slightly loose white kimono with a red stipe in between two black stipes around the waist, as well as a red triangle at the bottom of her dress, decorated by flames and skulls motifs, open at the top to reveal her shoulders and a fair amount of cleavage, it's closed around the waist by a large black belt, adorned with horned skull. This girl was named Ikaruga. The third and final girl was a young woman of relatively small stature with pale skin, brown eyes and short silvery hair, with bangs covering her forehead. She wears a short dress made up of white feathers with two feathery wings that hang from her back. The dress splits just above her navel and reveals much of her cleavage, becoming more reminiscent of a vest. The deep revealing V-cut is lined by a row of long feathers on either side, thus continuing up her torso and wrapping around her shoulders to form a sort of collar, two wing-like tattoos can be found on her collarbone, and her skirt is partially split down the middle. She wears a dark blue ribbon around her head with four bow hanging, two on each side, that cover her ears. Her hair is cut in a short bob, with two tresses reaching over her hair ribbon to frame her face, a piece of hair at the top curls into a halo that rises conspicuously from her head. She also wears long, dark blue gloves that cover her arms past her elbows and knee length, dark blue stockings with light blue feathered boots. This girl was known as the Angel of the Oration Says, or as he knew her Serrano. These three girls were Naruto's most trustworthy S-class members apart from his mates that is. He had found them and had been able to change them and got them to join Fairy Tail before giving them the most dangerous jobs he had. Yuvia was supposed to keep a very close eye of Ose Porla for him and inform him of any dangerous dealing he may have against Fairy Tail. Ikaruga was made to spy on Jell for him how he simply told her to join an assassination guild, knowing that eventually Jell will come for Urza to complete the R system. Serrano he met her when she was about to kill a celestial mage from Blue Pegasus. He was able to stop her and told her that he knew what she went through since one of his wives had gone through the same thing. He promised her payback, but not revenge on Jell, if she helps him out on his mission to take down the Balam Alliance. She agreed on the simple condition that he helped her find her little sister. He had agreed and right in front of her had sent Mistigan and his partner out to find and watch over Serrano's little sister. When he got those three together, he told them their mission and told them that he would not give them the guild stamp just yet, for fear of them being found out. You called master? Juvia's voice rang out through the office. Yes I'm sorry for calling you all in such short notice, but we have a major problem. When the three saw his face, they knew it must be bad. What's the problem Naruto-sama? Ikaruga asked. The Magic Council will be sending out extermination jobs to all legal guilds and will have them take out every last dark guild in Fiori in about seven maybe five months. The three looked shocked at this new piece of information more Serrano and Ikaruga than Juvia, since she was still technically a part of a legal guild for now that is. What are we gonna master, Oze is planning of attacking Fairy Tail soon, but he wishes to have some sort of reason to attack, so for now you are safe. Juvia told him making Naruto nod in realization that Oze indeed wanted to attack them. Juvia I wish for you to find out everything about your S-class members and give me a completely detailed report on their strengths and weaknesses okay. When Juvia nodded he smiled at her before turning to the others missing Juvia's small blush. As for the council's orders for now we continue as planned and I will just say this, I will be revealing your identity to the four gods of Ishkar to have their help in protecting you three when the time come to get you three out. For now go back and keep an eye of your targets and before I forget Serrano, Mistigan finally found your little sister. Naruto told her with a big smile. Serrano just stood there with wide eyes before tears started to come streaming down her face. See can I see her master? She asked quite lowly. She is on her way here with Mistigan and his partner, it did take a little while to convince her that we knew you and could get you both in touch, so maybe in a month of two, you can both meet face to face for the first time okay. Serrano smiled and nodded two months was nothing compared to the three years in that hell. She would wait those two months with utter happiness to hug her little sister once more. But now Ikaruga please send me any type of sign when Jell is coming after Urza okay. Ikaruga just nodded and with that, the three vanished. When they left Naruto just sat there watching the darkness for a little while longer before sighing and looking towards the right corner. You can come out now mom. Out of the shadows came his stepmother Lily the primordial goddess with a smile on her face with an orb in her hands. Hello there dear how have you been? She asked him. Fine mom just really tired with all this guildmaster work. That's good to hear my boy. The voice of his father came out of the orb making him sweat drop when he saw his father the size of a small lizard inside it. Um dad what happened to you? Naruto questioned him. He wanted to see his grandchildren, but you know he can't very well go out of his cave without instantly dying, seeing as his way past his time, so I made this special orb to house him whenever he wishes to leave that cave. Lily said making Naruto nod. Naruto we are also here to tell you some bad news. Naruto merely raised an eyebrow in motion for them to continue. 
We just recently went to your old world to see how thing have gone, and well the whole world is one big wasteland, it seems that there was a huge war where both side lost to a monster known as the Jubby. Ragnarok told him. Though since they didn't have your sister to extract the Nine Tails or your mother's corpse to remove even the smallest trace of Nine Tails chakra the Jubby came out far weaker than they expected and was easily sealed back up, but not fast enough to save the ninjas that fought in the war. Lily continued. What happened next then? There was over 50,000 ninja from every major village besides Konoha, along with every minor ninja village, and only about 100 were able to survive this war. Naruto was shocked at how the Shinobis were near extinction from just a very weakened Jubby. The other Jinchuriki what happened to them? They all died, but their Bai just live inside the Jubby which is now inside the moon back in your world, though even though there is 100 ninja left, the Jubby was the sole creator of Chakra with him absorbing the Biju, he also went for the Chakra of the ninjas to try and sustain itself a little longer. The result is the elemental nations no longer have chakra, meaning the wall between Earthland and the elemental nations is gone. Ragnarok told him. So can anyone come to Earthland now or not? Naruto asked. He got his answer in the form of his mother shaking her head no while his father took in thinking position. No because they no longer have chakra to wield time and space like they used to, so your sister and you are safe. Ragnarok told him. Okay that's good news now come on I know for a fact mother wants to hold little Vivian and Elizabeth right mom. Lily nodded her head so fast both Ragnarok and Naruto thought it would fall off. With that, Lily threw the orb at Naruto who caught it and saw her run out the door before they heard her scream. Where are my grandbabies at? Both Naruto and Ragnarok chuckled before heading out to stop her from spoiling them too much. As they walked down the little hallway to the second floor, Naruto couldn't stop smiling at knowing that fairy tale had really grown stronger for their late third master's honor. He couldn't wait to see his daughters join fairy tale and make late last time. Where are my grandbabies at? Both Naruto and Ragnarok chuckled before heading out to stop her from spoiling them too much. Now fairy tale ground floor. Everyone was surprised at seeing Naruto's mother in the guild, since they all thought that a goddess would have a lot of other thing to do than stop by their guild like this. Now here she was hugging both Elizabeth and Vivian, who looked to be confused and on the verge of crying. This Lily you're scaring them, remember they don't know you yet. Kin said as respectfully as she could. Lily looked at her then at her granddaughter and saw them about to cry, so she let them down and saw both Urza and Mira pick them up. There, there honey this is your grandma Lily no need to cry. Mira soothed Vivian who stopped sniffling and looked at Lily with big round curious eyes. Lysanda having seen everything decided to join them and sat next to Urza at the bar. Hey Urza didn't you have a strawberry cheesecake? Lysanda questioned with a tilt of her head. Urza looked at her and then down at her plate, only to see that it was empty, and as she started to raise her head, one thought crossed her mind. She was going to start slaughtering the guild to find out who took it until she heard her daughter giggling. Everyone turned to look at Elizabeth and saw her entire face covered in the white frosting of the cake, with the rest smeared all over the table in her hands. Eli how many time have I told you not to take mommy's cake? Urza scolded her softly making Elizabeth look at her before grabbing her face with her frosting covered hands and giggling. Sai Urza merely sighed before grabbing a piece of cloth and asking Lysanna to please wet it for her. As this was going on Mira and Lily were talking to each other about well life. So Mira when are you and my son going to give me more grandbabies eh? This made Mira blush cutely while looking to the right avoiding her gaze. W well and Naruto and Kin are currently trying for a baby, so maybe after them will I try again for a second. Mira said while across from them Kin went red before fainting from Mira, telling Lily something so personal to her that is. Wonderful and you Taya when can I expect grandchildren? What they saw was Taya stiffening and turning her back toward them before responding. And not for a long while I, I don't want to brat are ruining my body just yet. Taya stuttered out, but the other were able to catch her nervousness. Wait. Are you pregnant Taya? Lysanna asked her. That's when they all saw her flinch and start to tremble making them wonder why she was trembling. D Taya are you okay? Mira asked her softly. Then they heard it she was crying, Mira seeing this was a sensitive topic, grabbed Vivian and motioned for the rest to follow her, while she grabbed Taya's hand and lead her toward the basement. When they got there, Mira locked the door and activated a silencing seal Naruto had put there for some reason. Taya what's wrong you can tell us where your sister's right. Urza told her while placing her hand on her shoulder. Taya just stood there with her hair, hiding her face, and it wasn't until Kin walked up to her and hugged her that they saw her crying. I am sorry I, I just can't do it. Taya whimpered out. It's okay if you're not ready for kids yet Taya, a lot of people aren't, but someday Lysanna couldn't finish. That's not it, it's just that because of all the experiment Rachimaru did on us, I can't give him a child, like he wants Rachimaru saw it as a weakness, if one of his bodyguards was knocked up, so he drugged me and somehow removed my entire uterus from me. Taya told them making them get horrified looked. 
the only reason I didn't go through the same was because I was weak, so he only saw me as a tool to give away should he need to. Kin said while hugging Taiya who was just now calming down. I am sorry if I'd known I wouldn't have pushed you so hard. Lily said while walking up to her. She then placed her right hand on Taiya's stomach before they all saw her fall to her knees clutching her stomach. Well what did you do Miss Lily? Mira asked while handing Vivian to Naruko and running towards Taiya. I'm a goddess remember, so I simply remade her uterus for her. This made Taiya look at her with wide eyes and tears at the corner of her eyes. Now go you deserve happiness too Taiya. That's when they all saw Taiya run outside. Don't tell me she's. Yup I'll have more grandbabies to spoil soon. Lily said before going over to Urza and Naruko and started to make faces at them making them giggle. Build bar. Naruto had just made it to the bar since his father and him had been catching up since they parted ways. Naruto had set his down on the bar and was about to ask one of the barmaids if they hadn't seen his wives. Before he could though he saw Taiya coming out of the basement and straight towards him. Hey Taiya I was just he couldn't finish since Taiya grabbed him by the arm and started to drag him to his office. H hey Taiya what's the big deal? The guild heard from the guild hall. Shut the fuck up and strip. Everyone blushed when they heard this. Hey at least let me place the silencing seals. Fuck that I want the guild to hear everything. Everyone tried to ignore the sound of pleasure that soon followed and it didn't help that Romeo the son of Macau was there too. Hey dad what does fuck me like a bitch in heat mean? Romeo innocently asked his father. Never repeat that again okay I will tell you when you're a lot older got it. Macau told him and when he saw his son about to say something else he decided to get him out of there. Come on Romeo I'll take you to buy ice cream and anything else you want okay. When he said that Romeo smiled and ran outside to go and get his icy treat. Everyone else seeing this decided to do the same and it was at this day that every member of Fairy Tale took a job and left the guild empty all except for six people. Wow we should have sex with our husband more in the guild if we want everyone to take a job, Haruza. Mira teased. All she got was blushing faces from Urza, Kin, and Naruko. She was about to ask what was up until she saw Kin run upstairs and Urza gave Elizabeth to Lily and followed after Kin. She saw her sister put Vivian on the high chair and mumbled I hope Natsu still in town before running out. Lily was the only one sitting at the with both Vivian and Elizabeth playing with them and creating random stuff from thin air, making them smile and laugh. Well you better go and join them you two I want a lot more grandbabies than this. Lily said while making a small horse with wings on its back. Be but I'm his sister ma'am. I don't really care if you can give me healthy grandchildren then go for it and if my son doesn't want to tell me and I'll knock some sense into him okay. Lily told her was making a little bear made entirely out of what looked like clouds and giving it to Vivian who proceeded to squeeze the life out of it. After that, both Mira and Naruko looked at each other and nodded before running upstairs. When they got to the master's office they opened it to find Taiya on top of Naruto bouncing up and down. Guild bar. Back with Lily down on the guild bar Ragnarok was just looking at Lily play with their grandchildren. Lily what is your obsession with wanting so many grandchildren eh? Ragnarok asked her. All he got in return was a small sad smile while she played with Elizabeth. As you most certainly know already Ragnarok there aren't many gods left since we mostly killed each other outright. Lily asked him. I've heard rumors back in my day yes so why does that matter? Ragnarok pushed on. Well there are only about five true gods left in the entire universe with about three dozen fake gods running around but since Naruto is my first true god slayer I decided to give him a little present. Lily said while making a little monkey and sending it to the little girls who tried to grab but missing cause of its agility. What kind of present Lily? Ragnarok asked a little nervous now. It's not the time to tell you yet dear Ragnarok but I will say this the other four true gods are evil incarnated and since Naruto is my true god slayer only he can kill them if he ever wishes to bring true peace to the world and the others with it. Lily told him making Ragnarok think. Who are these five true gods Lily including yourself of course? Ragnarok asked. They are Lucifer the god of death, Michael a light god turned evil, so he earned the title of the god of betrayal, Eva the goddess of darkness, me Lily the goddess of the sacred light, and finally the strongest of us cage the god of fear. Lily said making Ragnarok take a thinking pose. So will they come after Naruto or not? No because this world and his world are a part of my domain so they can't just enter as they please, but I have a feeling they are planning on killing me since I'm the only light goddess left, it's one of the reason why I want as many grandchildren as soon as possible in case they do decided to get rid of me. Lily said while kissing both girls on their heads. Ragnarok merely looked on with an unreadable expression trying to see if what she said was real. 
that won't happen since Naruto would surely go to all their domains and slaughter them without mercy, and he wouldn't make their death quick, Naruto would drag their deaths out as much as possible, and make sure they suffer to make them pay for even laying a hand on one of his family member, be it a guild member or a family member. Ragnarok said while ignoring the erotic sound coming from the second floor. I know but I don't want him to go to war with the gods over me. Lily said. Naruto would go to war with an ant if that ant so much as bruised one of his loved ones. Ragnarok laughed out. Yes that is true, but this is another story altogether this four are ruthless and have wiped out planets altogether just because they grew bored of them. Lily told him. Well if I remember correctly Naruto isn't exactly a merciful person when it involves revenge, so we can die happy knowing that whoever messed with our boy will meet a very terrifying end at his hands. Ragnarok told while hearing the coupling of their son coming to an end. Pun intended. Well looks like we'll be getting more grandchildren soon enough huh? Ragnarok said. Yes indeed, so Eli, Vivian how does a little brother or sister sound eh? Lily asked a six month old babies. The babies merely babbled and reached for her, which made her happy at seeing their innocent face radiate happiness. After a while they heard the sound stop and looked up at the direction of the master's office and at the same time thought. It seems they are finally done for now. They both thought only to be very wrong when they heard Taya's voice. I hope you're not tired yet stud because we aren't leaving until you get me pregnant. She shouted. What happened to waiting until later? Naruto screamed back. Fuck that. I want your seed deep inside me so get pumping. Taya screamed. Both parents just sweat dropped and Lily picked up Ragnarok and the girls before taking them out of the guild. Come on you three let's leave them to their lava fist. With that, they left to Magnolia to hopefully find something to entertain them for a while. Ashibana Town Natsu and Happy. But all that was going on with the guild Natsu had just survived a trip in the train once more and had now just recently entered the town. Of course he ended up riding the train about 10 times before Happy had been able to hold the train long enough for the young dragon slayer to get off. Now we find him lying on the ground trying to stop his lunch from coming back up. Happy was just looking around the town trying to figure out where exactly Naruto's acquaintance could be. Hey Natsu where is it that we're supposed to meet master's friend? Happy asked while looking at him. I, I don't know check the M map. Natsu said while getting the map out and dropping it on the floor after he felt his food come back up. Happy was able to see him run to the trash can and empty out his stomach into the trash can. Happy picked up the map and began looking at it before heading over to the town map that was in the middle of the train station for first time visitors. So Happy did you find out where we have to go yet? Natsu said now having his stomach under control. The yeah, A it's in the center of town so come on the sooner we get there the faster we can go back and have master make you S class mage. Happy told him while flying onto his head and laying on top of it. You got it partner. Natsu yelled out while running out of the station. After a bit of running around and asking for direction more than once they made it to a weird looking building. The building itself wasn't weird, but the building had a strange vibe that neither Happy or him could make out. The building was a two-story place that looked to hold around 20 maybe 40 rooms. The color was pitch black while the windows were white. The door to it looked like it was an oval-like shape with screen doors instead of wooden doors. Natsu began walking inside but stopped when he saw the inside of it. The inside had bones in it, but not just any bones this were clearly dragon bones, complete with the bones from the wings to the bones of the head. Well what the hell is this? Natsu asked shocked. This here is my dragon room young dragon slayer. A womanly voice said making him turn to face her. In front of him was a purple-headed young woman about the age of 25, wearing a navy blue dress that hugged her curves nicely. She also wore navy blue heels and had both her toenails and fingernails painted navy blue. Her skin tone showed that she spent quite a bit of time outside if her deep tan was any indication. She also had sickly yellow eyes with slits in them making her look like a snake. Welcome to my home slayer, to what do I owe the pleasure of a fellow dragon slayer paying me a visit? The woman asked him while getting up in his face and grabbing it by the chin while licking her lips. Why you're a dragon slayer too? Natsu asked her. That's right I am Hebeheim the real poison dragon slayer. She said making Natsu raise an eyebrow at the way she said the word real. So you must know where my father is right, seeing as you're older and all he's a fire dragon by the name of Igneal. Natsu told her. Unfortunately I can't answer that seeing as I killed my dragon parent myself. Hebeheim told him while licking her lips. Wa well, what? Why would you kill your dragon wasn't it your parent? Natsu screamed at her angry at what she told him. What you think of me does not matter at all to me, so keep your ideals to yourself, hatchling now tell me why are you here exactly? Natsu seeing he wouldn't get anything out of her huffed and looked away from her. Master Naruto sent me here to pick up the artifact he asked for. Natsu said while tossing her the rolled up piece of paper. And there is the job flyer and payment for your services. 
Happy told her seeing as Natsu didn't want to speak anymore. Bibi Haim looked through it and after a minute of reading, she nodded and looked back up. Very well I'll go and retrieve it for you stay here while I go in the back. With that, she disappeared into the back. Natsu being Natsu grew bored and started to look around the place since all the dragon skeletons inside intrigued him. As he was walking around a shining, crystal attracted him more than anything else did. Happy seeing this flew towards it and read the plaque underneath it. The Fire Dragon King Lacrima, this special Lacrima is said to be able to give any regular person the abilities of a first generation dragon slayer, but as it is mentioned it's no ordinary dragon Lacrima, it's the Fire Dragon King's Lacrima, and it's said to give the user another special ability beside the regular dragon slayer abilities. Happy read before he continued reading. The Lacrima it's said to give the user the ability to turn into fire itself something only thought possible by the Shadow Dragons. With that Happy finished and looked at it before looking at Natsu. Natsu are you okay? Happy asked. Be this dragon Lacrima is giving off the same magic signature as Igneal did be but how? Natsu asked while looking at it. Well that simple it means your precious dragon parent is dead. Hebeheim said making Natsu spin around. What? What are you talking about Igneal can't be dead? Natsu screamed at her trying to deny it. The dragon Lacrima is made up of a dragon's head and heart being fused together to make it hatchling, and it also take nearly eight years for it to be complete, I barely found that Lacrima a year ago. Hibiheim told him while handing him a box. Here this is the artifact Naruto told me to find take great care of that since there is only one of its kind in the world, so you don't know what it took me to find it. With that, she grabbed them and started to push them outside. H hey what's the big idea? Natsu screamed at her. Your business is done here so bye. No not without that lacrima. Natsu told her. Sure I'll give it to you for 10 billion jewels. The amount made both Natsu and Happy pale. Wa well, what? Natsu yelled. Why so much ma'am? Happy asked her. Do you know how rare a lacrima from a dragon king no matter the element is? He behind asked them. So when you get the money I'll gladly sell it to you or anyone else who come to buy it until them be gone. She said while send a sickly red stream of smoke at him sending him tumbling out of the house. When Natsu got up to run back inside and demand the lacrima be given to him, he saw the whole house gone. I'm unhappy we need to go talk with Naruto. Natsu told him while getting up and running toward Magnolia. Natsu the train station is the other way. Happy screamed at him. I know but that would just take too long. Natsu yelled back. But that both left to make it back to Magnolia town as fast as their legs could carry them. Fairy tale. Naruto and his girls were done with their little lava fist and were now getting changed again. Naruto was just putting on his boots when he felt a ticking in the back of his head. Mistigan so glad you could contact me. Naruto thought through their mental link that Naruto made for this exact thing. Yes it's been a rough few months, but Z and me have been able to make it back to Magnolia Town safely, but unfortunately little Yukino is tired and fell asleep on the way back. Mistigan's voice was heard. I see so where is she right now eh? We have set her up in Fairy Hills, and the landlady has said to let her rest for the day, and tomorrow she will personally bring her to Fairy Tale to meet with you master. The mysterious voice of Z answered. But then I'll talk to you two later and give you a new assignment wait on second thought I need you to go to Ikaruga and Serrano and somehow get them here to Fairy Tale personally Juvia I'll take care of her. Understood master. Z said. Got it. Mistigan responded. But keep in touch you too. With that, he cut the connection and looked around only to see the girls looking at him. E did I miss something? Naruto asked. No we were just waiting for you to finish your little conversation with Mistigan. Mira told him. Okay well Tai I need you to get ready because tomorrow we'll be leaving to Crocus to meet with the king. Why we don't need to go for another two weeks? Tai asked him. I wish to get the details of our role and maybe see which neighbor we will be visiting. Naruto informed them. Okay then, so when do we leave tomorrow? Tai asked him. About high noon I have someone who I need to speak with tomorrow first. They all nodded and resumed their changing even Naruko was there with the biggest blush of all time. Oh and Naruko we need to talk about our relationship you hear. Naruto told her while putting on his shirt. Yay, okay Naruto. She meekly responded. No you don't Naruto she is now one of your mate nothing else need to be said, so from now on she no longer is your sister, but a future mother for your children got it. Urza told him while crossing her arms under her black lacy bra. Right okay fine. Naruto sighed out not wanting to fight with his mate so soon, after what they did. Thank you dear husband. Urza smiled at him. Come let's go find your mother and head home I'm starving. Taya told him with the biggest smile on her face, while gently rubbing her stomach and silently wishing for a miracle. Okay, but tonight we eat ramen. Naruko yelled out while running outside. The others followed her at a calmer pace while smiling thinking about their future together and what it would hold for their growing family. Fairy tale. 
Naruto was sitting in his office the next day stamping and signing papers as the master. He was bored but knew this had to be done of course he knew little Yukino was due to come here very soon. If he remembered correctly, Yukino was about 12 maybe 13 years old if what Serrano said was right. Before he could think more, he heard a knock on his door and look up from his work. Enter. He shouted. In came a little white-haired girl with a very nervous look on her face and she seemed to be grabbing onto her necklace for dear life. Right next to her was a woman in her mid-thirties with a smile on her face. Master I have brought the little one as requested. She said while smiling at him. Thank you Miss Erica now if you would I would like to talk to her alone for a while. Naruto politely asked. Oh of course master. Erika said while waving bye to Yukino and leaving the room. You know you look a lot like your big sister right? Naruto told her while getting back to work. Of course, he missed Yukino's wide eye look when he said that. E do you really know my big sister mister? She asked. Of course I do sweetie and she's being brought right here as we speak by the very same people who brought you. Naruto told her while smiling at her. So what do you say you join fairy tale until she comes here eh? Naruto told her while bringing out the stamp. Yukino nodded her head, ran towards him, and hugged him while crying into his shoulder. Thank you miss she didn't get to finish because the doors to his office busted open to reveal Natsu there. Naruto. Your acquaintance has Igneal's dragon lacrima and I demand you tell her to give it to me. Hey who are you? Natsu calmed down the instant he saw Yukino hiding behind Naruto while holding on to her chest from being scared half to death. First of all Natsu I have no idea what you're talking about, second of all this is our newest member Yukino Agria, so behave Natsu and apologize for scaring her. Naruto told him while giving him the look that meant do it or you'll be doing that job real soon. That's sorry for scaring you Yukino. Happy said while waving at her. Bye. Natsu strained out with sweat pouring down his face. Good, now please help Yukino learn the ways of our guild while I need to start getting ready to leave for the king's castle. Naruto got up and left followed by Natsu and Yukino with happy on Natsu's head. In trance of fairy tale. Everyone was in front of the guild wanting to say goodbye to their master and Teaya as he left for Crocus. Well I'm off for this thing so before I leave I will be leaving Mira in charge as always, while well, Urza will be in charge of Disciple, should you all decide to trash the place while I'm gone. Naruto told them making everyone sweat while looking at Urza who was smiling and giving off a red aura, scaring them all. Aye sir. Everyone screamed at the same time. Yukino just looked around and smiled since in the little time she had been there she had felt very much at home. Everyone treated her nicely and never blamed her for anything, should she break something or cause someone to break something. Instead, they just laughed and started to have an all-out guild brawl. She even got Levy McGarden to help her learn how to use magic, which she found out was celestial magic. She didn't even know that the two golden keys she had found a while back were even celestial keys, given no one used magic where she used to live. Now she was able to feel her magic and now she was working on bringing out one of her celestial spirits so she could start taking jobs. She was making slow progress, but given it was just her first day no one rushed her and good thing too, since she found out that Naruto had paid for her first year in Fairy Hills for her. Now she had an even bigger reason to like him and be thankful to him. I master I hope you have a safe trip. Yukino screamed out while waving happily at him with a huge smile, making everyone in Fairy Tale smile. They knew Yukino had some sort of sad backstory, so no one pushed her and seeing her smile like that made them proud of being in fairy tale. Why thank you Yukino now please everyone behave well Tei and me are gone, especially Yunatsu, Grey. Naruto told them while everyone saw black energy being expelled from him. Aye sir. Both screamed out while hugging each other. Don't worry master we the Kami Slayers will make sure Matchstick and Ice Cube don't destroy the guild hall. Everyone heard the voice of Zancro and looked to the right to see Orga, Chilia and Zancro himself standing there. Back already I see him well good job as always. Naruto told them while getting a grin from Orga and a happy smile from Chilia at having him praise them. Well I'm off see ya. With that everyone saw them walking down the road at a steady pace. All of fairy tale was waving and yelling out their goodbyes to them. Of course, Natsu picked a fight with Zancro over who was the better fire slayer of the two. On the road. Ai and Naruto were traveling to the nearby town to get a ride to the requested meeting spot the king had sent them via letter. Hey Naruto how long is this meeting going to be for? Tei asked while munching on a ration bar she had on her dot about two maybe three weeks and if this goes down the wrong way then a whole month. Naruto told her while taking a bite from her ration bar. Tei didn't even blink when he did that since she didn't mind at all. Oh well is it true? Tei asked. What is? Naruto questioned back. What you told us that the Magic Council will be sending out execution jobs to all legal guild to exterminate all dark guilds. Tei asked him. Yes. Naruto said while a sad tone. Tei sighed and kept on eating her ration bar while looking at the ground. 
Our children will grow up in this fighting won't they after all I doubt we'd be able to take out all the dark guild that easily. Taya told him. I will do whatever it takes to prevent that from happening, even if I have to take on the entire dark guild forces myself. Naruto told her while glaring at nothing in particular. With that, they grew quiet and walked to the meeting place in silence, thinking what the future might hold for them. Meeting spot. Naruto and Taya had gotten to the meeting spot earlier than expected and were now waiting there for almost two days for the king and his men. Ai of course was sleeping saying if they weren't leaving to not wake her up no matter what. Naruto wisely agreed and stayed away from her when she was sleeping. Now though we find Naruto outside eating in a restaurant when he noticed an entourage of carriages rolling up the street. He got up and paid for his food while heading outside to the meeting spot. When he got there, he saw a man the size of Makarov standing there with no less than 10 men around him. He of course recognized one of the men since he was standing right behind a green-haired little girl who upon seeing him smiled widely. This girl was of course none other than the princess of Fiori herself Hisui Fiori, daughter of the king Tomei Fiori. He had seen the little 13-year-old back when he visited the king when he dropped off Natsu and Grey for their punishment. When he met her, she seemed sad and angry at the world, so he had asked the king for his permission to speak with her. He was able to talk to her, but she refused to speak so it took a while, but he was able to make out why she was angry. Her mother the queen had died at the hands of mages, but not any mages dark mages. Hisui from that moment on despised every mage seeing them as the cause of every problem, seeing as the ones who killed her mother were Xerath worshippers. Naruto though was able to change her mind by showing her how magic could be beautiful, by showing her his newly acquired maker magic. She was amazed by it watching him make anything she asked from his many elements, thanks to his slayer magic. When he finished she asked why some mages were evil, and he simply said that it was the human nature. He told her how some liked the thrill of being on the opposing side of the law. However, he also told her how there were people like him who lived to catch and bring this evil man to justice. She had asked him if he would bring those who took her mother from her to justice for her. He responded by kissing her forehead and smiling at her, while telling her he would bring them all down someday. He knew she had developed a crush on him since for the rest of the time he stayed there to speak with the king she wouldn't leave his side. However, when he was departing back to fairy tale she had ran to him, hugged him, and wouldn't let him go. Now though he could see she was a lot more happy and calmer, since he didn't sense any anger or sadness coming from her in fact all he sensed was happiness. Naruto. Hisui screamed while running to him and hugging him. Doma and the knights looked on wide eye at the princess's show of public affection to someone else besides her father. H hey there Hisui Haim. Naruto said while giving a little bow to her. So you're the infamous Naruto fourth master of the fairy tale guild huh? A small old man asked trying to intimidate him with a glare and his men. Naruto flared his magic making the old man and his men back off real quick while gaining frightened expressions on their faces. Now, now Naruto-sama no need to scare him. The knight in white said while smiling at him. Arcadios you're here too I see. Naruto smiled at him. But of course Naruto-sama, I would never leave her highness's side. Arcadios told him with a little head bow. Yes, and as much as this is entertaining may we get to the matter at hand. The king said while standing in the middle of the two. Of course your majesty is there any place you wish to speak in private? Naruto asked with a bow. My carriage will be just fine. Toma said while opening the door and allowing him inside. Naruto nodded, entered, and watched the king hop onto his carriage and close the door while sitting opposite of him. Naruto, I'm sorry. The king apologized with his head low, making Naruto raise his right eyebrow. For what your majesty? He asked. For lying you see there isn't any meeting with any of our neighboring countries, I made that up to get you to come, Toma told him, while pausing to gather his thoughts. Naruto didn't say anything, but instead stayed quite to allow the king to speak his mind. You see what I really wanted was to ask you for a big favor now Naruto was very curious. What might that be Toma-sama? Naruto questioned. I wish for you to join the magic council for me. Toma told him. Come again? A baffled Naruto asked. I wish for you to join the magic council for me. Toma repeated. No I heard you the first time I was merely asking why. Naruto explained with a very confused look on his face. I have heard rumors of the magic council's inappropriate behavior involving some of Fiori's mage guilds, so I was wondering if you'd do me the big favor and gather the information necessary for me to disband the council and place a new one. The king explained himself making Naruto think about it. Okay I will do it your highnesses. Naruto responded after 10 minutes of deep thinking. Thank you very much Naruto. Toma smiled. He then opened the door and hopped outside. When Naruto got out of the carriage, Hisui ran toward him with a huge smile on her face. Naruto are you going to keep your promise still? Hisui asked with a tiny blush on her face. Naruto for his part laughed nervously while scratching the back of his head, which made Arcadios and the king raise an eyebrow. 
What promise is that my princess? Toma asked. Naruto promised to wait for me so that we can get married. Hisui excitedly proclaimed. This of course made the king burst out laughing along with Arcadios and the rest of his royal guards. Be did he now well then when might I start with the wedding plans my dear Hisui? The king teasingly asked. Naruto for his part just sighed and smiled seeing as this made her happy, but stopped when he saw Arcadios walking towards him. So Naruto-sama is any of this true because I do not wish to see her highness's daughter cry because you lied to her? Arcadios asked. I know that by the time she turns 20 I'll most likely be in my mid-twenties, but a promise is a promise whether I made half jokingly or not. Naruto told him. Actually I thought she would have forgotten it, but apparently I was wrong. Naruto joked which made Arcadio smile at him. Yes the princess is rather ambition when it come to the man she wishes to marry. Arcadios joked out. So how goes everything with that little violinist you met huh? Naruto teased him making him choke a little while looking away to hide his blush. Things are just fine thank you for asking. He stuttered out. While they talked, Teaya had woken up, came looking for him, and found him joking around with Arcadios. Oh hey there Arcadios how's everything been? Teaya asked once she was within hearing range. Oh lady Teaya nice to see you again, and everything goes well, thank you for asking well Naruto-sama his majesty will leave everything in your hands from here on out. Arcadio said while saluting him and Teaya before going over to the king and getting everyone to start packing up. Um weren't going to some super important meeting. Teaya asked him. No Teaya the king just needed a good excuse to bring me out to ask a very important favor of me. Naruto then began to tell her everything while they waved goodbye to the king and his men, along with Hisui. Well that's lame he could've just sent a sealed letter to you instead. Teaya huffed out. Every sealed letter first goes through the council for approval remember. Teaya nodded at that remembering that if it involved anything magical the council had first access to it. Right okay then well now what do we just go back home or what? Teaya asked him. Might as well I don't like being away from the guild for too long with Natsu and Grey there that is. Naruto told her while they made their way back to the hotel to gather their stuff. Fairy tale. Natsu and Zankro had once more beaten each other into unconsciousness after fighting for an hour. Now they were in the guild's infirmary resting while sending each other death glares. Natsu behaved please. Lysanna said while walking into the room. Well he started it. He childishly said. Natsu if you are ever to be mature you need to calm down okay. Lysanna told him while grabbing his hand. Natsu nodded his head and sighed while trying to go back to sleep. Zankro on the other hand merely watched with a little jealousy because he was one of the only guys with no girlfriend. Zankro still remembered the day he came upon Naruto when he was wandering around with no purpose. Yes, Master Hades had taught him his god slayer magic, but was that all there was to him? He had left Grimoire Hearts, saying he needed time to train himself Hades of course allowed it. Instead of returning in the time he said he would, he decided to travel the world find meaning to his life. That's when he met Orga the only other boy who could use god slayer magic like him. The both decided to travel together and train together and over time, Zankro found out what having a best friend was like. They then bumped into Chilia who they saw wore rags as clothing and she kept on mumbling about finding her cousin. Orga and he didn't pay her any attention until they saw the book she had in her small arms. It was the book of the Sky God Slayer, they wondered how a little kid like her found such a thing. They caught up to her and asked her, and all she said was her mama gave it to her before she left her. Orga told him to allow her to follow them, but all Zankro said that they were fighters not babysitter to a little seven-year-old brat. They argued for a while until Zankro gave in and told her she could follow them, and in exchange, they would help her learn her magic. After a while of travel, the three of them became somewhat of a family, with Orga being the older brother to Chilia, while Zankro became her crazy mentor. Zankro though was the one who got all the food and supplies they needed by pickpocketing people. That's how they met Naruto by Zankro taking his wallet, he didn't know he had followed him back to their resting place. Naruto revealed himself to them making them take on battle positions to which Naruto paid no attention. Flashback two years ago. Naruto stopped in front of the kids, looked on while surveying them and seizing them up to see if they were a threat. When he didn't feel anything too impressive he just started to walk towards them. Just return my wallet and we won't have any problems kids I'll even invite you to lunch as you give it back nicely. Naruto told them while extending his right hand. Hell no old man. Zankro screamed. Naruto's sweat dropped when he called him an old man seeing as he was only 16 years old. Old man? Naruto questioned making Zankro blush a tiny bit in embarrassment. I stand by what I said. Zankro managed to get out. Naruto smiled while walking over to the nearest rock and sitting down while looking at the three of them with his smile. How about this you three tell me about yourselves, and if I like what I hear, I let you keep my wallet of course I will want my personal stuff back like family photos and stuff like that. The kids looked at each other and then back at him. No bullshit. 
Zancro asked getting a pebble to the forehead. Watch your language around the little one kid. Naruto scolded making Zancro nod. But then sit down and start talking. Naruto motioned with his right hand. The three kids nodded and sat down telling him all about themselves like where they were from, what they remember, or what they have seen in their time traveling. But when they mentioned that the three of them were god slayers, he narrowed his eyes and asked them how they learned such an ancient magic. They simply brought out their respected books and showed it to him making him sigh and nod. Then just like he promised, he allowed them to keep his wallet but first removed his personal stuff from inside. You're just going to give it to us just like that? Orga asked him. Yes and not only that, but if you three ever need a place to find work and call a home come to Magnolia Town and head for the Fairy Tale Guild and you three will be welcomed with open arms. With that said Naruto had left them to think. After they travel for a few days Chilia was the first to suggest them joining Fairy Tale when asked why she said that she was tired of traveling with no purpose. Orga and Zancro then thought about it before deciding to try it and headed in Magnolia's direction. It took them a week to get there on foot and when they arrived they noticed a train station and couldn't help but scream in frustration. They asked around for Fairy Tale's direction and headed there calmly since they were tired. When they arrived, they saw a yellow-haired teen about four maybe six years older than the man they met a week ago. The teen kept on walking, but behind him, they saw a green-haired pretty boy, a boy with a serious expression with a doll-like tattoo over his nose and part of his face. They also saw a girl with red glasses walking with them with a fan covering her lower face. The older teen stopped and looked at them, and they instantly felt his magic power and paled since his was far greater than their own. They trembled a little thinking this was the master of the guild until they saw a brown-haired girl and red-headed girl ran by them, with the brown-haired one stopping to chug her barrel of wine. Anna ease up on the wine while on mission, I don't want the master to have any more complaints right now. The yellow-haired boy called out. Come on Laxa since when do you care what happens to the paperwork the master needs to do? Kana teased him. Since my grandfather left his complete trust in him before passing away and left us both with a mission to take care of fairy tale for years to come. The now revealed Laxus told her making Kana not a little somberly. Okay I promise to ease up to only 10 bottles per mission. Kana seriously told him making everyone in earshot sweat drop. Um excuse me sir. The little voice of Chilia made them all look towards her. Yes what is it kid? Laxus asked her. Hey are you the master of this guild? Orga finished for her. No his in his office getting thing fixed up just enter and tell the white haired or red haired girl in there that you need to speak with him and they'll lead to his office. Laxa said while walking away with Kana and the other girl running towards the train station. The three of them then entered and saw the entire guild chatting away and laughing, while others were either drinking or dancing. They made it to the little bar at the end of it and saw a white-haired girl there cleaning the table. Um, ma'am. Zancro hesitantly asked not being used to speaking so politely. Yes how may I help you? The girl asked with a small smile. See can we speak with the M master of the guild please? He asked. Sure just head up those stairs and to the far right there you'll find his office. She said while pointing to the stair on her right. Thank you. Zancro bowed and left. After that, they headed toward the stair and within two minutes were at the door the girl told them. They knocked and after a second or two, the door opens to reveal a red-haired older girl there. Yes may I help you? The girl asked. Um are you the master? Orga asked thinking it was a man with the way that Laxus man and the white-haired girl talked about him. No the master is my M she couldn't finish because someone interrupted her. Urza let them in first. The familiar voice said. When they entered they saw that same man from a week ago sitting in the master's chair looking at them. You're the master? The three of them asked. If you three are talking about a week ago then no our previous master just passed away and I recently became the master. He explained making them calm down. I guess this answers my question huh? Naruto said more than asked. Yeah so if you can really give us a home then we accept your offer. Orga said while well, Chilia nodded her head so fast they thought it would fly off. Sure well then just head down to the bar and ask for Marahin and she will get you all set up here in the guild. Naruto told them with a smile. As they walked out they noticed the guild in a huge brawl and Zancro saw a pink haired boy with flaming fist hitting a raven haired boy who only had his boxers on in the face. You know what I think I'm gonna like it here. Zancro told them while his fist lit up with black flames. The others smiled and all three jumped into the fray and with huge smiles joined the brawl. Flashback end. Zancro couldn't believe it had been two years already since that fateful day, and he had yet to tell Naruto that he was a part of Grimmer Hearts. He was afraid that if he told him Naruto might kick him out of the one place he loved. Even if he would never admit it to anyone, he loved everything about the guild from the idiots Natsu and Grey to the caring and loving motherly figures he saw in both Mira and Teia. Yes, one loved to curse and fight, but he loved how she had taken time to train with them and learn to better hone their techniques. 
as well as how he loved how Mira always worried about his well-being when he came back bruised from one of his training sessions with Taya. When he gets back I'll tell him about it, maybe they'll forgive me if I do. Those were his last thoughts before drifting off to sleep all the while not noticing both Lasana and Natsu doing very adult things. How will Naruto react to Zankro's confession of his days in the most powerful Dark Guild? You'll have to wait till next time to find out. Fairy Tale Guild Hall. Everything was quiet in the guild with Natsu and Zankro out of the game. Everyone was enjoying this moment of peace by drinking like always or by going of jobs. Marahin was busy feeding Vivian, while Lysanna was cleaning the counter Urza was busy eating her strawberry cheesecake while at the same time giving Elizabeth her bottle of milk. Gin and Maruko had left on a simple S-class job a while ago. As this was going on the guild doors opened to show Rowan and his buddy returning from their little scouting mission for Naruto. Welcome back you two, did you find anything? Mira asked them while looking up briefly. There was nothing worth reporting. Rowan's friend said while sitting down exhausted. Hey hey Mira may we get two beers please. Rowan politely asked her. Though Mira may work as a barmaid, she was still technically the master's wife and must be treated with the utmost respect by the whole guild. Of course, this included Urza, Teaya and Kin, and as of recently Naruko, since they heard she became a sister to them. No one even cared if Naruto and Naruko were born sibling, since they had been informed of the clans and their way of doing things back in the elemental nations. Sure, two beers coming right up. Mira said while giving two mugs to another barmaid to have her take it to them. After that, the whole guild heard the bell signaling the return of Naruto, which surprised everyone on how fast he had returned. He hadn't been gone for more than a week and a half. Everyone stood up and gathered around the entrance with Urza and Mira in the front with Lasana to Mira's right. The doors soon opened to reveal both Taya and Naruto entering with smiles on their faces. Hey everyone how's it going? Naruto asked while waving making his guild smile and cheer for his return. Master welcome back. Yukino shouted while waving at him in between both Mira and Urza, making him smile. Well hello there Yukino and thank you have you gotten used to the guild yet? Naruto asked while kneeling down to be at eye level with her. Yukino nodded her head while taking out her two golden key and smiling at him with a proud expression. Yup now I can summon my celestial spirits one at a time though. Yukino told him while adding the last part in a whisper. Wow that amazing Yukino good for you if you keep this up and you might surpass both those brain dead idiot of Natsu and Grey. Teaya teasing said making both boys yell out offended. Of course, everyone thought it funny since Natsu was still in the infirmary and could still hear what she said about him. What made it funnier was what Natsu screamed out from the infirmary room. Yukino fight me. Natsu screamed followed by him busting out of the guild still wrapped in bandages while pointing at her. Yukino Haven gotten scared hid behind Naruto who simply tapped Natsu on the head, sending him to the floor and leaving a Natsu silhouette on the floor. Calm down Natsu let her grow up a little more before you go out and scare her like this. Naruto told him getting an eye sir from him. Naruto, Laxus has returned and he said he will wait for your call. Mira informed him while giving him Vivian and Urza giving him Elizabeth who wrapped their arms around their father while babbling and giggling at him. This sight made everyone smile seeing him with his daughter, happy he was home. Okay thank you Mira I'll talk to him as soon as I can. Naruto managed to get out while focusing on his daughters while blowing raspberry to their cheeks, making them laugh. With that, he left to his office with his daughter, Urza, and Mira right behind him. Taya decided to go home and sleep a little tired from their stupid fake treaty arguments. Master's office. As he entered, he placed his daughters in the little playpen he and his mate made for them. Just when he was going to ask Mira and Urza something, he saw them both fall on the couch asleep. He knew what had just happened, and given the flash of lighting he knew Laxus had arrived as well. Well it seems pretty boy and his friend has returned at last. Laxus said while leaning of the wall. You know I should make you go to sleep as well right? Naruto told him while sitting in his chair and waiting for Mistigan to arrive. DCH what for I have already seen his and Z's face before remember. Both stopped talking when the door opened and in came Mistigan, Z, Serrano carrying Yukino and Ikaruga. Thank you master for giving me my little sister back. Serrano cried while hugging her sister closer to her. Mistigan removed the spell from Yukino so she may spend time with her please. Naruto ordered to which he nodded. Everyone saw Mistigan raise one of his staff before a grey magic circle appeared, and the next thing they saw was Yukino squirming around as she woke up. Naruto motioned for Serrano to place her on the couch and wait until she woke fully. For Serrano it was an agonizing two minutes to wait for her to wake up, but another two minutes for her to look at her direction and remember it was her and not a dream. Be big, s sister. Yukino screamed while crying and jumping into the arms of Serrano as they both cried at finally being reunited. Yukino, Serrano please spend the day together okay you can give me your report at a later date Serrano right now your little sister is far more important. 
Naruto told her making her smile and crying more while grabbing her sister's hand and leading her outside. Um Yukino let's go eat and then to the park okay. With that both sister left feeling utterly happy to be together again. Everyone then heard sobbing and looked to see Ikaruga crying while using her kimono sleeve to hide herself while also using it to blow her nose. Now, now Ikaruga crying at a time like this is so unlike you. ZT is getting his shirt cut up and his pants shredded up in a matter of a blink of an eye. Do not judge me you freaky eyed shrimp. Ikaruga hissed out to him making him shrink under her gaze. However, he shrunk for another reason as well besides being scared and that was the matter of his height. Shrimp Z got out while going over to a corner and sulking, since it was true, even though he was in his late twenties, he was unfortunately only 5-0. He was short for his age something he always hated and had tried just about everything known to man to try to grow if only a couple of inches more. Hell he had even tried getting stretched by a pair of trains going in opposite directions once. That was how both Mystigan and Naruto had found him before saving him from certain death. Enough both of you sheesh I feel like I'm running a daycare instead of a guild. Naruto said making them both stop fighting and get serious. So Mystigan, Z what have you got for me this time? Naruto asked them. Nothing really all we got is that the daughter of the Hurtfilia family has run away from home and daddy is paying top jewels to whoever brings her back. Z said offhandedly. Yes and I have clothes about another hundred maybe two hundred animas and all this time we've been out they are appearing far too much and far too quickly now master. Mystigan said while removing his mask and showing them the face of one of Naruto's most suspicious members Jell Faust. You know if you hadn't made me believe in Adolas, I would have thrown you in our holding cell by now, for what Earthlands Jell did to my Urza you do know that right. Yes and I'm truly glad you heard me out and I have tried to gain information on him too for you with little luck there sorry. Mystigan said before airing out his mask and putting it back on. As fun as it is to hear this I'm just going to leave my report here and go home I'm beat. Laxa said before putting a little scroll in front of Naruto and disappearing in a stream of lighting. Naruto put his hand up to signal them to wait while he opened it and read it thoroughly. He smiled when he finished and put it aside to file it later while he looked back at them and motioned for Ikaruga to go. Yes well where Mystigan failed, I succeeded master. Ikaruga smugly said while sticking out her tongue at him making Mystigan sweat drop. Please go on then. Well for one Jell has enlisted Trinity Raven's help for his little tower as assassins. Ikaruga said with a frown. Naruto narrowed his eyes, looked over at his sleeping wives, but more to Urza, and wondered what Jell could want with assassins. What does he want with assassins Ikaruga and what of his twin Seagrain? Naruto asked her while leaning back in his chair. Nothing right now he just has us for show while he uses four other to do his work for him as for his twin, it's his thought projection sir. Ikaruga said making Naruto sigh and turn around in his chair. What would you do master? Z asked. There is nothing I can do at the moment Z not until he messes up or leaves himself open. Naruto stood up and went over to his bookcase. Ikaruga the moment he goes after Urza reveal yourself to her, should he succeed in taking her with this phrase. Naruto handed her a piece of paper with a small phrase. Rule number three though our paths may have diverged, you must continue to live out your life with all your might, you must never consider your own life to be something insignificant, and you must never forget about your friends who loved you. What is this master? Ikaruga asked. Only a fairy tale member will know that, but to put it short, it's the fairy tale's goodbye decreed the last one actually, with that Urza will believe you since not many do since not many leave the guild. I see and this means that not even the council is aware of this little ceremony right. You are correct since this is a fairy tale thing not a magic council concern, and before I forget I will be joining the magic council soon. This of course made the three of them widen their eyes. W.Y. Master I thought you said you'd never get involved with them. Z asked well more like screamed. The much is happening and I'm out of the loop in much of it the only way I can stay up to date is by joining them and having access to their meeting, spies and resources. Naruto told them while interlacing him hands in front of his face. Also given the fact that this is a favor for the king doesn't help my options either since he is looking for a way to disband this corrupted council and place another one in its place, one that I'm pretty sure he will ask me to be a part of too. Well should if the king ask you must do it huh? Z spoke before having Ikaruga's foot meet his face before being sent to the wall at the end of the room. Language please there are babies in the room. It was then they noticed the two little girls just playing around with their little dragon plush dolls. Naruto and Mystigan were surprised that they were able to handle Mystigan's sleep spell. Your daughters will certainly grow up to be quite powerful eh master? You can say that again Mystigan to withstand even a little of your sleeping spell is impressive enough, but to remain awake man that is a whole other level of amazing. As if sensing their father eyes on them, both girls turned toward him before they started to bounce up and down, trying to get their father to come play with them. I guess today's meeting is over with her. Huh? 
Ikaruga said before going over to the girls and picking them up one by one, before placing a little sakura flower pendant on them and giving them a kiss on the forehead. With that, they left with Naruto telling them to stay around for at least another day before leaving they agreed and left. Well how about we wake your mommies and head home to eat a Vivian, Eli. Naruto baby talked to them, which made them laugh at that faces, he made an over-exaggeration to the question. The Uzumaki household. Urza and Mira didn't ask what he spoke with Mistigan, since whatever he spoke was serious, giving his overly fatherly attitude yes, they liked seeing him like this. Though he only did this when something was going wrong with the guild and he wanted to have an outlet besides training. Therefore, they just stayed out of it only if it wasn't too dangerous, but if it involved the guild Urza would demand to know, and of course Naruto would crack under his alpha female. At their home Marahin started dinner, and surprisingly Naruko was a good cook too, though nowhere near Mira's skills, but still good. Aya had once tried to make dinner when Marahin was unable to due to pregnancy and had burned that part of the house down. Kin was able to make edible foods, but they always came out bland. Urza was only ever able to make strawberry cheesecake ever she refused to learn any else, unless it was life or death worthy. However, ever since given birth to Elizabeth, she has started to learn other things, since she didn't want Mira to always make food for her children. Naruto to everyone's surprise was a better cook than even Mira when asked where he learned his things he said when he was ignored by his parents, he learned a lot of things by himself and that Lily and Ragnarok just helped fill in the rest. Naruko of course wanted to cry and apologize, but Naruto waved it off and said the past was in the past for them and to let themselves move on. Now Naruto was at the dinner table with his daughters playing a game of peekaboo while Tai and Kin fixed the table, since Naruto had used shadow clones to clean it, take Eli and Vivian and shower while going himself upstairs to his home office to finish some late paperwork. Okay dinner is ready everyone so take a seat. Urza called out while bringing out food with Mira and Naruko right behind her. Everyone sat down, looked at the food in front of them and noticed that there was ramen and some egg rolls along with white rice and many different types of vegetables. Urza made dinner this time. Naruko said making Tai Kin and Naruto stopped their forks midway and looked frightened. I see well I guess we'll try it haha. <laughs> Naruto laughed while discreetly making a shadow clone and having him go upstairs and make his last will and testament just in case. Urza watched in suspense as she watched Naruto and the other eat it and waited for the one she really wanted to impress. Naruto took a long slurp from his ramen and slushed it around his mouth, getting all the flavor of it and testing it. After Naruto swallowed it, Urza held her breath trying to hide her nervousness. Not bad Urza you really are getting better huh? Naruto told her while getting another lot of ramen noodles and stuffing them into his mouth. Urza was then seen shining throughout dinner with a bright smile on her face from Naruto's compliment. After dinner, Naruto headed into the living room and just watched his daughters play in the center of it was thinking about everything that happened this past two weeks and about what will happen in the future. A jewel for your thoughts dear. Mira asked while laying her head on his shoulder while smiling at her daughter. Urza was on her recliner polishing her swords one by one while Taya was reading Sorcerer Weekly magazines and just skipping through them before stopping on Marahin's photoshoot pictures. Man I still can't believe you accepted to do this photoshoot Mira. Taya said while well, just looking at the picture before tossing it into the fire they had going to heat up the house a little. Of course, there was a little fence to keep the little ones out of reach of the flames. Kin though was laying across from a double couch reading yet another book about who know what. The photo shoot was fun and they asked if I wanted to do it again and I said yes plus they pay me. Mira giggled out while wrapping her arms around Naruto's. So long as they don't go overboard it's fine with me. Naruto said making Mira look at him with a slutty smile. Does my dear husband want a special photo of me in my birthday suit? Mira asked making Naruto blush a little while smirking at that thought. As much as I'd like that I think I better not just in case I lose my wallet, maybe you five could pose for me in private one day. Naruto told them making them smile with a small blush each. So anyways what is it that has you so worked up dear? Mira tried again making the other curious as well. Sai the king asked me to join the magic council for him so that he may find a way to get rid of them and I accepted. Naruto told them. Urza was surprised that he would accept it while Kin and Naruko were just accepting seeing as the king himself asked his help. Mira on the other hand was just disbelieving seeing as it was the council that would give out the extermination orders. Look I didn't want this, but the king made a valid point if we leave the council to go on, then thing will never change, but if I help the king find a big enough flaws to get them disbanded then I should do it. This is the start of something new. Naruko said making them all turn to them. This is one of those things my father said when he disbanded the civilian council back in Kanoha he said, without those that wish nothing but power, the village would be able to function with those that wish nothing but peace. Naruko spoke making Naruto smile a little. 
Naruto now about to be one of the council will have access to the same information as them and be in a better position to protect Fairy Tail and make sure that the council doesn't mess with out and try to frame us like in the past. Urza told them making them nod. Then it settled make a great council member okay dear and hurry up and show the king their greedy nature so that Fiori may be a little more peaceful. Mira said before rising from her seat on the love couch as they called it. They called it that because Vivian had been conceived in that same couch which Tai liked to tease them about. Um one it's getting late and we all have work to do tomorrow, plus the little one have fallen asleep. They turned to see both Eli and Vivian hugging each other while sleeping which made them all happy. Naruto created two shadow clone to take his daughters to bed while the six of them headed to bed to get some shut eye. The next day. Naruto was beyond pissed. Why you may ask well because Natsu had gone off on his own on a wild goose chase that a member of his guild sent him on. That member being none other than Rowan who told Natsu that a salamander was seen in Harjin Port Town. Not only did Natsu leave before Naruto could stop him, but also on his desk was a stack of complaints from the council about how Natsu destroyed a big part of the port town while stopping a smuggling ring of women. I'm going to kill that little flame brain. He screamed making Naruko, Teaya, and Kin giggle at his problem. It also did not help that Urza had just left on a mission that she herself said might take a few days or weeks. Train Station, Magnolia. Stepping off the train was a beautiful blonde-haired girl with a white with blue strips blouse and a navy blue miniskirt. She was shining brightly even while pulling out a half-dead Natsu. Come on Natsu please wake up and show me where your guild is. The girl told him while shaking him awake. Just give him a few minutes and he'll be fine. A blue cat said while taking a fish out of his little green bag. The girl sighed and nodded while going to a little store and bought herself a water bottle. It took Natsu about 20 minutes to regain his bearing and another 5 to be fully able to walk normally. So can we go to the guild now Natsu please you promised remember. The girl said while impatiently tapping her foot. Alright, alright sheesh come on it's on the cliff over there. Natsu tiredly said while walking in the direction he spoke. With that, they both walked towards the cliff Natsu had pointed out and with every step she took the girl became more and more exited. They stopped by a few store on the girl's pleadings and bought a few stuff like fish, meat, and a teddy bear, which surprised the girl. After 30 minutes of walking, they made it to the front of the guild and to the girl, it was the most beautiful sight in the world. Welcome Lucy to Fairy Tale. Happy the flying blue cat said. Well he hovered in front of the sign that said the name of the guild with two fairies on either side of the sign. I did it I really made it to Fairy Tale. Lucy screamed while smiling widely at the building in front of her. Well come on you can't be a member if you just stand there you know let's go. Natsu told her while extending his hand making Lucy smile and nod while taking it with her own. Soon both were running toward the doors with wide smiles while Happy flew ahead of them. Lucy has finally arrived at fairy tale will an abundance of excitement will she bring new hope to the guild or will the same fate befall it. Stay tuned for the next chapter my friends. Fairy tale guild hall. Everyone was having fun drinking and eating, while some were around the job request board looking for work, while others were already drunk. Mira was behind the bar with Vivian and Eli along with her in their high chairs just watching her work. They Ayakin and Naruko decided to go on an S-class job just like Urza, but decided one with a higher pay would be more fun. Only Mira was left to hold down the fort, while Naruto was busy filing out the paperwork for Natsu's little renovation on Harjin Port. Just when people thought it was going to be a peaceful day for once the front doors busted open to reveal Natsu, happy and a blonde girl. We made it back alive. Natsu screamed. Everyone screamed in excitement at seeing Natsu return with what they assumed was a new member. So Natsu is back huh? Gray screamed while stripping and was about to head over to him before he saw Natsu kick Rowan in the face. Bastard you lied to me. Natsu screamed. You're the idiot who left before you let me finish. Rowan said while punching in the face. With that, all hell broke loose everyone started swinging left and right punching anyone that got in his or her way. Mira, seeing this decided to go and talk with the newcomer and get her name seeing as Natsu forgot about her. As she made her way towards her Lysanna joined her sister also curious about the newbie. Welcome to fairy tale, my name is Marahin Strauss and this is my sister Lysanna Strauss. Both sisters smiled at her making Lucy squeal in excitement. Oh my god it's the real Marahin Wade aren't you married to the master of this guild? Lucy asked since she had read about her and the master being a couple and having a child together. Unfortunately no we haven't had the time to preform our wedding, but we are working on it still we just need to find a perfect time for it. Mira told her a little sad about it but not worried since she knew how busy Naruto currently was. Now I'm betting you wish to join our guild right? Lysanna asked her. Before Lucy could answer, a big man came flying by slamming into Mira and her sister and sending crashing into some tables nearby. The this guild is a, a lot of fun and no. Mira asked before blacking out. 
Lucy freaked out and ran towards them while yelling hysterical at them not to die, while all around her the chaos grew. Master's office. Naruto was busy filling out the needed paperwork to apologize to the council for Natsu's stupidity, as well as signing reimbursement papers to help fund the repairs that were being made to the port. Just when he was going to finish he felt a build-up in magic in the guild hall and knew that Natsu had returned and started another guild brawl. Standing up Naruto jumped over his desk and ran outside to stop it, only to see everyone charging up his or her magic and taking aim. Enough all of you. Naruto yelled out freezing everyone in place except Natsu who was laughing his ass off. Look at all of you scared I guess this makes me the winner by default. Natsu couldn't continue to laugh since a large foot stomped on him slamming him into the floor. Oh master you're done with your paperwork already? Mira asked having gotten up and now stood next to Lucy Lasana, had left to look after both Elizabeth and Vivian. This is the master. Lucy was able to squeak out while looking at Naruto's titan form. The next thing she saw was Naruto shrinking down to his 6'2 height with his foot still on Natsu. He turned around and looked at her before smiling and walking toward her with a warm smile on. Welcome to Fairy Tail Um Naruto let her fill in her name for him. Bell Lucy, sir. She said while bowing to him making Naruto laugh and place a hand on her shoulder. No need to bow now if you'll excuse me I have to teach my members a lesson. Naruto told before disappearing in a ray of light before appearing on the second floor. You damn irresponsible brats have gone and done it again, the magic council is furious with our antics from Natsu blowing up Harjin port to Kana, charging them for her alcohol consumption. Crap they found out. Kana said while looking down to avoid making eye contact with Naruto. As well as Loki hitting on one of the council members' granddaughter along with Grey stripping in front of a client if this goes on then I just have one thing to say to all of you reckless idiots. Lucy looked on in fear since everyone was looking away in disappointment for angering their master and brining shame to the guild. To hell with the magic council's rules and to hell with what others might think of us for this is what makes us better than others, because we don't follow their rules we follow our hearts, and so long as we do that then there is no reason for this uptight idiot to get angry, so listen up all of you Naruto looked around seeing everyone smiling ear to ear after hearing Naruto cheer for them. Like our late third master once said all magic that surpasses reason still comes from reason right. Magic isn't some kind of miraculous power, it is a talent that only works when the flow of energy inside of us and the flow of energy in the natural world are in perfect synchronization to preform one must have a strong mind and the ability to focus. It should take over your being and come pouring out of your very soul, if all we do is worry about following rules, then our magic will never progress. Naruto said while many started seeing Makarov in his place lecturing them. Most were smiling warming at seeing the spirit of Makarov live inside of Naruto, while others were in tears at remembering the kind old man they had the honor of calling their father. Don't let those idiots on the council scare you, follow the path in which you all believe in. Cause that's what makes this great guild of ours family, that's what it mean to belong to the fairy tale guild, that's what it mean to be number one. With his speech over everyone last member roar in happiness over his words, while well, Lucy smiled and laughed at seeing everyone motived and inspired by their master. Naruto watched on as everyone laughed and smiled at each other. He was happy to see his guild the guild he vowed to protect filled with such amazing people. Old man, look at your children now feel their love for this guild, the guild you love to your dying breath, the guild I love till my dying breath like you. Just as Naruto turned around to leave he stopped when he heard a voice he thought he'd never hear again. They're your children now my boy so love them like I did you, nurture them like I did you, live for them like I did for you. Naruto let some tears fall hearing his voice in the wind and smiled, knowing that no matter where he was he was still looking out for them. I will old man I promise you that. Mira saw from down below on the first floor Naruto cry and wondered what could have made him cry. Suo, um how do I become a member Miss Marahin? Lucy asked breaking her from her thoughts. Mira snapped her head towards her and chuckled at forgetting her standing there right next to her. Silly me, come this way and I'll get you all set up. Lucy walked with her seeing everyone clean up their mess, with some leaving to start their jobs, or some sitting down at the bar and ordering beer. Now what color and where would you like your mark? Mira asked while taking out the stamp from under the bar. Wait just like that I become a member? Lucy asked shocked this was all it took to become a member of the most popular guild. Pretty much, there is no tester requirement to join, so where is it going to be? Mira asked once more. Oh I'm on the back of my right hand in pink. Lucy excitedly said while holding out her hand. Just like that she saw her mark appear and it was official Lucy was now a full member of Fairy Tail. Welcome to Fairy Tail Lucy. Lysanda said while smiling at her and hugging her. Thank you so much. Lucy hugged her back while running off and finding Natsu by the job board. She's an excited one no. The voice of Teia made itself known to all making them turn around to show Naruko, Kin and Teia herself walking in casually. Welcome back Teia, Kin, Naruko. The entire guild yelled out. 
This surprised Lucy who asked Natsu who this three were to garner such a warm welcome. Hey, Natsu who are those three? Natsu looked at her before realizing she had not seen them before. Those three along with Mira and another are Master Naruto's mates, as well as three of our S-class mages. Natsu informed her making Lucy look at them in a new light. Welcome back you three did every one thing go well. Mira asked already knowing the answer. The yeah, a piece of cake. Naruko said while well, smiling and giving her the peace sign. Do you wish to eat here or at home? Mira asked. Nah we'll head home for the day and rest we're tired. Kin said while well, turning around and heading home with the other two right behind her. Master's office. Naruto was sitting behind his desk reading over some paperwork when his communication lacrima lit up. Ah uh, who could this be? Naruto questioned himself. Master Naruto I presume? A man wearing glasses asked while waiting patiently. You'd be correct sir. Lay her I'm with the magic council sir and well we heard you were interested in joining the magic council. You'd be correct once more, I was actually just finishing up some paperwork that they had once sent me just in case I changed my mind. Naruto said while leaning back into his chair. That will not be necessary sir, the magic council is pleased and honored to have such a powerful mage such as yourself interested in serving the law that they have agreed to allow you to join. Leher told him while bowing his head. I am most honored to be accepted Leher I just need to know what I must do. Nothing sir just come by at your earliest disposal and we will swear you in. I'm glad but I must ask if this will interfere with my guildmaster duties. No sir the council only convenes when there are major things to discuss other than that you may do as you please. Very well I will try to go as soon as possible. Naruto said while nodding his head. We will be expecting you soon then. With that, Leher hanged up. This left Naruto thinking of how best to start gathering the needed information to expose the magic council. I really need a drink right now. Naruto said while rubbing his forehead. Next day. Once more Natsu proved to be quite the handful giving Naruto was reading the outcome of Natsu's little excursion to Mount Hakab, where he had gone off to help Macau. Apparently, Teaya had bumped into Mikao's kid and had said some things in her tired state that had upset the kid, prompting Natsu to go off and look for him. Now we find said woman sitting at the bar just relaxing and drinking with Kana while everyone else drank and left on jobs. Boy Teaya want to go on another job. Kin asked since she was bored. Why don't you take Princess she's not doing anything. Teaya suggested making Kin look at Naruko just eating ramen. So Naruko what do you say just you and me on a job? Kin asked her. Sure I don't mind I don't have anything to do either way. But that both stood up and walked to the second floor to get a job Teaya merely ordered another drink. Hey has anyone seen Natsu? Naruto's voice was heard making everyone look at him. Lucy and him just took the book burning job that has been up there for a few weeks. Mira informed him making him look at her. Wait didn't I give you the revised one yesterday Mira? Naruto asked making Team Shadow Gear look at him before asking. Revised how so master? The job was changed from 200,000 jewels to 2 million. Everyone stood shocked at that. All too just for a lousy book. Jet screamed while Levy seemed to deflate. Ah man and I really needed the cash. From the corner of his eye, Naruto saw Gray stand up and leave to where he guessed was Natsu's location. Thus I'll have to wait to punish him for what he did back in Harjin Port. With that Naruto turned to leave, but not before remembering something important. Oh right Mira I'll be heading out early for the master's meeting, so I'm leaving you in charge till I return okay. Sure thing Naruto. Mira smiled while giving him a mocking salute. Naruto then vanished in a blue ball of fire, leaving everyone amazed at his many flashy exits. Show off was all Teaya said in regards to his flashy exit. Naruto's home. Naruto merely came home to shower and eat before heading out, but not before walking into his children's room and seeing them sound asleep. He went over and kissed them goodbye before heading downstairs where the babysitters was sitting reading a book. Thanks again for looking out for my children you too. Naruto thanked them once more. It's no problem at all master we're happy to help. The girl said with a smile. But she said, your daughters are absolute angels. The boy replied. Well later Biska, Alzak I'll see you guys after I return from my guild master's meeting. Have a safe trip master. Biska said while waving goodbye before they saw him leave in a golden lightning bolt. Mira three hours later. Naruto was seen walking down the halls with four rune knights around him leading him to the council members. As they made turn after turn, Naruto started thinking that maybe the knights had gotten lost until they stopped in front of two large double doors. They are waiting inside Naruto-sama. One said while well they moved to the sides to let him through. Thank you. Was all he said as he walked inside to see all the council members present and waiting for him. Ah at last you join us Master Naruto, so please step into the center to begin your swearing in. The chairman said quite excitedly for once. As you wish. Naruto then walked to the center where they all could see him and waited. Do you Naruto Ragnar swear to uphold justice no matter the cost? 
I do. The Unaruto Ragnar swear to follow our rule and punish those who do not. I do. The Unaruto Ragnar swear loyalty to the Magic Council while foregoing all others. I do. Then as chairman I hereby make you an honorably member of the Magic Council. Here. Everyone clapped including Seagrain and a woman he had never seen but for some reason looked familiar. Come now Naruto take a seat among us and let us now begin this meeting between council members. Naruto merely walked toward an empty seat which happened to be next to the woman who smiled at him. He smiled back while keeping him eye on everyone and trying to gauge who was worth forgiving and who wasn't. Guess I have to get to work ha huh? I have two days before the master's meeting guess I can research a little beforehand. With that, his infiltration had begun and all he had to do now was wait and see what this old fools did before acting. Natsu, Lucy. El lullaby. A lullaby as in what Mira and Urza sing Eli and Vivian to go to sleep. Natsu asked while looking at all three tied up dark mages. Just then, a giant hand made out of shadow dragged them all down into the ground, leaving the fairy tale mages dumbfounded. What the hell was that? Gray asked. I don't know but it can't be any good Lucy said while trying to remember where she heard that word before. We better hurry and get back to the guild I bet Naruto might know about this lullaby business. Gray said getting all of them to agree. Unknown town. Walking down a road with a giant horn in one hand was Urza Scarlet having finished her latest job. I'm getting rusty if a job like this took me a week to complete. She said to herself. I guess I'll stop here for the night and continue tomorrow him there seems to be a nice place to eat first. As she walked inside, she saw all the men look at her with lust in their eyes, but one will place glare and they all squirmed away. How may I help you ma'am? The bartender asked. I'll have your special and some wine please. Urza said while sitting down and let her ears wonder. That is until she heard quite an interesting bunch talk about something she didn't understand but was intrigued either way. Here you go ma'am. The bartender said while placing her order down in front of her. Thank you. As she was going back to hear some more from the mages she saw they had already left. Eriger why does that name sound so familiar? Poor Urza wouldn't remember the name until she was aboard the train back to Magnolia tomorrow. Naruto has joined the council, Natsu, his team has encountered Eisenwald, and Urza has heard part of their plan. What will happen at the meeting place with Naruto there? You will have to wait until next time my friends. What if Naruto Primordial Dragon Slayer and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.